go top down, I get free. I don't go bust and I go plain Jane, watch me ski. Yeah, I see you now, I could tell you watching me. I go ghost, but tell me I'm more like his Lee. Rockstar, baby, turn pop star. I don't miss, I don't play none. I don't diss, I don't say none. I go switch, that's an A1. I eat steak with no A1. Tell the chef, I said thanks. Tell the tell I'm in the bank. Tell my mom I'm living good. Tell my kids don't stress a thing. I go back to back on the drops. Drop a lot and she pack. Feel like selling for the time being. When I was young, I used to dream about the palm trees. After the summer achievements, I got a long sleeve. Supposedly, think about it. In reality, you're running out of options. 
Starting to see the coffin with the Bible breach. I'm way ahead on a private beach. My hair bleached on the cover of a magazine. I got the flavor doing pushers on the coca bean. Doing all the things you can't imagine what it might be. All these women trying to write me. I get the message now, I know they want to wife me. And not to mention all the bruises, I just went through all the heat. I broke through all the edges like a right G. Yeah, I come and go like a rah rah rah. They don't want the two be going nah nah nah. I'm coming back with the money in the bag. The room is in my lab, yeah, I'm running with the cash. I'm coming go like a rah rah rah. Putting in a word like I'm way behind. Still trapping on a low low, lurking in the mold like I'm running from the pole. Yeah, I cooked yeah. it up cause I'm a hero in my own town. Whoa, we just running on our own now. Whoa, all these digits on my phone now. Working through the late night, that's just how it goes down. Oh, wow. Put in work, put in work, I guess we'll work it out. Almost summer and the money almost running out. All this running up and down, it's getting funny now. I do it for myself and all you ever did was run your mouth. Yeah, we at the spot, they be stunning now. They don't see the bigger picture, we be cutting now. All I'm saying is the man that I'm becoming. He gon' take the new edition and they twist it like a plumber now. Yeah, I'm out here watching all these pony ones. Yeah, and they be thinking about my own runs. Oh, how they gon' catch me when I'm all around. Oh, I can't see why I didn't call it out. I come and go like a rah rah rah. They don't want the two be going nah nah nah. I'm coming back with the money in the bag. The room is in my lab, yeah, I'm running with the cash. I'm coming go like a rah rah. So when you see me shining now, I know it's anything but look. I'm looking in the mirror at the only one I f with. I've been held me down, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud. I'm a diamond Listen. in the rough. So when you see me shining yeah. now, I know it's anything but look. It's anything but diamond look. Diamond in the rough, yeah, yeah, we had it tough, yeah, yeah, we had the pressure and the pressure done its stuff. Oh, I'm not flexing when I'm brushing off the dust, no. All this pain and the tears made my shoulders bust. In this life, gotta do what you must. Build your value up, gotta earn trust, avoid fuss. Maybe you don't know the facts, you don't know enough. You can judge me all you want, cause every day I send love. Every day I do me, makes me wanna see you, makes me wanna see more, makes me wanna see through. Maybe we become one, maybe this is the thing. There's an energy and flavor to the things that you bring to the table. Any way you're able, real work turns into gold when you're stable. Now life feels sweet like syrup, like maple. Wouldn't change a thing about my past to stay grateful. I'm staring in the mirror at the only one I trust. Be down on my luck, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud, I'm a diamond in the rough. So when you see me shining now, know it's anything but look. I'm looking in the mirror at the only one I f with. I've been held me down, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud, I'm a diamond in yeah. the rough. So when you see me shining now, know it's anything but look. It's anything but luck now. I'm busy doing me, I'm out there range, I'm out of reach now. Almost let it drown, but they found me off the freestyle. Product of that ground, you seeing her, I me down. She wanna vibe, trying to see if she can slide. It's in the green now. It's snakes from my past, they look at me where I'm at. Thinking they can hit my line, and I'ma help them on their feet now. I had a few I looked up to, they showing different shades. They might have locked a couple rays, but now they watching my beam down. I struggle to open doors to places that come to life if I step inside. I learn to cut the keys down. Got it locked, this demon stirring the pot with pretty faces and plots that try to knock me off my feet now. No new friends, I had so many hit my line for the freebie, but if you see me out, you gotta pay the fee now. All these things you never cared to see me for is what I let the world see now. I'm staring, staring in the now. mirror at the only one I trust, but down on my luck, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud, I'm a diamond in the rough, so when you see me shining now, know it's anything but look. I'm looking in the mirror at the only one I f I've been held me down, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud, I'm a diamond in a rough, so when you see me shining now, I know it's anything but look. It's anything but look now.
be awful, but please pull up your pants. No offense, won't be dancing in rice. I'm not telling you twice. Nothing you can do to make things right. I'm a Gemini. I'm a Gemini. With my Gemini right. I'm a Gemini. I'm a Gemini. With my Gemini right. Sitting all alone on your back, hoping for some cash, but the burger. Green light, let's get it. Green light, let's get it. Green light, let's get it. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, win, win, win, win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Hello, I'm Himothy. I got the recipe. I got the flow. I got the remedy. I know they do. I know they envy me. Feet on the flow. What they gonna say now? We came alone from last place. Bottom to top at a fast pace. Out of this surf, I get touched down. I take a loss, get it back eight. I'm in the gym putting numbers up. You never there, you got bad traits. Never excuses to cover ups. Lost from the losses and bad breaks. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, win, win, win, win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, win, win, win, win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Who said I was a M? Who said it? All this talk about who's on top and who's not. Miss me with the gossip. Check the score, yeah. Ha! See me coming off the screen. No, I gave myself the green light. Catch a shoe from the three. If I'm not the one, it doesn't seem right. I need like two, four, five, six of them rings. I'm talking back to back to back like 23. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, win, win, win, win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, win, win, win, win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It's not everything around me looks a little great Ever since you found out, worry about my brain I just need a time, I'll probably just explain It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay Got a lot of words you don't know how to say Pull out all your big ones, tryna flip my face I give you a big hug, say I'm feeling great It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay I don't wanna see you worry but if you come on too early, yeah. if you make my toes too curly, yeah. and if you really, really have a me, yeah. baby, get hold that roll, how to get it so wrong? Mm. Get it sometimes you cold, on a big problem though, yeah, yeah. Cause to me, you an angel. If you ask me why, I say, yeah, yo. Everything around me looks a little great. Ever since you found out, worry about my brain. I just need a time, I'll probably just explain. It's 
okay, baby, baby, it's okay. Got a lot of words you don't know how to say. Pull out all your big ones, tryna fit my face. I'll give you a big hug, say I'm feeling great. It's okay, baby, baby, it's okay. I'm alright, everything's fine, everything good, everything nice. Don't pull the curtain, there's something uncertain, just living your life. Taking a drive, stay in your lane. Don't veer off, like go insane. Think of your brain as a shelter in place, don't let no one in, just like a push. Change to be feared to be here with insane. On the news, feeding his views. Mm, never feel good to be tame. Taking my feet, treat it as true. Ooh, ain't it a breeze to forget how to speak and let them do the speaking for you? Ooh, don't feel free and to get your freedom decisions be made by the group. Mama told me, safe of folding. Trying to carve yourself a space But over backwards Let the assholes run us right down the train Everything around me looks a little great Ever since you found out, worry about my brain I just need a time, I'll probably just a sprain It's okay, baby, baby, it's okay Got a lot of words you don't know how to say Put out all your I like it when you're 
do what I do. I'm like Simon says. Yeah, I'm the running man, rapping rubber bands, rubber bands. They do what I do. I'm like Simon says. Just picked up some bands, come and come again, come, and come again. They do what I do. I'm like Simon says. Yeah, I'm the running man, rapping rubber bands, rubber bands. They do what I do. I'm like Simon says.
players. Ooh, a little stun grenade there. Oh, you can't see me. Watch out this game. You gotta believe. You can you believe. Now starting to get things rolling here as they do start approaching bridges. DX, feeling the heat right on that southern beach side. And I don't he gets the knock right there and the finish at six points. Yes, he's gonna be giving out his position. Great knock right there from Royal Thwart. Or even evade the point. Here we go. They hold on. Exactly what he's gonna be looking to do. He's gonna be looking to confirm that into elimination. Some of the other teams confirming. There you go. If Prince Rage gets knocked, Royal Thwart end up winning that engagement. Another player for Furia gets knocked. This is wonderful. This is exactly what you want to see out of Royals Award. is now it's up to nine. You know, he will fall. Uh, because one of them does end up getting a great shot there for Wall as he makes it jump. There you go, being able to get another one. Hear the cacophony of shots now going off in the background. Ray is actually getting spelled out and off he goes. Oh, oh, so cool. Oh, and he's getting hit for like what? 10 HP. Oh. Oh, the program sees a zone and now it's going to be 30 games. Wait the way we're able to hold all this angle is what, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Vampire Esports, they said, oh, oh, you guys have been mocking us for how we did it. Leave this to chance. Meanwhile, Zebra Master on. The troll was going to be doing. They weren't sure if they were going to be making this push. Now they're going to be fighting here, Zebra Master. We've been able to see what Zebra Master has been able to do. It's going to get spotted right there. A lot of Zebra players are going to be able to move around. There you go. He gets spotted. He gets knocked down. It's going to come down to Rogue. It's going to be tough when you have four players of Zebra Masters staring at you and Zebra Masters being able to come off with the win there, a dominant win as well.
Slow Gaming well played by them. They put down some smoke as well. They knew that they were going to be coming. Smoke Gaming wants the spot. Yeah. Smoke Gaming does realize that they're there. They're going to start eliminating those players. And Smoke Gaming gets away with it. Smoke Gaming. Well, for them, it seems easy as they just pl find play after play. And oh, he ends up getting one. Oh. Yeah, he gets two. Beautifully done. Smoke Gaming coming out of nowhere and doing it in style. What a, what a chicken dinner, Smoke Gaming. Comes the heat, Regnum Karia just laying into them, and with that, another oh my goodness, Dwindle and oh, oh, oh, oh. Sweep coming through the Regnum Karia just locking in and pushing through. He's gonna be making a push here, but they're gonna be without a man, and it's backfiring. Standing up, ready to get some shots down the range, but a beautiful headshot there. Karia just on the money with the hits for Inkor. He's gonna make that switch. You can see it right away. He wants to make sure he collects as much eliminations as possible. That easy shotgun sends him back. Enjoying this for Team Falcons. They made up their mind. They're gonna be able to at least knock one right there. First up for 9 D2 vehicles out. Can Icy hold him down? He does. That Up. And here comes the third party that we were hoping it was going to happen. We're trying to keep the tournament alive, but Team Falcon finally shot him down. the time high buys definitely not trying to leave things up to chance come on down oh he gets knocked he has to make it happen with a jump shot oh and he gets oh. another knock so huge here, here they go for the push oh. and again that pump shotgun he's gonna go over the open hardcore pre-fire high fives that pump shotgun is just too deadly How did PUBG Mobile change your life? ก็สําหรับผมแล้วก็ <laughs> ครับก็สําหรับพับจีนะครับก็เปลี่ยนแปลงสําหรับตัวผมก็คือน่าจะเป็นเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของระบบระเบียบวินัยครับก็เหมือนอารมณ์แบบ
Então acho que o PUBG mudou nesse sentido, de poder ajudar quem, quem eu amo, quem eu gosto, e fazer o que eu amo também, que é jogar, e foi isso. O PUBG mudou literalmente tudo que tinha para mudar na minha vida. Pois, eu aprendi a conviver com muita gente, já que, pois, aí muitas pessoas de diferentes lugares, pois, eu conhecido culturas ou assim, este, também, pues me ha ayudado en, en un lado porque pues yo tengo tiempo para estudiar y para jugar, ya que pues se me paga y pues no tengo la necesidad de trabajar. Pues. Hem maddi konusunda hayatımı değiştirdim de hayatıma güzel insanlar kattı, güzel abi kardeşler. Eu me chamo de menor, eu jogo PUBG faz 5 anos e esse jogo mudou minha vida em questão, claro, financeira, mas também da saúde mental, posso dizer que na época que eu comecei a jogar esse jogo eu tava meio para baixo e tal, e aí acabou mudando minha vida. Oh, <música> Actually, we have a new roster that is a good opportunity to challenge uh, other foreign good teams. Our final goal and target is uh, to be a world champion. PMG GO に、まあ、参加する意味としては、まあ、我々としても、まあ、将来的なそのレベルアップを結び据えてっていうのと、まあ、ずっと目標にしてきた、まあ、世界での、まあ、タイトルを取る、まあ、優勝するっていう目標に、まあ、着実に近づくというか、まあ、我々の力を試すいい機会になるのかなと思います。I got, I got uh, confident because I have order for sure because he tell us how to play in every game, how to fight to win the fight, yeah, and how to gain to the circle.
Mana bagi tahu tasos ni agus sebab tasos kisah point tasos. Mana bagi tuas pasut bagi tahu sendirian kerja tuas school setakat tahu sendirian kerja. Bom, eu acho que não, não vai nos afetar de uma forma brusca, porque nós treinamos muito e estudamos os times. Então, estamos preparados para qualquer estilo de jogo e para tancar todos os times. Alfa Seven. Çünkü onların evinde oynuyoruz. Yani onların ülkesinde oynuyoruz. Bom, jogadores que eu não gosto é aqueles que choram, que não conseguem perder e não chorar. Korksunlar bizden. Tanır ter uzur kuşu. Merhaba, ben Kalse. Türkiye'den geliyorum. SUG Sports'ta oynuyorum. Ben Frozen X. Next Real takımında Agel rolünde oynuyorum. Adım Erdem, soyadım Erdoğdu, 19 yaşındayım. Meu nome é Lucas, meu nickname no jogo é Carrilho, tenho 20 anos e sou jogador da Alpha 7 Sports. Well. Alpha 7 fazendo isso com absoluta classe, um jogador perdido. Senhoras e senhores, é como você faz isso, é como você crown você. Bom, acredito que as maiores conquistas foram as Américas, alguns títulos que eu já perdi a conta. Não... 1200 average damage, almost six average eliminations every single round. The same as Tono, I think it's off the bottom by then. Team Fatkas, but top near top. Well, the jogadores que eu não gosto é aqueles que choram, que não conseguem perder e não chorar, não conseguem perder e ficar quieto. Eles têm que ter uma desculpa e ainda mais colocar a culpa no time, que isso é muito feio. Eu acho que tem que assumir um pouquinho a responsabilidade, assumir o erro e ficar quieto. Genel olarak oyuncu sevmiyorum değil ama bazı şeyler de gereksiz tepki veren oyuncuları hiç sevmiyorum. Yani bir tane adam vurup böyle takımı çıldıran takımlar var onları hiç sevmiyorum. Nova'yı pozisyonu mi ise büyük ihtimalle vururuz zaten. Ve önceki maçlarda da çok fazla kill aldıysak, özgüvenle oynadıysak, vurabiliyorsak yani 
Kötü pozisyonda da olsak da vururuz diye düşünüyorum büyük ihtimalle. Çünkü büyük bir özgüven toplaması olacak bizde. Fight'ımız da iyi olacak. Büyük ihtimalle Nova'yı vururuz diye düşünüyorum. Çünkü yine transferlerle fight'ımız çok iyi oldu yani. Alfa Seven. Çünkü onların evinde oynuyoruz. Yani onların ülkesinde oynuyoruz. The main stage Uruk'tan bağlıda seyliyor. Prelim qualifier tağısın bağlıda. Çünkü değil de sen bilgilikte uçtuğa. Adet. Tanır her uçuş kuşu. Hamgün tam motosiklet çöl. İntimcent şin bağlıda kahretti çağa. Adet bit bitle mitko şin tağıştır. Şin uçtu bağlıda kahretti çağa. Adet bu en tırksın yak. Bu akşam ben merhaba olsun mesm. Depois ki você atinge o topo. Você tem que ficar lutando diariamente para se superar. E é a tarefa mais difícil, que é se manter no topo. E acho que acredito que a constância que, gente, que eu tenho hoje é devido a isso, que a cada dia eu me cobro mais. E é isso, meu maior rival sou eu mesmo. A mana para que eu tenho que ter a posição para que eu tenho que ter a nersa que eu não sei se eu tenho que ter. Eu tenho que ter outro lado de lá. Eu tenho que ter outro lado de lá. Eu tenho que ter outro lado de lá. Eu tenho que ter outro lado de lá. Tem um único talento que estou a ter mesmo para lá com ele. Está cheio de times novos, todos acredito que muito esperançosos também. Eles vêm jogando bem, espero que eles consigam conquistar tudo também. Mas eles têm que saber que na final é diferente, não é mole. É um campeonato muito difícil quando você chega na final. É um jogo totalmente diferente, diferentes equipes, são só os melhores do mundo. Deixa de boa sorte para eles, porque eles vão precisar. Ya bu turnuvada genel olarak e, fightımız çok iyiydi. Sadece ufak tefek rotasyonlar, rotasyonlar da hatamız vardı. Onları düzelttiğimizde büyük ihtimalle şampiyon, şampiyon oluruz diye düşünüyorum. Çünkü fightımız çok kuvvetli. İnşallah şampiyon oluruz. Korksunlar bizden. How to be a portrait master.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil main event day three, the final day. We have seen a lot of stuff from day one. We saw a lot of resurgence yesterday, especially from some teams. Reject SG. We'll get into all that in day two, and I can't wait what's gonna happen here in day three. But I wouldn't be able to do this by myself. I got none other than Sute and Hajuks. Sute, how are you doing today? I, I'm doing great. Like I said yesterday, this this day couldn't have come any quicker. I can't wait to see the matches. I know all of us here are basically biting on our fingers. It's so close. Anyone could be the champion. So, Honestly, anything can happen. How about you, Hajix? How are you doing? Let's go! Oh, baby, the final day. You know, I'm so stoked. It's crazy because, I mean, we saw a team double their points in just two matches. And there's going to be a lot of teams that need to do that today if they want to make top three. And I think there's going to be some teams that are definitely going to be able to do that. And I think the team that you're talking about is none other than S2G. As S2G was able to get back-to-back -back chicken dinners. And they were just so impressive. And at one point, we were thinking, okay, you know what? S2G, you might be able to go for that back-to-back-to-back. -back -back. It didn't end up working out for them. Just to give a little bit more of a breakdown for the viewers watching at home. S2G. Day one, they ended up with a total of 29 points. On day two, 70 points. So a massive jump up, especially with those two chicken dinners. Oh, it was just unreal. Literally unreal. I mean, I didn't think S2G was going to be in the fight at all. And remember, folks, I mean, the prize pool, $100,000 for first place, 50 for second, third, right? It's going to get you a good 30000 And then the drop off from fourth all the way on down is crazy. So it really is the entire lobby versus the top three. And S2G put themselves in the running for it yesterday in a way that I didn't think was going to happen, to be honest. They did, but one team, Tute, that wasn't able to put up the numbers, that couldn't be able to carry the momentum that they were having in day one. I'm sorry, I had to start off on a bad note here with them, since they are the hometown heroes, the, the country. Man, Alpha 7, a massive drop-off from this team. Yeah, a huge drop-off, but still, a huge drop-off, and they're still in second place i mean that just goes to show how big of a lead they had in day one and they did maintain it early on right in day number two but man you talked about it s2g reject these teams popped off so hard on day number two that it honestly surprised all of us hot jukes it did it really did and i mean it and i remember at the end of the day one seven you were kind of like oh man you know alpha seven yeah you got three chicken dinners on the day but the other games right you weren't able to put up any placement points and it goes to show you right like yeah when you have a great day you have to maximize it because if they did get some of those placement points it's possible we could have still seen them here in first place but yeah i mean day two a stark difference obviously for alpha seven for them it's really a first place or nothing at all they want to win it so bad in their hometown in front of their home crowd and yeah a lot uh they definitely have a lot of pressure more than i think any squad here today by far yeah and to even expand a little bit more on how big the drop off was from alpha 7 and yes even though we're giving them props that because they're still in contention right they're still within that second place for sure day one this team ended up with 71 points day two they ended up with 28 points and out of those 28 points only eight came from placement points so only eight placement points in six matches you can tell why that was just such a big worry for me come to off the seven but we we gotta shine a light on them i'm sure we'll get a chance to see them whenever we do end up going to the overall standings reject my goodness the performance this team was able to have right there you were able to see them in the first place with 111 points they just popped off, man. I mean, they've been just going nuts, really. I mean, whenever they get a chance, you can see the overall standings right here. This is where everyone is at. Remember, folks, it's top three for the big money, but first place is where the real cheddar is at. And Reject, man, these guys did not let up off the gas at all. They started off at day one hot dropping everybody, and I think that just really kind of set the pace for this tournament for them. Yeah, and Reject is actually trying to make some history here for Japanese teams. Shout out to Maxman Cass on instagram make sure you guys go hit him with a follow japan has never placed in the top eight when it comes to global events so i would love to see if they're going to continue on their form here especially with reiji reiji has been able to do so so well so far especially yesterday i am number one i'm number two 
If I'm not the one, I'm uncomfortable. See the competition I've been running through. Leveled up, I only see him in my review. I'm running, get buckets from the court side to the nosebleeds. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, they love it. I'm winning, get buckets from the first in and the last out. See me coming. Call that top spin. How could I not win? This is top 10. From the bottom, got a sniff out of top wins. I sit back, reflect, and do it again. Hardest milli is the first, now we got 10. Talking 10, 10, 10, 10 times 10 and again. Welcome to the third and final day of 2024 PM Joe Brazil. I am Zadora Basili, and it's a great pleasure to have you here in our finals. Salve, salve, família! Pode convocar todo mundo, porque já estamos ao vivo diretamente de São Paulo com o último dia da PMGO 2024 Brasil. Eu sou Carol Bombichel e sejam todos muito bem-vindos, porque o dia tá só começando. Tem alguém ansioso aí? The story started with almost a thousand teams in our online qualifiers, and now the best 16 of those teams are here in our stage in São Paulo. Hoje reunimos aqui os 16 melhores times do mundo todo que lutaram bravamente por um único objetivo: ser campeão mundial e dar orgulho para sua nação. We have teams from all over the world here. We have teams from Japan, Brazil, Turkey, Indonesia, Mongolia, Thailand, and many more. O terceiro e último dia de campeonato que nos trouxe tanta emoção, muita alegria e muito aprendizado. Preparem-se para testemunhar mais uma história sendo escrita. E hoje vocês vão estar junto com a gente e vão fazer parte dessa história. Participa da nossa hashtag PMGO 2024. Let's remember that the 2024 PMGO winning team will be awarded an additional qualifying spot for its region in the PUBG Mobile's World Cup. So that's very important. That's not only this game, this tournament and game, it's, it's gonna be further in the year. So today is very important. E eu espero que todos vocês tenham vindo preparados, porque o dia de hoje, não só o campeão levará esse lindo troféu para casa, mas também eles vão garantir mais uma vaga para sua região que vai diretamente para o PUBG World Cup. Hoje é dia de lutar pela vitória e buscar a glória para o seu país. All of those 16 teams, all they want now is to leave this beautiful trophy right next to us. Their chance to make their regions proud and also conquer the glory that they are looking for in the last weeks during this entire journey. It's going to be amazing today. Foi uma jornada longa, mas tudo, absolutamente tudo, nos trouxeram para esse único momento que contemplamos a beleza desse lindo troféu e a pergunta que não quer calar. Quem será o grande campeão do PMJ, PMGO 2024? Together we wrote beautiful stories here during the last weeks, but only one of those stories will be forever remembered as the best campaign in the first PUBG Mobile competitive event in 2024. To all the PUBG Mobile fans out there, let's make history! Let's go beyond the top! And it all comes down to this. The final game of the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil Qualifier Finals. First place is going straight to the final. It has been just dwindling down little by little from 32 teams. We have now reached the top 16. Uh, the top team, of course, who wins today's uh, event is gonna get that direct seat into the main event. Yeah. If we've ever seen the backup, this would have to be it right here. We've got three. Oh, actually, the oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh. Now is the time. High fives. Definitely not trying to leave things up to chance. And see who won this thing. It is the high fives. Look at that. Welcome.
welcome to the 2024 PMGO Brazil. Today we start the prelims stage. Are you guys ready? Cause the players sure are. This is such an insane lineup of teams. I mean, we were talking about this after after the qualifiers, right? These teams are really busting themselves, trying to get through these games and just keep on getting even more challenging. But the good thing is, Lord, the share of the price pool also goes up, right? So from 64k all the way up onto $80,000 for the Freedoms. You want to definitely punch your ticket on over to that main stage, because that's where the big money is. He's gonna make that switch. You can see it right away. He wants to make sure he collects as much eliminations as possible. How do you survive? Oh, he's gaming. He's gaming. He takes down Lord. Another point on the board, trying to keep his tournament alive, but Team Falcons finally shut him down. Team Falcons currently having the upper hand. Icy Ooh. with the easy shotgun sends him back to the lobby. Wild versus Stone. Who's gonna win? Stone versus CBS. Wild, wide on the open, no cover, has to hit the shot, and he oh. can't do it! What a beautiful <laughs> attempt, though! You can just see the hugs coming out from Vampire. That's the most emotion they showed so far. The finals are finally here. We're gonna see some of the big boy squads and Zuti. I know there's some names that we haven't seen in a bit that are making their big comeback today. They know they have the advantage of this circle. They're looking to get it done here as they take out Nexruria. One more player left. And now we'll see Alpha 7 win the first chicken dinner of BMGO Brazil. Let's and it's done. And what more could you ask for here? The crowd is going for surf. Like they were kind of working as a squad because they knew what the best thought was, but now it's just seen last one up. Ragey looking to have a monster performance here. One more elimination. That'll be 15 and a chicken dinner. That name looks good. Oh, just a little bit too far. Gun switch. It's all over, baby. It is Team Reject with a monster chicken dinner. Let the madness begin tomorrow. <laughs> fizessem muito barulho para os 16 times que estão aqui presentes. Now let's welcome our 16 teams. I want a lot of noise from Brazil. Please, a lot of noise. Let's start this because can we start the first team? Can we? I hope so. So, straight from Mexico, let's welcome Royals of War. Let's continue the Brazilian noise now for Smoke Gaiman! All the way from South Korea, let's welcome D Plus Kibia!
They finished in first place in the qualifiers and came straight to the main event. Please welcome HFIYS Esports. champions in 2020 and 2021 please welcome nova esports Now playing in our home country, let's welcome Death Wolves! Turkey also came to make a history here today. Welcome, Regna Gary Abra! One of the biggest esports arcs in the world right now. Please welcome Team Falcons. well represented by Vampire Esports! Champions winners in 2023, please welcome IHC Esports. A warm welcome to Boone Esports! All the way from Turkey, please welcome the amazing INWO NRX.
Let's welcome now the global champions in 2022 S2G Esports! They are in first place in the, in the global standings so far. Please welcome Reject. And now, one of the biggest PUBG Mobile teams in the world, from Brazil, please welcome Alpha 7! Today is the final day. A lot of things gonna be decided today. So let's cheer up for whoever you're cheering for. Let's share on social media with hashtag BMGO2024. So now, are you ready, Carol? I'm so ready, Isa. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's start the competition! If there was ever a time, especially when we go into that first game for Brazil, for the Brazilians team, especially off the seven, to show up, I mean, you see how packed, how packed it is over there, PMGO Brazil. You know what? I'm excited, and anybody can win. We got a chance to see earlier the overall leaderboards, Hot Jukes, and we saw how close everything is between first place all the way down to fifth place. Ooh, I mean, it's... So close. This is really going to come down to, I think, these first few matches to set the tone here. Uh, I mean, it's so crazy to watch the reaction from these fans. They're obviously not a huge fan of S2G, uh, and I think I know why, Seven. Uh, yeah, you know, in PMGC, let's just say S2G was not kind to Alpha 7. So I wouldn't be surprised if for some reason today, whenever S2G gets eliminated, if we just hear <laughs> all the Brazilian fans starting to cheer and cheering and cheering and keeping it going <laughs> against s2g earlier i was getting a chance to talk a little bit more about reject and i kind of want to give it its flowers to to reggie as i was looking into him a little bit more this man is a veteran he's been playing pubg mobile esports now since 20 since 2019 and last year he was pretty much the mvp for the whole time for the whole japan league season three he was mvp in phase one and he was mvp in phase two and right now he's actually leading everybody in the pmgo brazil 2024 with the most elims 24 eliminations no so i mean you couldn't ask for anything better for your main star player to be popping off and on top of that sute sarah I mean, we saw what he was able to do yesterday in that crazy finish in Erangel. Remember of the radar, he was able to find those awesome angles against the other teams. Everybody yeah. right now is looking great on Reject Japan. I mean, Rejects have really turned it around. I think you said it earlier too. They've never finished above a top eight when it came to the global events, right? And now they're sitting here in first place currently. Right, we still got a whole days of action. My only question is, right, they've had years and years of experience of trying to punch upwards, but now that they're starting off the day in that first place, I don't know how they're going to be able to handle that pressure because a lot of teams over the years, you know, you start off first place on the final day of the finals and you don't end up first place after everything is said and done.
I think I know which team you're you're thinking, especially right off the top of your head. And you know what? Let's get a chance to talk about it a little bit longer in regards to that team. And in case people don't know, we're referring to Alpha 7. Alpha 7 in the past, they've been able to be there towards the top, but then they end up tending to choke on the final day. Well, for Alpha 7, I mean, they're kind of hunting down the leader. They have 99 points. Reject has 111. What do we want to see out of Alpha 7 in this first match since you were talking about it, CT? I mean, for Alpha 7, in the first match, ugh, man, it's Sandhawk. That's usually good for Alpha 7 because uh -huh. they have that, you know, fierce fighting capabilities. The squad the is so one. strong. But I don't know, man. Some of the other teams right now on Sandhawk have just been looking much stronger. Name and point, Reject. I think they by far have been the most aggressive team in the whole entire tournament series. Like winning every single hot drop. And of course, obviously, they have the most amount of elimination points to boot hot jukes. Yeah, I mean, they have the uh, the best chicken dinner so far for the year. And actually, they're tied because there's only one other team that has had a chicken dinner with 15 eliminations, and that's Team Falcons. I mean, I, that's the problem is, is, you know, yeah, Team Reject, Alpha 7, S2G, these two top three teams were studied all night long by the rest of the lobby. And the thing about that is, like you're kind of mentioning, you know, the qualifying team, right, or the team that actually gets first place here, well, not only win $100,000, but they're going to win an extra qualifying spot at the PUBG Mobile World Cup. So they have their entire region behind them here. And when that happens and that's at stake, you know, you got to take down these top three squads. So I guarantee you, if you're a team like Team Reject, you're going to have to put that, that aggression higher. Alpha 7 in the same boat because the second a team knocks you, they're going to make sure they eliminate you. They have to at this point. There's no other choice, 7 there's definitely no other choice and the thing too is if we do end up seeing any fights we want to see especially if, the, if you're one of the teams at the top make up your mind quickly on what you want to do with those fights right and that's something that we saw sg being able to do so great yesterday where they ended up getting some knocks and then they decided to back off as well from other stuff so with this teams You're just waiting to get into that plane path now. The final thing to be done is to get into that plane path, get into our first match of the day here for PMGC here in Istanbul. Maybe we're getting that trifecta split every single time, but here we are in the plane. He continues to move along the wall, and Ray Z steps in, and it's a one for one alive, but they find that they will lose oh. the in the side. Lines and more start to fall as well. S2G keep it going. Today's uh, game, the best offense was S2G. Rebo is here as well, and Dino will go down. Alpha 7 sweep on through. They will stand up for the performance, and Rebo gets another challenge. And it will not be long for it. Alpha 7. Feeling good, but it's just the first match. We're going to try to stay like that. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Which team was today the most yeah, honestly, this Vietnamese squad is has been extremely impressive. Four six to eight storm. But Ice is getting low towards his spot from the top side. Oh. Lovely day. The Leonard don't count him out. Icy with the storm. No eliminations needed. We'll take the second place. Oh, he might get a knock. Unfortunately, the hop into the back there is good. We're preparing for the game. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. We're
2G to give a chance to Hamzy. He can find the stage. He has a penalty. That's 2G. We're in a chicken dinner. Böyle bir taraftar karşısında oynamak isten çok güzel. Bugün performansımız 157 bence bana göre. Yani yarın 170 son 100 olacak. O yüzden şampiyon. Look to drop the day out the window. It's great. Taken out. Two players now. Razies down. Getting knocked. Eliminations blank. And he's going to burn himself away. Yeah, the real PMG C for me begins tomorrow. Yes. Because it's about the prep work you do tonight for the next day of matches. It's about the review. It's about the VODs. It's about figuring out what to do with your team. And obviously, you just played six matches back to back. Your day's not done. It's not even close to done. First day of grand final, I think we got a lot of pressure, and so we will try our best today. So we try our best. Bütün fanlarıma teşekkür ediyorum cidden. Çok güzel bir enerjiye sahipsiniz. Bugün de desteklerinizi esirgemeyin. Hepinize çok teşekkür ediyorum. Everything were not so good as we prepare, but we already done some work at Poto, and today we will fix everything what we don't get yesterday. So cheer for us. Your team has had many brushes with the PMGC Championship in the past, and this year may be your best chance to win. Um, can you summarize what your team has done better this year versus others? Yeah, got us the PMGC também. E a gente preparou bastante dos times e se Deus quiser, esse ano a gente leva o time. Could do something. Rebo finds another knock at center. Your ball down and put. Chinese team stepping it up a notch today, that's for sure. Shadow in alongside with Mao. It's a two-way conflict. Mafioso fights the third. Look for the second one and makes it happen. Acho que a nossa qualidade. All right, well, I'm glad we got a chance to see there what was happening in PMGC last time it happened in December in Istanbul. Boy, that was a fun one. That was definitely, definitely a fun one. But yes. I want to talk about a little bit more about the, actually one of the teams that we saw there with S2G. Those back-to-back -back chicken dinners, you were talking about it too. Hot jokes real quick. Do you think S2G got what it takes? I mean, they've shown it in the past, but right now in this tournament, do you think they got what it takes to possibly hunt, keep on hunting down that first place? I think they got what it takes. So many of these teams got it takes. We got what it takes, especially as we go into game number one here. They have to start off strong, though. It's all about what can you do in Sandhawk. They definitely have to start off strong. None of these teams that are within the top five can have a slow start here, even if it is Sandhawk. As we get started, ladies and gentlemen, here on the final day of the PMGO Brazil Open. Oh my goodness. Sandhawk, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. And the reason earlier, Sute, why I was asking you, what are we thinking about in regards to Alpha 7 for a start of the day in yeah. Sandhawk? It's because so far, in my eyes, they've been the best performing team when it comes to this map. On the first day, they ended up with the chicken dinner, eight eliminations. And yesterday, they ended up with the third place and eight eliminations. So, I mean, if there was ever a time for them to start carrying some momentum and also close a little bit that 12-point that gap that right now Rejects has on them, this is the map to do it. Well, speaking about rejects, that hot drop is going to happen once again. Rejects in first place are not going to back off. It is starting off hot like we expected. And rejects have al already lost one player in the form of Sara. I can't tell if they managed to get a return knock or not. I see three players of Royals of War. Did they manage to already pick up a fourth? Yes, they did. Yes. They got one elimination. So it's one apiece right now. And the aggression's ramping up. Rejects down to two, though, because Divine also got knocked. In. You can see the pressure. They're forced to fall back. They cannot get the revive onto Divine. The 2v3 ensues. Revus on the side. Ragey goes down. And that's the reject team out. 20k. 20K oh, yeah. Once the third again. party. <laughs> he's done this twice. He's trying to done it three times, but he's done this twice now where Tony K tries to get that angle and it ends up happening. And guess what? 
for all these teams that are trying to get for that first place boy they're gonna see that elimination feed and they are gonna be so so happy if they can make the best of it when it comes to this match i was talking about alpha 7 having a great start here i was hoping rejects will be able to have that great start as well but with this hot drop you never know yes you might have been able to win the previous days but you never know what can happen as we do have some of the other teams hot dropping as well man i i honestly can't blame the rejects team you yep. any other team right you're coming into the final day first place you've been hot dropped in the same location so many times i would say you got to change it up you have to change it up but rejects they made it all the way here via hot drops they made it all the way here dropping and fighting and having that confidence and shutting down every team that's challenged them so if they change drop spots now on the final day I would have almost said like, no, I don't want to see that because you got here trusting in yourself. So they trusted this time. It just so happened. It didn't work out. At least that's my take on it. And also the circle is in the Southwest. So this would have been a great circle for the rejects team to play in, but they're no longer here. Oh, I fully agree with you. I, I, Honestly, I wouldn't have wanted to see anything different on rejects in, re in regards to their landing spot, especially with what they were able to do yesterday when we went there right remember this team on sand high from yesterday they ended up in second place with 10 eliminations so they were probably remembering that they were like okay we're not gonna be changing anything everything so far up to this point has been working out for us even if we do end up losing some hot drops here and there mm -hmm. it doesn't matter so far it's been working out for us so let's test out our luck let's test out if we can actually end up beating rose war what actually surprised me though is that they didn't maybe they weren't expecting for vampire esports to third party them again and i felt like tony k ended up moving a lot faster this yeah, time than we have faster. seen them in the previous two days because usually he takes a little bit longer but this time i felt like he grabbed the gun he knew exactly where to go he's been able to do a lot of research in the past two days of where these teams if they do end up fighting and where they position themselves and that was perfect i mean if you're royals award that was a perfect third party because they ended up helping you so so much and if you're rejects you just caught off off guard so quickly there by Tony K. Yeah, that fight between Rejects and Royals of War was actually the fastest it's ever been. So when they got third party, yeah, you're absolutely right. Tony K was faster than ever to get there. Also, Royals of War pressured Rejects really hard this time around. It forced Rejects to fall back into the open. So that fight is done. You saw there on the circle. Next, Ruya made a great rotation, carving their way through the middle of the zone straight to dead center at a strong compound. The Falcons have weaved their way in from boot camp between D plus and Royals Vore. They managed to get to the southwest side as well. And besides those two teams I just mentioned, I think everyone else is still kind of looting up before they rotate in. Yeah, what was interesting as well from that fight, I, I, I'm still on that reject versus uh, Royals of War fight, was that it wasn't just Tony K from, from, from Vampire Esports trying to third party that fight. We also saw players from IHC trying to third party that fight, making it a little bit harder for Royals of War. If for some reason, Tony, I, I want to play a little bit of what if here for reject fans out there. If for some reason, Tony K would have taken his usual time to try to end, end up third partying that fight, it could have probably ended up working out in the favor because Royals of War was starting to get shots from behind. So interesting stuff and interesting adjustments that we're seeing here as S2G, a team that definitely needs those points, is going to be going up against Zebra Masters. They're going to be able to get a knock. They do have CO later. They're one of their players knock they don't want to end up losing him he's gonna get eliminated here oh not how sg wanted to get started as now they're trying to get this fight are they gonna back up from this fight i don't think they're gonna be able to but we did see one of the players from s2g trying to get an off angle yeah, s2g one of the players and the buggy wrapped around the backside, so they are committed to this fight is zebra master going to be able to isolate the player that went on their flank Kelsey with his grenades close by He's cooking them, throwing it through the buggy. No connection. Pretty close, though. It's a 3v3 right now. It's pretty much who gets the next opening knock. And Neil Zada running around in the open. Kelsey does find one with the nade on the backside. Now Neil Zada's got to make a play. And he goes down. 3v1. Ray Z down to low HP. But I think he's fine. They got to clean this out together. No, they can't do this. They're getting a little overzealous here. And now the player from the flank is forced to go up. To prevent that thirst and they should be good Kelsey gets the finish down to one HP 
Good hustle out of S2G. That almost could have been a thirst. You saw the other player really trying to go for the thirst. So S2G win the fight on the northeastern edge of zone. Losing one player, but they do pick up four points. And with how close the point spread is right now, Seven, on Sandhawk... I'd say that's worth lose one player get four points. You never know with Sandhawk. You can, you got to get any point you can. I'm with you. I mean, look at that. Just being able to get those four eliminations already allows them to be able to jump above Alpha Seven, and the way that Kelsey was able to respond there as well. Wow, I'm impressed with what SGG was able to do there for only to end up losing one player. They get a little bit sketchy. Not gonna lie, I got a little bit worried when that second player ended up getting knocked. They were just pushing one by one, but good to see them being able to clutch up that fight. And now take those four eliminations. But it, yeah, I'm 100% I'm with you there, Suti, with what you were asking. I'm willing to risk one player. I'm willing to lose one player, especially in Sandhawk, if it's going to end up being a four point for us. Because you never know. You just yeah. never know what rotation, especially with this circle right here. Look That's how much wild. water is involved. It's going to be tough to rotate into here. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen a circle on this far southwest southwestern side too on Sandhawk. So teams are not familiar with where teams might be pathing, if teams are going to decide to camp the multitude of bridges, which we do see some bridge camping already. Smoke Gaming lost one player to, I believe that would be Alpha 7 crossing that bridge. You can see on the mini-map on the east side, Alpha 7 has got a long way to go. But with the circle so far to the west and the water, it's going to pull back towards the east, which may help out Alpha 7. We'll see shortly. IHC also lost the player on the north side to Regnum Karia. And as I say that, they're losing a couple more to the side of Vampire. Rogue finds one with a nade, but I don't think IHC can recover from this. And I see a team that was just so hot after day one with what we were able to see out of them. Sadly for them, they were not able to keep all the players alive. I will see Seal being able to clutch up there a fight against Stone. And he should be able to pick up his teammate very close by. Vampire Esports, the team that more than likely was camping this bridge, ends up getting surprised here by IC as we also see an Alpha 7 get some elimination points in the elimination feed. But IHC should be able to reset here. Vampire Esports is going to end up backing off. And for IHC, they could possibly now start a little bit of a bridge camp as well for some of the other teams that are going to be trying to rotate. We're going to be switching over to Boom Boom, another team that surprised us yesterday, making it within the top five. They're going to be getting into a fight with Death Wolf Sears. The DBS is out, Ooh. and oh no! Flyboy ends up getting knocked, and he's going to get quickly eliminated here by Death Wolves. Yeah, the DBS so deadly. It's either you or him, and unfortunately for Boom, Boom went down, lost one player. Razy finds a nice nade, but from the side in the smoke, a quick trade is there. Death Wolves, though, however, are very split up, I think. It's only one player we see here from the Death Wolves team, and two of the Boom players are here to challenge. UMP, M4, in hand, shimmy left and right, and he goes down. Yeah, the last player of the Death Wolves was not able to rotate there in time. He's actually further up in the zone. So being way too split up, Boom will secure two points and remain as a three-man team currently. This fight was happening on the south, uh, yeah, the southern edge of the Sandhawk zone. Yeah, for Boom, I mean, we were talking earlier about how SGG, you're willing to raise one player there for four eliminations. Boom is willing to raise that one player of two eliminations. And not only that, just a great position here within the circle because if for some re reason it does end up shifting south, it would be wonderful for this team to be able to set up here and just start defending it. The switch over to Nova, a team that a lot of people had as favorite. It's been a while since we got a chance to see Nova Esports from China at a global event for PUBG Mobile. And boy, it's, it's been lackluster to say the least. I was expecting a lot more. We were wondering why we were expecting. We, we were creating theories here as we're starting to see the new circle. Maybe today will be the day that Nova, even though they might not be able to challenge there for the first place, unless they pull something along the lines of what SCG was able to do yesterday, being able to double your points in just two matches. Yeah. At least they're looking to save face a little bit. At least they're looking to probably get some points under the belt and not be so far down on the leaderboard. Yeah, you never know. And just as we talk about them, one of their players did get knocked. So Nova should be able to get that quick revive. But you can see the circle once again pulled to the west. I was saying it might pull back inland, like a hard shift to the east, but that is not the case. Everyone on the eastern side has to keep going further. S2G are actually the ones challenging the Nova squad, getting a re-knock, but look at S2G's position. 
they are not going to be able to do much from there unless somehow they can drive right up. Razy hops out early, deploying himself as kind of a, a turret down there, but the driver kept going for the distraction play, and he does get caught. And you hear the crowd cheering for S2G losing players right now. Yeah, we're more than likely going to keep hearing that the whole day. And there you go. The last player from S2G gets found. S2G, those four points earlier come in massive. But now it comes down to how Alpha 7, what Boom is going to be able to do as well. And next, Ruya. I mean, next, Ruya still has all their four players alive. I'm not really sure yet where they are currently within. Okay, they're south of Ruins. They should be able to work with that too. And now we're going to be switching over here to D plus Kia against Royals of War. Royals of War down one player. They're going to be able to spot one of the players. Oh no! Actually, his player ends up getting spotted. And D plus Kia here starting the first blood draw as they were able to knock somebody there from Royals of War. And he's going to continue going. You can see also there trying to oh. find the off angle. He's going to be able to get Tonka and he's going to make it a little bit easier here for the rest of his squad as they're going to be jumping in. And that is it for Royals of War. D plus Kia being able to eliminate them and eliminate them in a good way. They didn't end up losing anybody. Yeah, Royals of War looking to set a trap there, but it looked like Rivas might have fallen asleep in the corner right there. Didn't react fast enough. D+, plus. whoever was the entry player, I couldn't quite catch it. Very heads-up play, checking every corner. Even though there was no sound when he got dropped off, you're never too sure on Sandhawk, and that paid off for him to make sure all the corners were clear. We do have Regnum Karia here, who did get a point earlier on onto IHC. They're coming in from the north side across the bridge. They definitely heard the commotion between D plus and Royals of War. And meanwhile, on the southern side, here is Alpha 7. They've managed to wrap down to the south, but there's so many teams around them. And if the circle centers up, they got probably the toughest challenge ahead of them yet with, I count, like maybe five teams around them and with Nova wrapping behind them too. It is. They're going to be forced to take fights here. We look over at D plus key. I mean, they're trying to hunt down Silas for Regnum Karia as he's very close by. And this would be good for Silas if he's able to knock this player. He's going to be able to confirm into elimination. You were talking about Alpha 7 earlier. Guess what? Nova Esports is now taking the fight there to Alpha 7 as we're seeing in the elimination feed. And I think Alpha 7 ended up getting the better of that. Yep. They do have one of their players not, but uh, so far looking good for that team. And I'm sorry that we're kind of focusing a little bit more on the el elimination feed, but for this team's <laughs> right now, for my eyes, they aren't really in contention. This is teams that are <laughs> we're just kind of filling in the gaps and whatnot. But for Alpha 7 to get those points, not lose anybody, a team that is in contention, that if they do have a great game here, they could go back to that first place. I, I mean, that's what I'm going to keep my eyes on. Yeah, that was a four-man team of Nova, too, that Alpha 7 eliminated. Alpha 7 only... Make, did they get all four of their Elan points? Potentially onto yep. Nova. And the fact that Alpha 7 still has all four up. And more importantly, the circle did shift down south. So Alpha 7 do not have to make a dangerous trek northwards through multitudes of teams. And they could have a little bit of a breathing space for now in this circle. Catch your bearings, get some intel around them, and play from there. And Boom as well. I'm starting to look at that leaderboard there. Boom only has one player alive. This is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see what next Ruya was going to be doing here. They are going to be barely within that circle. They do have some vehicles to work with too. But there is one team, Team Falcons. We know how what that team is able to do, especially to start popping off. And on top of that, you're going to have Smoke Gaming next Ruya. Pushing up this mountain. Barely gets away with it there. Kunha is going to get suppressed from the back. Great play there by Frozen. Being able to do exactly what he needed to do. Knocking that player. Eliminating him. But he needs to be careful because there's going to be more Ooh. players nearby. Frozen getting a little bit stuck there. There's going to be mollies. There's going to be grenades getting caught him. And he ends up getting caught. He ends up getting knocked. But is he going to end up getting eliminated or can his team recover him? Next Ria at this point. They don't want to end up losing any players. But this is just such a tough position. Suiting. Yeah, th this is really tough. I don't know where the player that drove off went. The initial player that drove in deeper. I think he just went more into zone and couldn't come back. Oh no, he's at the top. He got suppressed yep. and he wasn't able to prevent that thirst. They do get the re-knock back onto Ninho though. But next, Ruya has lost that one player, which is great news for Alpha 7. You can see in the standings, all the teams near and next to Alpha 7 are, are either all gone or severely hurt. And Alpha 7 still has four smoke game. Try and close this out. Maki or Miyaki not able to hit the shots. And that is it. Next, Ruya pick up three points, but they do lose Frozen.
Massive three points there for them as now they're going to start being able to focus a little bit more on how they're going to make this rotation in another team. Remember, they saw them getting shots from earlier. It was none other than Team Falcons. And who would go Alpha 7 out in the open, hoping that next Rhea does not look over that mountain because they are super exposed right now. If they do end up peeking over, they have a little bit of a ledge here. And they have some buildings to work with, but they are not going to be in the circle. They're going to have to make this push at one point or another. And something that was off with Alpha 7 yesterday was their timing. Is their timing going to be on point as Vampire Esports is going to start seeing the smokes? And they're going to start looking for options and openings on, on being able to shoot this player. So you can see just shots look, going on the ground. They don't have to worry about next Rio right now. Alpha 7 trying to see if they can make it into this building. And so far with this smokes, they're getting very close without losing anybody. That is one tough crossing to make, but you can see the smokes coming into play, working in spades. Meanwhile, next Rhea on the eastern side are trying to fight their way in. Falcons flying close by. They spring the trap. They get one onto Swain, and I think next Rhea may have met their match. They're down to only three members, remember, so they can't do much. And with that, Nate, I see, takes down another player. Now it's all down to Z Wolf. Can Z Wolf clutch it up? There's three players up for the Falcons. They got one knock, but can Z-Wolf get three more here? I don't know if he'd be able to do this. He's going to find that second one. No, he doesn't. That would have been crucial. And oh, wow, what a shot. He could still do this potentially. And no, he gets taken down. Falcons will get a full reset back up to four. Falcons with a great push up there. Remember, they heard next Rhea fighting earlier and that's what next Rhea was worried about as they're starting to switch their focus and guess what who guess which other team hurt this fight is none other than high fives that's right h-f-i-y-s because we saw them end the day yesterday with the with the third place actually with the chicken dinner and 13 chicken, eliminations yeah. and something we didn't even get a chance to talk about today that we were talking about yesterday was those teams towards the bottom that don't necessarily need the points that aren't going to be challenging for the championship taking points away from those teams that are trying to challenge and look at high fives on a great spot right now it's going to be a tough push for alpha 7 to even get into this zone with vampire esports having v Vehicles, and we know vampires will with their splits and when they are said they are gonna be hard very very hard to get into this zone for alpha 7 yeah the only real benefit alpha 7 has is the fact that vampire is down to a three man they did lose that one player way earlier on to IHC so vampire with only three but the superior positioning is that enough for them to defend against alpha 7 alpha 7 with all four I mean if they just run up guns blazing just one knock and, you know, Vampire's down to two just like that. We'll see what Alpha 7 does here as the zone will be closing in very soon. Falcons, meanwhile, have to make their own push straight into Hi-Fi. And they're going to try and do it straight into the buildings. Falcons, another team that's looking to do what STG was able to do yesterday. Try to double their points here. Here comes the push on Hi-Fi's. Hi-Fi's, we've seen this fight before. Hi-Fi's Monkey actually going to be able to connect there with the nade. Silas, Rangnam, Karya starting to third party this as well. And right now, it's not looking good for Team Falcons. They have found their kryptonite once again as Hi-Fi's ends up alongside Regnum Karya eliminating them. And that is it for Team Falcons. Only five eliminations. You're going to be able to get some placement points. We're talking about this push that Alpha 7 was going to be doing on Vampire Esports. And something that ended up working out for Alpha 7 was that timing right there. Although Tony K is going to end up finding Mafioso. Such a tough push. And I don't think Alpha 7 has any of the smokes because of how many smokes they ended up using earlier. Yeah, that first initial crossing did cost them all their smoke util. They had a couple smokes that would have changed everything. Just smoke off the windows, the angles, and they could have got a lot closer. New zone pops up. Alpha 7 is going to play the snake game now. We are down to the last five teams. Only 13 players remaining. Alpha 7 could still win this fight against Vampire because now Vampire steps out. They're basically standing wide in the open at the top, and Alpha 7 is covered by the grass just slightly as... One of them, Magrellan, I think, pops up to take some shots. Does manage to go back down without getting knocked. Another nade coming in from Carrillo. No knock. Regnum Karya fighting on the north side with high fives. It is a four-way battle right now. And we can't forget about Boom. Boom is still alive in here in the form of Razy all the way in the backside. 
And that's something that ended up working out in the favor of these two teams because Boom could have ended up third party in this fight. Instead, they decided to back up. And look oh! at this. Oh, great shot there by Alpha 7 as they make sure they hold off Tony K. Right now, they're going to be in an even tougher spot as they're going to start getting spotted by everybody. And can they hit this shot? Carrillo, do we know what he's capable of? But here we go. Alpha oh. 7 just a little bit too much. Regnum Karia, Vampire is supposed to be on the way. Alpha 7 gets eliminated fourth place with five eliminations. And boom, still with that just one player with Racy. He's been surviving. He's been trying to clutch up the points for this team. Meanwhile, Regnum Karia, 13 eliminations. They're getting involved in everything that is given to them. Wow. As they're able to eliminate Boom Esports. I thought Boom would go unnoticed, but they found him, and they found him quick with that nade. 2v2 scenario, and it seems like every single day, Seven, the teams that need it the most, that need the most amount of points, somehow get up to 14, 15 eliminations. But can they get the chicken? Does not seem like it. Schweppes finds one player 2v1, and Vampire with the superior positioning get the chicken dinner. Did they get enough elim points though? That's the big question because they were kind of far down on the leaderboards. However, with five more matches to go, a chicken dinner to start, that's how you want to go about it. Vampire Esports back-to-back -back chicken dinners when we are talking about Sandhawk. My goodness, this team for Vampire Esports has been the same storyline this whole PMGO. If they're able to set themselves up, and that's what I was getting worried about some of the other teams that, that are towards the top that were getting, trying to go for those points. Once Vampire Esports sets themselves up, it is so tough to try to break into any compound that they are controlling because they're going to be able to find every single angle possible and we see that out of them and to answer your question earlier Sute, they end up with six eliminations Ooh. not the likes that we've seen before out of some of the other teams double digits but six they'll be happy with that chicken dinner yeah six is you you'd want more you definitely yeah. want more, <laughs> but a chicken dinner is still a chicken dinner, right? That's a good way to start off the game or the day on a good morale vampire, you know, losing that one player early on. I think if they had all four up, they'd be much more aggressive with this positioning and pick up more, but they got the job done and that's what matters, Hot Jukes. Yeah, they got it done. I mean, back-to-back -back chicken dinners at Sandhawk, like you mentioned, Seven. A big win for them. And I think it's going to be great for their morale. And not to mention a really, really great performance for Regnum Karia. And one thing I noticed, right? Team Reject going out early. Yeah. You know? S2G going out pretty early. A lot of the top squads getting taken out opens the door for these mid-pack teams. So to see some of these squads that really desperately needed the points and are going to try to make a crazy run for top three, do it right off the rip, it gets things, it makes things real scary here, Seven. Real scary. And the part is that at the start of the day, I was like, okay, all the top five teams could honestly challenge for that, uh, <laughs> for that throne, for that first place, right? But with some of the teams, like you were mentioning there, Hot Jukes, and like we got a chance to see in this past match, some of the top teams getting elim eliminated early, not being able to get that many points in regards to S2G. Yes, they were able to get four eliminations, but I don't think they ended up getting any of the placement points. It's going to make it a little bit easier for some of the other teams to be able to catch up, like Vampire East Force. Like you mentioned too, Regnum Karia, they had such good performances. And for Regnum Karia, we saw them getting involved in everything that they could get involved in. The third party, the angles, anything that they could get their hands on, Sute. Regnum Karia was there. Yeah, Regnum Karia picking up a lot of points. Uh, not the chicken, but I think they probably got more than the team that got the chicken dinner when it comes to overall points gained. And, you know, at the end of the day, the Elim points do stack up. Boom made it well into the late game, too. So they kind of, you know, throw their hat in there and they're maintaining their pacing to try and get that first place. The big story, though, for me is Alpha 7, right? With Reject going out basically with zero points and Alpha 7 coming in with a couple Elim points with a decent placement, they close the gap just that much more. They will definitely be closing in that gap. And honestly, great play there out of Alpha 7. I think you and I, as we were watching what they had to work with, I honestly thought they were going to get eliminated a lot sooner. I thought they weren't even going to be able to get into the placement points. But look at that. Third place in regards to points. And then Regnum Karia, you were right. <laughs> 20 points for this team with how many eliminations they were able to get, Hajux. That's ridiculous. That is honestly insane. It's so crazy how we're seeing these point sponges pretty much every single game here, right? One 
team in particular gets, you know, 10 eliminations, 14. We saw Boom. They got second place yesterday with 19 eliminations. Yeah. That's unreal, you know? So if anything like that happens today, honestly, any one of these teams in that like top seven, eight position could win first place here. And going now into Aaron Gill, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit intrigued to see how Reject is going to react. We know that they're not going to have to worry about any hot drops anymore. And we know how well they've been able to perform when we end up talking about Aaron Gill. And you know what? Let's look at this team performance here from some of these teams that are currently at the top, that are challenging for that top spot. You talked about it yesterday, Hajuks. Sute, we got a chance to see it. Wow. Look at that massive jump up that S2G Ooh. was able to do. Yeah, S2, that jump, like, yeah, they doubled their points in just, like, a couple of matches versus, like, the, the entirety of two days. That is crazy. Rejects have a nice trend upwards. So day one, Rejects was, like, almost nowhere to be seen, and then they just exploded and kept running with it. And now all three teams, look how close they are to one another in total points, Hajuks. To the moon! It's so crazy. That's honestly ridiculous. I could, I could not believe that jump, in all honesty. So, I mean, at this point, I believe anything's that po anything's possible. By looking Ooh. at the overall Ooh. standings, that gap has gotten quite small, Seven. Only three points. Alpha 7 being able to close that gap in a big, big way. Luckily for Reject, though, that gap that they were able to create keeps them in first place. As S2G goes back down there to third place, 103 points. Boom Esports, you were talking about it too, Sute, with the points that they were able to get mm -hmm. there from the placement. It kind of helps them big. push up that leaderboard, which is going to be nice for them. And then from some of these teams, Team Falcons, man, they are not going to be happy where they currently are at. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing a little bit more out of Team Falcons. Mm, you know what's kind of crazy about this whole thing? Is the fact that first the difference between first place and eighth place is 27 points okay yeah now i would have thought that that was a massive gap right but guess what alpha seven and day one had a 28 point gap and after match two that gap was completely closed so that goes to show you if you're an ihc fan in eighth place or on up any one of these teams can get can pass up and win first place it's crazy yeah, anything can happen. I think SGG definitely opened the door yesterday. And don't forget about the Realme 12 Pro Plus. It elevates your photography experience with 120 times super zoom and performance in games. How to be a portrait master. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, there from that quick break. Tony K actually ends up getting the MVP for that last match with three eliminations, 740 damage. And before we had to go into that quick break there, Hajux, you mentioned it. We got a chance to see it, too, when we ended up seeing the graphic of those top three teams on what they have done so far in the PMGO. I mean, with S2G, that big jump up, I felt like it opened the eyes for some of the other teams that might have thought they weren't in contention, right? This is why I was talking about Team Falcons. This is why, even though it wasn't that big of a chicken dinner for Vampire Esports, they're going to be happy that they got that chicken dinner because if they continue on this trend, they know what S2G did yesterday. They're looking to duplicate that here today. I mean, it's happened so many times. S2G did it in day, uh, yeah, yesterday. And then not to mention, you had Team Reject do it as well, right? They had a 15 elimination chicken dinner in match number eight. And that just made them rocket launch themselves into that top position. And now we see them in first place here. Uh, I wonder, Zute, right, what, what's going through the mind of Team Reject? Because you were kind of alluding to it at the start of the day, how how much you would avoid wanting to be in first place in this spot. And we saw them in Sandhawk be the first team out. Yeah, it's it sucks to start off the day as the first team out getting zero points when you're you know trying to hold that first place position. But you know what? I feel like for Rejects in particular, with how they've managed to get here in the first place, I mean, their mental resilience must be extremely 
high, right? Like, just quick comparison, right? Alpha 7. Every time they went to global events, they've always done really well. Just almost shy of, you know, first place. Rejects, they've done, to put it like, you know, bluntly, terrible. Mm, almost every yep. single time they've gone to global stage. But they still get there every single time. They still try their best. So the fact that they're, you know, first place right now, I think they're okay. Like, yeah, you went out first, you know, on Sandhawk. Okay. That sucks. That's terrible. But for this team in particular, I feel like their mental resilience has got to be stronger than most other teams. And I don't think they're too worried or too phased. I mean, last time we saw Reject being eliminated that early on first, after their bounce back was actually in the first day. The, the first Sandhawk that we saw out of them, they ended up in 16th place with only two eliminations. They were able to make a comback on the next angle with the ninth place but they ended up with 10 eliminations is that the reject that we are going to be seeing here in the first Aaron Gale of day three let's see for ourselves here we go what's up everybody it's hot jukes next to zute we're going to go ahead and take over this match and it's a very very important one first Aaron Gale of the day the this is the map we're going to be playing on the most and i think this is going to be the place where most of these teams are going to soak up those huge points it really is so crazy zoo that Every match here, pretty much, we're seeing double-digit elimination chicken dinners. As a matter of fact, yeah. let me go ahead and see if I can do it. Yeah, in the past, since round eight, can you believe that? Since match eight, every single person that's gotten a chicken dinner has gotten more than 10, 10 eliminations. That's insane. I mean, I feel like, you know, the tournament just ramps up. Players realize what's at stake, and when they get a chance, you know, to get that win and really gun for it, they do it big. And so earlier you were alluding between first and eighth place, you said there was a difference of how many points? 28 points? 27. 27 points? Okay, yeah. So here's the thing. A 20-point game is pretty standard right now from yeah. what I've seen. So from, mm -hmm. you know, eighth place up to fifth place, any of those teams can get 20 points in a single match. And that 28-point gap, well, it goes right back down to just like an 8-point gap. And 20 points is pretty much, you know, the average of like where the top hitters after each match are kind of landing around. They could even get more than that. So we'll see what happens in this one as the first circle does pop up. It will be on the far western side. We've seen one similar where it ended up on Mount Everest where IHC absolutely dominated. Will we see a similar circle? Well, that's soon to be seen. As for the plane path, it was really good, Hot Jukes. Everybody kind of dropping wherever they want. No real hot drops this time around. And Oof. I think everyone's going to be able to rotate in into whatever prime position they want on the first circle as well. Yeah, I'm always looking towards Yasnaya because we've seen a lot of hot drops from S2G and hi fis and I can tell S2G doesn't want none of that, and nope. that is the right decision. You do not want to deal with a team that is so low on the leaderboards, they're, they're dangerous. They really are. I mean, and if you're S2G, you need every single point that you can get. As a matter of fact, I was doing a little bit of research right now. There's only been four matches in this entire tournament that have had less than 10 eliminations with a chicken dinner. Okay, the lowest so wow. far was in match number three, by Alpha 7 with 7. So the, the least amount of points anyone's gotten in this whole tournament when it comes to a chicken dinner was 17 points. Actually, the last game, the game yeah, we just saw. Six. Yeah, 6. 6 is the lowest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was the fourth one. So that just goes to show you how crazy it's been. And it, it, it with games like that, I tell you, it's a 27-point difference between 1st and 8th place. So even if IHC, right, get that 20-point game, that only leave them seven points away from first place. So every single majority of these teams, right, have a big chance here. The teams below that, like Team Falcons, they're about 37 points away. Those guys need a chicken dinner here now if they want to stand a chance at first place. They're not out of the running yet. They yeah. really are not. Yeah. But if they don't do a chicken dinner, like pretty much here and now, it's going to be too tough to pass up. Yeah, I, I just keep thinking back to what S2G did yesterday, right? It was like back-to-back -back chickens, and then I think on the final match, they finished, what, third? Or some, somewhere like near yeah. that, a first first and then a third? S2G. They were second, second with nine eliminations. Oh, sec first first and second, yeah. Yep. So it, just in three games, all of a sudden, it's <laughs> like they could be your champions once again, and that's three games. We still have 
five games left to go. So that is a, actually a lot of working room for a lot of these teams. So let's see what they can do with it. And I can see a rotation already. Nova getting really close to Falcons right there near the center of the map. You know Nova loves playing those compounds right below Mount Everest. And I see Falcons holding a little bit of a split. I don't know if there's going to be a full-on altercation here because this is the first zone. You don't know where it's going to fully go to yet. So it's not worth fighting near the center where you could get third party or have the circle just go somewhere else completely. I think we're going to see a very slow paced match for this one, especially given the plane path in the zone as these teams loot up a little bit more, you know, be a little bit more greedy because the circle is still very dynamic, Kodrick, because if it goes north, it's a completely different battlefield than if it were to go south. Oh, yes, it will be. That'll get real toxic with that, that beautiful little river, right, going in yeah. between those two islands. It makes things so, so tough. You have to kind of gamble on which side you're going to take, so... A lot of these teams hoping that zone just centers up for sure. And yeah, just to kind of like punch home how crazy that performance was from S2G towards the end. Those last three matches, they totaled up 58 points, zoo. 58 points in just three matches. So anything can really happen here. And, you know, I'll remind everybody, the big, obviously, uh, money gap between first and third place is, is pretty significant. And then the, the difference between fourth and last isn't that much at all you know fourth place fifteen thousand dollars sixteenth is twelve thousand yeah. so you know obviously I, I i can't stress this enough how it really is everybody versus the top three and with the championship team here today right they're gonna get their region another qualifying spot at the pm uh the, at the pubg mobile world cup so mm -hmm. the thing is this zoo knowing that if I was the only American team here, right? Mm -hmm. I Before today, I would be calling up every single major American squad and just gathering all the resources I can, you know? <laughs> all the information I can just to try and like, hey, if I win this, guys, right? We get another qualifying spot for the World Cup. That will be huge. And you know, like the Team Reject, they're the only Japanese team here. Yeah. So they definitely want that extra spot here as well as their entire region does so oh yeah um that would be that would be huge for them and then obviously you know alpha seven in their hometown that is that is the team that needs it the most i mean because their whole storyline of just always coming up short at a global event yeah finally they're at home they have the whole crowd in front of them the pressure is definitely on their shoulders definitely so and alpha seven are they going to be able to maintain composure and rise up to that challenge currently sitting in second place only a few mere points behind rejects it's a good start definitely a good start for alpha 7 you know they got sandhawk out of the way and they closed that gap a little bit so i think their mental's in a good place rejects we were discussing about their mental you know the first team to go out and i think given their past history I think this has got to be one of the more resilient mental teams out there. So they should be fine as well. And S2G, man, third place team. They've been on an absolute burner since yesterday. The very first chicken dinner they got, remember that short interview afterwards? She she asked him, like, what is this change? You know, how are your plans going into the next game after, you know, finally getting your first chicken dinner? And his his reply, I believe it was Kelsey, his reply was just straight up, we're going to be champions. And they yeah. weren't they, they weren't wrong. They won the very next one. And then you said they got second place and the one after that with nine eliminations. So he was not joking about trying to be champions after that first win. And you can see right now in third place, it is very well doable for S2G. Ooh, S2G, like the villains of Brazil right now. Cause oh, yeah, that crowd. too. That's a storyline yeah. there itself too, Dukes. Oh, my gosh, man. I mean, S2G, I remember when the second he said that, the booze from the crowd. I mean, they definitely don't want to see this team do them dirty, especially right in front of their faces because S2G did Alpha 7 dirty when it comes to the global championship. So this next zone... Coming on up, it could have an Everest circle, and Alpha 7 are in a dominant position here. This is what they've really, really been begging for, because we've seen when Alpha 7 gets the zone, they are almost unstoppable, right? Yeah. 
but and the problem is is that they've always been a team that had played edge for so many tournaments and i think that's why they're so successful when it comes to like crazy pushes and things like that yeah or why they have a lot more success than other teams but I, the the skill gap has just increased so much zoo especially in these global tournaments that edge play just isn't nearly as viable as you know playing a central zone but I mean, look at Sandhawk that last match, right? Alpha Seven's on the edge of zone the entire time. They came from the east side, and the zone was hard west, and they still managed to pick up a decent amount of points. So you're absolutely See, right, though. Now that they have the that's zone, that's the problem. They yeah. should be able to do much more. And we've seen what IHC has done up there on Mount Everest, and I'm sure every single team, especially Alpha Seven, has VOD reviewed every single game front and back, and maybe. They probably took a few notes from IHC since now that they're on top of Mount Everest themselves. Oh, man. See, but that's the problem, Zute, right? They got a decent amount of points in Sandhawk. Decent isn't going to cut it to become the PMGO champions of Brazil. I mean, they really doesn't because we see these teams that are getting chicken dinners. Majority of them, right, are pulling out crazy performances. Like, And, and the perfect example of that is in the last game, Zoo, right? We had Vampire win it with six eliminations. They didn't get the most points at all. Yeah. You're absolutely right about that one. It was actually Regnum Karya that got so many Elam points. And you can see right there, they're in sixth place. They shot up quite a bit. They're potentially in the running for it too now as <laughs> zone yep. number two. Starting to shrink up. It did shift, but not a big shift. It just pulled up north a little bit. And, well, like I mentioned at the beginning of this map uh, or this match, this is going to be a slow game. With a zone like this, there's so many strong power positions spread out everywhere that you really kind of just want to wait to see where the circle goes before you kind of fight for any position. All 64 players up and alive right now, just waiting and waiting, biding their time, getting prepped for any potential hardships. And I do believe in this coming circle, Hot Jukes, we're going to see a lot of action pop off. Oh, yes, we are. You can see the, the calm before the storm here. Not a single elimination has happened. And, oh, it's starting to get intense. The zone oh. goes so far south. You know, Alpha 7 are just wincing right now because this is not the zone that they prefer. They were really hoping that Everest would be right in the middle of it. And you can hear the... We've been hearing the crowd go nuts. Eh, but right now, dead silent. As they're going to have to find uh, their way on down the mountain. And they are going to leave it up there. So they're not going to stay there and try to gatekeep teams. Nope. They're heading straight for a position. They oh, have that they headed, sight though? lines. Oh, yeah. And they are. Oh, they got a run over. And I, oh, that's on Regnum Karya. This is yeah. huge. They spotted one of Regnum Karya leaving this compound to go further inwards. And they pounced immediately. Slight man advantage. Fly, car flying straight overhead. Ooh. Overshooting that. He needs to pull back to help his team in this fight. Doesn't even matter. As, there we go. Alpha 7, you hear the cheers. You see the disappointment in Regnum Karya's face. The crowd goes wild. Mafioso also, you know, putting up some uh, style points, flying over the, the compound itself, you know, establishing some dominance in his own way. But right there, that's why, you know, Mount Everest is a good position too. You are able to see so much, and they spotted one player leaving this compound. They're like, instantly gun it down 4v3 at worst and i'm so glad that this is the compound that they decided to take because this is one of the most dominant in this zone this is actually one of my favorite compounds to play in a circle like this because i mean they could see everyone coming from either direction and they just caught regnum karya on the back foot usually you see a couple players up on top of that uh just above that hill of that compound and if they if they had a couple players there, Ragnar Karya would have shot at those vehicles like crazy. So a huge heads up play from Alpha Seven to recognize that hey, the entire team is in this building. This is an easy push, baby. Full send it on down, get it done. And it, it's risky because they could have gotten taken out early. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. 
Yeah, man, they definitely got it. Hold up. I see IHC about to fight with hi fives on top of Mount Everest. Yeah, here we go. We know IHC are the kings of the mountain. And just like that, Demo already opens one up right onto Monkey. hi fives down to three. Pretty much cornered right now. IHC want to claim the mountaintop once again. They get the confirmation. Oh, and a knock by Demo too. It's pretty much all but done for hi fives here. Yeah, there's nothing they're gonna be able to do against a team like IHC. IHC, especially on Everest, it's like they have a buff at this point. And oh just boom, God. just like that. Yeah. Goodbye. Absolutely deleted. IHC is not messing around. Not a good thing for Alpha 7, to be honest, to be uh, have IHC on your back with some high ground. So they're gonna have to be careful for sure, especially depending on where this next circle is gonna go. And it does Ooh. pop on over. It's gonna be a ruins finish. Are you kidding me? That is going to make things spicy. Just look how many teams are not even in this next zone. Yeah, I wouldn't say ruins exactly. It's that open field finish, Jukes. We've seen this oh. time and time and time again. We're going to get some stake action into the late game, but this makes Alpha 7's position that much stronger because right to the east of them, they control all that open field so when they need to go there on the next circle shift they mm. are the prime you know contenders for that spot alpha seven though they just gotta worry about being crashed upon because that's a potential two now but d plus yeah d plus in a great <laughs> position too on the north and look at sug on the east side they control those like bunkers that give them a lot of information into the zone as well so this is going to be a huge match for a lot of these teams and where is hold on where's rejects though? Rejects are in the zone on the south at a strong compound, too. All three teams oh, the... in the top three. Oh. East, west, south. Different directions, different power positions for all three in the top three. This is going to be a great match, Jukes. I was about to say, when it came to Alpha 7, is it a better position or could it be the worst position for them? And we're going to have to find out here because that position is, one of the most do is the most dominant in this circle. And there are monster squads completely surrounding it. So it's only the most dominant if you're able to hold it, right? Yeah. And they're going to have to hold it hard because every single one of these teams is going to be pushing up onto them for sure. So uh, there's a minute 45 on the clock. You can already start seeing some smokes come out. IHC is creeping down. Team Falcons, they're all licking their lips, trying to take away this spot from Alpha 7. But if Alpha 7 is able to successfully hold it, they are going to have a ridiculous amount of eliminations here. This is going to be the hold of their lives right now with IHC and Falcons creeping closer. On the eastern side, Death Wolves have close zone. They're just going to scooch in. Might have to contend with Smoke gaming a little bit here as Smoke is not in the zone. Miyaki actually getting the great nade, a great opening. And that player is going to be caught in the blue zone as it closes. I don't know if they'll be able to get that revive. And Smoke Gaming going aggressive now with those buggies, getting some information, driving up, getting some damage in. And oh, there it goes, I'm scared to S2G from the backside. Death Wolves not looking too great. S2G just trying to pick up some scavenger points, get whatever they can as we're seeing Death Wolves and Smoke go at it. But the only one I want to see is that Rejects. Reject going against Vampire. That is a huge, huge battle. Which one of those teams going to win it? Reject it looks currently like sitting done. in pretty place. I am just Oh, is it done already? I mean, there's one of Vampire left. Rejects have flawed that one handedly. Yeah, only one Vampire player left. I think Rejects will hold that south power position. And hold on, Jukes, look at the mini-map here. Look at the mini-map on the west side. Alpha 7's being swarmed by three different teams. We got Nova, IH Lee, and Falcons all here. Oh my goodness, this is exactly what I was I was, I was going to say was going to happen. All the top squads trying to take this. You got Nova going down their order. Alpha 7 actually doing a great they job still have of four taking up. out IHC, but now they got to get inside of the building. Alpha 7 still have four up. One player goes down. It's just Rogue here contending with Alpha 7, but he's got a player behind him inside the building too. Alpha 7, if he can finish this one off, that's a full reset. Falcons is the only other team close by now. Falcons were fighting with Nova. Falcons actually have four up too. Alpha 7, their work is not done yet. They have another 4v4 oh. to try and finish, but that grenade, the carb blow up maybe. Carrillo goes down, Alpha 7. On the back foot, Revo also goes down. Now it's only two players up from Alpha 7. 
It's it's a 2v4, but a beautiful shot for Magrellan. Takes down action. That's going to buy them a little bit of time to get this res off. Could be a 3v3 situation. Actually, Carrillo oh, gets huge. picked up. Are you kidding me? Oh, Tom my God. Down from the side. And what a fortunate situation for Alpha 7 as it's Zebra Masters. They're Brazilian brothers all the way from the bottom, helping Alpha 7 try to punch their ticket and win this tournament. What a wild hole. That was three teams descending up down upon them. That was Nova, that was Falcons, that was IHC of all teams. And they hold, Jukes. They hold with their head held high with all four players up. What? a performance right there it's exactly as we predicted it that if alpha 7 was able to hold it they were going to get a ton of eliminations and they already have nine with nine teams remaining if you were to go out right now it is zero placement points as we watch royals of war battle it out with next ria next ria desperately needs these points and cold goat is going to finish off another one of them leaving only two of their players up Oh, but hey, guess what? Team Reject is still alive with four eliminations. So, Alpha 7, yeah, even though you started off so strong, your work's not done yet. Not yet. And if Reject saw what happened in the elimination feed, they know Alpha 7 just got a bunch of points. Does that spur Rejects to get a bit more aggressive? Rejects, you know, known for their aggression, but that's when they don't have the zone. They have the circle. Are they going to seize this opportunity? You can see them getting closer. But they're a little bit more methodical right now, a little bit more hesitant. And even though they're keeping all four players up, this is a big missed opportunity. And I only say that because Alpha 7 has nabbed so many points. D plus and Alpha 7 now fighting in the north. One of Alpha 7 goes down. Two of Alpha 7 gets knocked to the side of D plus. It looks like D plus are handling Alpha 7, the titans of the north side. Alpha 7 no getting dwindled way. down and Alpha 7 is out. Nine elimination points and I think only getting one placement point out of all the teams it's d plus kia that take out the titans of alpha 7 you can see it on their faces frustrated i mean happy that they got some elimination points but again zute their placements they're not able to get it now it's up to team reject they saw alpha 7 go out in their feed and now it's time to soak up some points where's the zone gonna go though will they go hard shift north that'll be tough for team reject and let's see as there's two seconds left on the clock and it does center up so it doesn't go too far north for them but it's all open field they really need to take this battle with royce of war as soon as they possibly can yeah this is a big chance for rejects to catch up now and as crazy as alpha 7's hold was look at the difference nine and five rejects with five elims is pretty close behind to match alpha 7's nine and alpha 7 is out no more chance for laddering up on placement points rejects however still have four up let's see what happens on the northeastern side though as boom we can't forget about this team taking right. it on with s2g boom the fourth place team looking to cement their way into the top three as well and with s2g getting picked apart by boom they could very well do it this very match looking to literally run over the competition. And now it's just Hamzy, the last player up for S2G, takes the shot, gonna go ahead and get a miss on that one. Not a great situation for S2G, but Boom is definitely Ooh. not out of the running yet as that is gonna be it. Zebra Master just picking up these points. And we noticed the top, the bottom three teams, right? Just stealing eliminations, crushing dreams. And it makes it that much more difficult for the teams on top. But Team Reject are still alive with four. Boom. I mean, boom, if they win this game, I mean, we could see a massive, massive jump for them. They know what's at stake. And all they got to do is take out a few squads in order to do it. Boom has four. Rejects has four. D plus and Royals of War have four. Zebra Masters, so only three-man team, but they've kind of cemented themselves on the west side in a good position, picking up points. Huge knock for Rejects, but the trade is there. How many of Royals of War went down, though? Two of Royals of War, so that's great news for the Reject side. Can they get that revive, though? Regioso a bit far out. You can see Sara running for it. Regi can kind of crawl into this zone. It is all open fields, but with the zone being this small, that grass can still provide you good visual cover. Sara gets a forward positioning. Great heads-up play by Sara. A bit risky, but he establishes himself in a great spot nice and shot. gets a big knock so huge 
is, is going to come down to some snake play here. He's going to go ahead and try to maybe even pre-fire this, but he wants just a couple more, a little bit more sight lines. He wants to also protect Ra Ragey. Ragey, a monster on the battlefield. Seven was talking about him earlier. He did a little bit of research and was talking about how this man is pretty much the MVP of Japan, and he just might make it. And it looks like he is going to crawl to safety as Rivas now down to one HP, take it out by D plus Kia. Huge, huge crawl right there for the side of Regioso. Rejects will go back up to four. Boom, still with four. D plus with four. Zebra Master got whittled down to two now. This game, I mean, this is a huge game for Rejects, but Jukes, keep in mind, if Boom takes this one mm -hmm. with a huge chicken dinner and they're in a good position to do so, they could maybe ladder up past the Rejects potentially. We'll see though, because Rejects are still putting up big points, taking out Zebra Master. That's more Elim points for the side of Japan. This is just ridiculous. This is what we were talking about as we're going to watch D plus Kia trying to take out Team Rejects. You know, this is exactly what Boom wants to see here. And uh, Nobu not able to get the knock. This is what we were talking about, Zoo. Good points is not enough, right? You got to have an insane performance. Even when we saw Alpha 7 go out with nine eliminations, it ain't going to be enough, especially when you have teams like Boom, Team Reject, still alive here and can pull out a chicken dinner with double digits. Yeah. Rejects right now have to try and make it into zone. One of them, uh, one of the boom players are knocked though. They're the ones gatekeeping this. But Pawnbit with some nice shots downrange gets a knock. How much time is left? Nine seconds before the blue zone closes. Rejects, they're gonna have to make a mad dash for it. We did see Regioso drive back with the vehicle, not leaving his teammate behind. So they could maybe drive in together. Sara taking that vehicle, <laughs> driving in a bit. D plus have made their move. D plus are well in the zone, but that no draws way. the attention of Boom. Boom looking to pick up every elimination. They don't care if it's the rejects team or D plus. They want it all. And Ragey also actually drive in and gets a run over. I was about to say, Boom should care. Shouldn't they want to take out Reject first and then D plus Kia second? But instead, they focus all their efforts on D plus Kia. That's going to give Team Reject even more placement points. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So Boom Esports, yeah, they get up some more eliminations, but they're, they're giving some more points on the team that is currently in first place. This is crazy. Rejects, Jukes have made it into zone here with four. I can't believe it. I the can't two, believe it. The I mean, two I'm on so the shocked. south side aren't fully yet in zone, Jukes. They have to crawl over into the open. But like I said, this zone is so small now. The visual cover of the grass could be enough. Duelo, though, that's not enough for him. He gets knocked. That's a revive that probably will not come through. Util-wise, rejects have to be running low on smokes. And if Frenzy fires that shot right there, Jukes, that's another player knocked. He gets the first aid off. Boom, with the man advantage. However, there's still one more circle shift to go, Jukes. Like I said, I was so surprised that Boom didn't focus all their efforts on Team Reject. I mean, they were outside of the zone. It could have been an easy easy gatekeep if they would have just let D Pesquia live. At the same time, though, maybe Boom was just thinking, you know what? We want to get every single point. We don't want to give up any to Team Reject as they're going to go ahead and knock out Sara here. And yeah, he's not going to get res by any chance at all. So Boom Esports... They still have the majority of cover. Team Reject, though, with 11 eliminations. Are you kidding me? That is a quite a few more than Boom has. As Boom should spot Divine here if he's really careful. Is he going to see that pixel move? The grass? Maybe not. Driving up real close. That's a trade. There's only one up now for the side of Rejects. And he gets Got caught. Him. He gets finished. That is Boom with the big chicken dinner did they get double digit elim so no just one shy of the magic number 10 eliminations they only got up to nine that means i do think rejects might have gotten more points to them because rejects is racking up the elim points and as crazy as a hold alpha 7 did jukes earlier against four different teams crashing on them at the same time i think that wasn't enough. <laughs> Not with Rejects I mean, performing the way they just did. I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. This is the PMGO right here. This, this is what Brazil's all about. I mean, the fact that you just said, right? Oh, they only got nine eliminations at a chicken dinner zoo. Can you believe that? 
Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's where we're at. Where that's the time that we're in right now. We're like, oh, nine. Oh, it's, that's oh, tough, right? Not that's enough. crazy. That's a crazy <laughs> performance, right? You won the game and took out more than two squads. is insane. But you know what? You're right. It's just not enough in a tournament like this because we got teams just pulling out some of the most insane performances right when they need it. I mean, this gas pedal is just all the way down seven. Hajux, Sute, if there was ever a time that I didn't want to be casting a game, it would be this one right here. Especially when the madness of Alpha 7, Team Falcons, IHC, you're getting third party from D plus Kia, from Smoke Gaming. There was so much stuff going on. My mouth was on the floor that somehow Alpha 7 got a chance to survive all of that. And just when you thought the things were looking good for them, Guess what? The main team that they are hunting down, Reject, is like, we're still here. We're going for that bounce back. We know <sighs> what the, we didn't do so well in that first Sandhawk. But just like I was saying, last time we didn't see them perform so well in Sandhawk, they had a great, and I mean a great comeback game. And this was even better. Not only did they get the eliminations, they got the placement points. And for anybody that's wanting to count off Reject, that was saying, okay, maybe they're going to start falling up. No, no, no, no, no. That's not going to be happening here today. But on top of that, you have Boom, Boom. getting into yeah. the mix as well with those points. I I'm just hyped, baby. I I'm ready. <laughs> I keep crazy. it going. Can, can, we can we maybe add one more day to this PMG? <laughs> oh. I don't know if my heart could take it. I don't know if my heart could take it at this point because this is just insane. Look at the match ranking here. Boom, 19. Oh, points. they did get more. And 18 points from Reject. I mean, it's crazy. We got teams winning. And if you don't get double digit eliminations and win, you're not going to be the first place team when it comes to points here, Zoo. Yeah, it's, that's absolutely wild. I mean, geez. Rejects, boom, popping off. Like, first it was Alpha 7 popping off, and I think everyone in the crowd, including me, was thinking, this is it. This is Alpha 7's pop-off. They got it in the bag. There is no way they could be stopped now. And then they're not only stopped by the Rejects team, it's Boom too. Boom was in contention for first place, and with Boom getting a big game, now Alpha 7 has to worry about Rejects plus Boom. And this is why I was actually a, a little bit impressed there. You know what? Let's look at the MVP real quick. Pombit from Boom. Six eliminations, 723 damage. But with S2G not being able to get that many points right next, Ria as well, a team that we thought was going to start hopefully challenging too, they didn't get that many points. If Alpha 7 wouldn't have clutch up during those fights, if they wouldn't been able to get even those elimination points in this last match, oh man once we go to the overall i feel like it would be a completely different story but at least with them being able to put up those points they save themselves a little bit they don't allow reject to create such a big gap and i can't wait to see boom with that performance that they just put up how much they're also going to be jumping up in the leaderboard and i wouldn't be surprised if they're, if they're very very close to alpha 7. oh man i mean i'll tell you what alpha 7 cannot afford to go out to a team like d plus kia again i mean that was so tough i mean once they had that position i was like if they're able to hold it they're gonna win this game with a bunch of eliminations that's what i predicted and yeah they they held it they got the eliminations but they couldn't get the finish seven and that seems to be their struggle right as they get those elims but where are the placement points they need them so bad if they want to bring this uh, if they want to get this championship at home yeah, and once again, they find themselves in a tough rotation going into those later circles. They they weren't blessed by the zone. And the thing is that D-Plus knew that that fight was going on because they were one of those teams mm -hmm. that ended up third party when they were fighting against Team Falcons, whenever they were, all that craziness was going on with IHC as well. So they were just, D-Plus was just winning for it. Alpha 7 was going to have to push out too. And with that big fight that was going on, we saw how many players from Alpha 7 ended up getting knocked. We saw the utility that was being used as well. And I think Alpha seven once again not favored by the circle hinders them there in a big way if that if for some reason though as you were saying if the circle does end up favoring them and they to keep they get to keep that position oh boy it would have been a completely sure. different story but I i'm just happy that they were able to at least get some points to not allow the gap to be so big i think it was three points the gap between the two first place and second place team going oh. into this last into this last match so there's going to be the gaps, obviously going to be a little bit bigger, but not as crazy as Sute as it could have been. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it could have been way worse for Alpha 7. If they had a bad game, if they couldn't hold off the multitude of teams that pushed into them, they'd be dropping down so far behind the teams of Rejects and boom. But just like Sandhawk, they managed to put up decent points. And I say decent with the emphasis because Jukes told me <laughs> earlier, decent is not good enough yep. to be a championship team right now. And you're absolutely right because you got teams putting up 19, 18 points per match. And those are the teams that are looking to take that first place, Hot Jukes. I mean, it's, they've been putting up more than that. That's the crazy thing is that, I mean, yeah, well, you said it. You know, we saw a nine elimination chicken dinner from Team Reject, and they were like, ah, uh, you know, it could have been more. I mean, and that's the crazy yeah. part is because Boom passed them up in total points. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. We're in the championship rounds here. There's four, four more matches to get this done. You cannot afford a single slip up at this point, especially if you're yeah. in that top five. You, you know, you, you know what's can. crazy? Real quick, four seems like a lot of games, and at the same time, not enough games <laughs> right know. now. <laughs> like so much could happen in one game that four seems like way too much. But at the same time, with how close everything is, four is also not enough for me. Oh, seven. Like this is this is crazy right now. It is crazy, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping that when we get to the final match, and this is just me wanting that cherry on top to this, how amazing oh. this event, event has been so far, mm -hmm. that hopefully the top five teams can still challenge for that first place. But it's, it's going to come down to how some of the other teams that are that are within that top five, especially towards the bottom. I mean, we saw S2G not being able to get that many points next year as well as I was commenting earlier. Mm -hmm. I wonder if at some point, and I know Jukes is going to be just loving this conversation <laughs> that we're about to get started. Do they not only, no, I'm not talking about their hot dropping, okay, Jukes, but when do you want to maybe cut off those rotations? Because you know what Rejects is going to be doing. A lot of these teams have continued to do the same pattern that we've seen from the get-go. And that's why even in the first match, we saw teams being able to adjust to that when we ended up seeing Vampire Esports, third party in a fight that Reject was part of for those top teams Next Ruya, S2G, not a good performance here in this match. But now, do you maybe try to make that push as we're going to be looking at here on the overall standings? And here we'll oh, get a better picture. Whoa. Look at that for S2G, 20 point difference. And we have Alpha 7 and Boom Esports tied at 119. Oh my goodness, this is craziness. I mean, I'm not going to lie. If I was in this game, right? And if I'm talking about, like, let's just say we do get that dream scenario where top five are all like pretty much just the last game going to find out where the championship team is going to be. If I'm Death Wolves, Zebra Master, Smoke, I'm yep. Brazilian teams, we know that the championship squad is going to go ahead and get us an extra qualifying spot at the World Cup. I am uh -oh. making sure I'm doing everything I can to hunt down all these other top squads, you know? Because if Alpha 7 wins this, that's going to be a huge thing for their region. So, I mean, it's just the name of the game at this point. Anything can happen. Mm. What, what were you saying there? Oh, oh, too, too, too. I'm intrigued. Yeah, I mean, Jukes, I, mean, I don't know. Jukes couldn't have said it any better, right? With the champion team getting an extra qualifying spot, the Brazilian brothers in here have some incentive, you know, to yep. maybe help out Alpha 7. And I mean, that's not even just the case itself. Like you want to knock out the number one team to move yourself up the leaderboards too, because there's still a chance that, you know, you could get into that top three to get the money. So Whoa. there, there's that's just awesome. <laughs> a lot going on right now. Look at this beautiful shot. All the player cams, everyone sweating right now. Jukes, another conversation too with that you were right. talking about maybe those bottom teams is they're gonna stop carrying less and less. We already saw that that shift in their minds from yesterday to I mean high fives is one team that definitely comes to mind. It didn't end up working out in their favor when they ended up going up against IHC in this last match. But if they do get a little bit confident, some of those teams that are challenging for that first place that are looking to get those points here in the in the next two matches of Aaron Gill, they need to be ready for anything that could come their way because they could end up being surprised with those rotations. Oh, they're going to get surprised indeed as we get into the next 
match of Aragale. What's gonna happen after this one? There's only three more matches to go. Boys, take it away. I'm excited, Sute. I'm excited because of what we were just able to see in that first match of Erangel. And I can't wait to see how this one's going to go. What circle we're going to get. What crazy fights third parties we're going to end up getting. Can Alpha 7 start getting those placement points and not just those eliminations? Is Rejay going to continue playing the same way? There's just so many questions that I can't wait to get an answer to here in this next match. Yeah, is Boom gonna you know come in with another big boom because boom is up there too now but of course yep. rejects that's what everyone's eyes are on they just closed or they didn't close they gapped the lead by just that much more now they're sitting in first place i think it was 20 points difference and 20 um, points is a lot with uh with s2g with s2g is a 20 point difference up uh -huh. to the second place is 11 oh, point difference 11. so not that much yeah okay yeah only 11. i was i was before you stopped me i was gonna even say 20 points might seem like a not a lot but it's not that much the fact that you corrected me that it's not 20 points between first and second is only 11. man mm. i i mean it's it's a great spot to be in don't get me wrong but at the same time it's not that great of a spot with while well, we see this very hard western circle once again almost the same i think it is pretty much the same exact first zone as the previous match but the plane path being a bit different this time around will change things up quite a bit yeah and for me i mean we're talking about 11 points we're talking about 20 points i i, I want to possibly see how some of the other team like being next Rio right now in 97 points they're currently 33 points away there from the first spot. If for some reason, and we've seen this already happening in the PMGO, if first place, second place, or some of the top teams get eliminated there, we have seen the other teams being able to step up and close that gap. And that's kind of why I'm hopeful here that if for some reason that does end up happening, going to the last match, we could have not just two teams contending, not just three teams, we could possibly end up having five teams contending as s2g a team that definitely needs those points is gonna start getting those points on regnum karia that's gonna be one elimination going their way and that is for s2g a way that they want to be able to bounce back especially after that last match yeah you can see teams fighting for like scrap points right now scrappy methods of fighting just driving around dbs in hand chasing players down off the rip you want every single point you could possibly get, especially if you're an S2G. And, well, they'll put up two, and they're going to need to look for a lot, lot more. First circle, like I mentioned earlier, is all the way towards the west, so teams are going to be, you know, quickening their pace a little bit this time around. It won't be like the last Arangal game where things are really slow up until even the third circle, right? We had 64 players alive up until circle number two shifting into three. This time, well, two are already gone, and S2G are picking up those two. That's exactly what S2G wants to be able to do. We're going to be going over to Team Falcons. They're not going to be challenging. It is going to be, uh, I'm sure they're going to end up rotating here fairly soon as the circle's going to be nowhere near them. Teams that are already within that circle are going to be next, Ruya. I was talking about them. They're in fifth place, 33 points away from first place. They're going to be looking to set themselves up in a great, great spot. And a team that is in second place off of seven, trying to make a quick rotation because due to the plane pad, they didn't get a chance to land in where their usual spot in George Pool. Yeah. They had to land Lipopka. The good thing that we've been seeing now out of Alpha 7 this year and the previous year as well is they're starting to rotate a little bit faster. They're not getting into these ego fights. And I feel like this is the buildup that everybody's been waiting for to see if Alpha 7 has finally learned their lessons from all the mistakes that they have made in the past. Quick rotations when possible. And on top of that, not getting into any ego fights because they could end up possibly fighting S2G. We saw S2G there driving around Yasnaya. If they do, for some reason, end up going a little bit closer to her Severni, it could be an interesting fight there. D plus Kia, everything right now is just slowing it down. A lot of teams trying to set themselves up. And I wonder if any of the top teams could possibly, with the way that the circle is currently located, they could try to go for that Everest. Because we saw Alpha 7 go earlier for that Everest. Unluckily for them, they ended, the circle ended up not going in their favor. But we've seen what can happen whenever a team does control Everest. 
and it's a fragging power team and on top of that they get blessed by the circle yeah we'll see where the circles go maybe we'll get the same exact zones who knows as ihc making their rotation right now only one vehicle you never want to be all in one vehicle and they're driving right next to next uh next ruya at that radio tower we may see IHC just bow out right now. I'm looking at the minimap. They're getting extremely close. That's one player knock from IHC. That's Long Skirt picking up a knock with the UMP. Royals of War rotating in here. And yeah, yeah, he did get knocked out of the car. Rogue will go down. That is a tough way to go out. Getting shot out of a vehicle, especially when all four are cramped in the same vehicle. That is unfortunate for the side of IHC. We'll be continuing this one on only as a three-man, and Nova has that information too. They know where that team most likely went to, which is the compound right next to them. So Nova can take advantage of that if it comes to be on the next circle shift. And for IHC, they're in sixth place. Not what they wanted to do in regards to losing a player. I'm sure they're looking to close that gap. Current, the current champions of PMGC... The champions, they're reigning defending champions. I'm sure six plays, they're not going to be happy about it. And even though they lost one player because they're not going to be able to revive him, we know what they can do with three players. And with that said, Sute, with them sitting in sixth place with 89 points, with what we've seen, that ha oh, maybe they could end up getting this pickup if for some reason they go for it and if they do have some smokes. But with 89 points, with how far they are away from first place, but with what we have seen, especially yesterday from S2G, do you think this team could find a way at this point to challenge for that first place, or is it too late for IRC? If they pop off right here and now, it's not too late. But if they don't, okay. I think it's going to be too late because we see how hungry the top teams are. If they don't pop yep. up here, pop off here, one of the teams ahead of them is definitely most likely going to pop off and that means you're just losing that you know that point gap is just getting bigger and bigger and at this point if they don't do it now it's going to be too big in my opinion but you can see man ihc really want it rogue never gave up he crawled all the way as close as he can to his teammates from the open roadside into the little dip so, I mean, if there's a will, there's a way. And honestly, if IHC had more vehicles, we might have seen them, you know, pull over right next to them, drop the vehicle down, drop some smokes, use it as cover and get the revive. Problem is, IHC only have one vehicle, so they can't risk that one vehicle getting disabled. So, fortunately for Rogue, he will be watching from the sidelines now as more teams are rotating in. So, Alpha 7 did end up going to North George Pole, and they're just waiting to see where this circle goes before they make the next move. Rejects far down in the south south of Gatka, pretty much uh, north of the Quarry area. That's where your number one team is going to be. Boom, meanwhile, are on top of Mount Everest. So Boom will be the kings of the mountaintop as we get the next circle shift in Alpha yeah. 7. That's a huge opportunity for them to seize if they move quick. And do they know, though, that the bridge across from them is open? They should know. No one should be camping there in that previous circle. They're going to make a gun for, gun for it, and they're going to set up in South George Pole. But this zone, 7, this zone could get crazy in so many different ways. It is, and one thing that we're noticing, the other two players, they're going to have a bit of a 2-2 split there with Alpha 7. They need to make sure they close that in a little bit more because everybody else, we saw a team from the north as well, High Fice is going to close it in. And then on top of that, we saw S2G getting very, very close to the to the two players from Alpha 7 that ended up going there to the South George. And by the way, going back to the question that I that I post on you is in regards to IC, if they want to get a chance, I feel like I'm 100% with you in what you said they need to have a pop-up performance here in this match because if not it will be too late and it's not just going to be a, a pop-up performance here only on this match they need to follow it up with yeah. the pop-up performance here on the second match as well and luckily for alpha 7 they are going to be getting able to get all their four players here on this apartment on the south of george pool they were able to now control this and if high fives depending on where the circle ends up going they could end up getting a great position here to get some 
eliminations boom is gonna be pushing out of the top of Everest and here we go we were talking about them I see he needs to have pop-up performances and now they're starting 5d plus it's gonna be an easy elimination there for them as all styles also knocked and they're gonna be able to finish them off and d plus key I mean they got nothing to lose at this point they're a team that's in 10th place with 60 points it's not even close for them I think they might want to challenge that. I think they might want to take that fight there to IHC. We'll have to win and see what's going to happen there as Alpha 7 is aware that a team is going to be towards their ease. They're not going to know, though, that that team is S2G. Yeah, S2G very close by. D+, plus. I don't know what was up with that little 2-2 two, two, two split push. Uh, definitely didn't work out as IHC pick up a couple points. The big thing I saw, though, was uh, IHC was trying to save those vehicles that got pulled up instantly disabled by another team across the way so i think ihc is still working with just the one vehicle alpha 7 in a good spot from this position they're also able to scout out i think the little compound right below uh the hospital building towards south of them that's pretty much more central and that could be the next power position on the next circle shift so if it does go down more south I wonder if we'll see a very fast rotation out of Alpha 7 because they can see that that compound is still unoccupied. Well, they could end up seeing that. We can see Reject there trying to get some information. There's Scout Divine driving around trying to spot any of the squads up there. He needs to be careful though because not only do they have Death Wolves close by, they also have Team Falcon setting themselves up. These squads are going to be outside the circle as we see the new circle being able to pop oh, up. Wow. And this is great for S2G. This is great for Alpha 7. Boom as well in there. And Vampire Esports, I was talking about IHC maybe being able to challenge for that first place if they have a pop-up performance. Vampire Esports is only three oh. points behind IHC. So if for some reason they wanted to challenge that, they could be able to, but they need to have pop-up performances back to back to back. Alpha 7 does end up making a push, and they're going to be fighting the team that's currently tied with them in regards to points. Boom Esports is going to end up losing one player, and Alpha 7 having a 3-1 split here. Yeah, I think it was, it was huge for Mafioso to hang back. That provided the support lines to stop one of the Boom players from pushing, but he's now caught by himself, so Mafioso has to uh, just had to self-sacrifice there, meaning out of the seven loses one and Boom loses one. Now they're both neighbors. In a situation like this, seven, <laughs> with how crazy the minimap is right now, with the multitude of teams all around you, I think you just be neighbors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you're right next to each other. Yeah, you're both neck and neck in points. But, I mean, there's like 80 other players right around you. Let's just chill. Let, let's yep. just hope we get the zones because they're pretty close to center zone. They may just want to, you know, chill out here like they are now and just wait. D-plus somehow managed to become neighbors, rotating far from the outside. They managed to find their little position right there. And, yeah, we're getting we're getting an urban finish here, Seven. And it's not your typical urban finish. This is going to make for some really interesting gameplay. Definitely not your typical finish. And I think Alpha 7 and Boom Esports might have heard what you said because they have slowed it down. They stopped throwing that utility. They want to save it towards the end. Alpha 7 knows that they're going to have now two different teams coming out from behind them. And on top of that, whenever they want to make a push, if for some reason the circle does not end up going their way, they're going to have to worry about so many teams. So they want to save as much utility as possible yep. with all the smokes we saw them being able to use earlier. And that is something, right, that we have seen Alpha 7 used too much off earlier in the first two matches they were having they were being forced to use all that utility and now in a position where if you can actually save it up for a little bit longer for a little bit later into the game depending on where the circle ends up going they want to have that available to them but they're going to keep on moving around they're going to keep on scouting and see if they can find any opening because this team loves to get their eliminations and that's it for whatever question that i had in regards to ic possibly challenging i was kind of giving them a, a, a bit of roses since they are the current champions of pmgc but with them being eliminated right there, only getting one point, there's no way that I can see them being able to get even close to that first place. Yeah, it's pretty much done now for them. New Circle did pop. I think it just kind of centered more up on the western side. So yep. now Alpha 7 on the edge of the circle. Same with Boom. Vampire getting nicer and nicer zones. But even bigger, Rejects. Get the yes. best zone shift of all. And they're already in first place. The circle gods definitely blessing them on this one. 
Reject right now looking great as Alpha 7 is trying to get as many points as possible. Rebel does end up getting caught though. I think that neighbor, the, the friendly neighborhoods might be coming to an end here as Boom is starting to be a little bit more active as well. Alpha 7 is going to have that player not, but they're going to be able to revive him. And I saw Vampire Esports in a great position. Oh, let me see if this grenade is going to end up hitting here for Boom Esports. Luckily for them, the doors are closed. It's not going to hit anybody. Vampire Esports in a great position. And then I decided to look a little bit further down and I saw Reject. And Reject, if I'm Reject, I'm just chilling right now. I'm just letting everything happen and see who ends up fighting, waiting till the end and end up surprising some of these teams. Because if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Reject still has all their four players alive. 11 point lead. Everything is going their way. And we have seen Reject being able to be that kind of team. We have seen Reject being able to be that patient team and strike when it's needed and right now they just need to continue to be that patient team and defend if any of those teams do end up rushing them because death Wolves could more than likely end up pushing onto them as next ruya is gonna end up getting knocked here by nova esports yeah rejects right now just fat chilling as all the fighting is happening everywhere else nova picking up a couple points right there on to next ruya back to the friendly neighbors of boom and alpha seven they're going to be neighbors for this last circle. I don't think the next one's going to go on to them. And look at the player camp. Yeah. I can't really catch which player. That might have been the next Ruya player. Next Ruya. Yeah, next Ruya. Just, man, fifth place. That was still so doable for them. So yeah. doable. They really needed a good one in this match. And, yeah, going out with only three Elims definitely goes to show, you know, why he was so disappointed. S2G still in the mix of things. Look at that interesting split right now. S2G has a 2-2. Two players kind of at that hospital compound. Not the actual hospital building, but the one north of that. The other two across the ways, more towards uh, the insides of South George Pool. Circle is closing ever so slowly. And rejects. This is great for them because if yep. they weren't number one, if they weren't in the lead by 11 points that position might not be the best because they're not able to you know get points they're not able to you know really peek out and fight as much but sitting in first place i think they're a-okay yeah, at this point you just gotta chill and then alpha 7 getting a little bit antsy boom getting a little bit antsy too starting to use more of that utility as the circle is starting to close in and with S2G, great push out of them, honestly. Look where they are at now. They were able to leapfrog Alpha 7 as they were, in a way, towards the same side. They crossed that road early on. Now they're going to be able to possibly end up finding players from uh, D+, plus, Zebra Masters, and hopefully Regnum Karia too, because S2G needs those points as well. And they're currently putting themselves in a great position here as the new circle is going to be closing oh. in. And oh my goodness! If you could ask what? for anything from Reject, Reject gets absolutely blessed by the zone. And the worst thing that could happen for teams like S2G, mm. Alpha 7, and Boom, guess what? Not only is Reject going to be blessed by the zone, also Vampire Esports is going to be there as well. And Alpha 7 realizes that Alpha 7 knows that they have to make a push on this. Corrigio is going to be pushing up. He's going to be able to get that knock. He's going to confirm that it's only one player left here from Boom Esports. And Alpha 7 is looking to hunt them down, and they do. The two teams that were tied at 119 points after this match, they're not going to be tied any longer. And now the focus shifts over from all these teams that were here. D plus Kia are going to be switching their focus over to Alpha 7. And how is Alpha 7 going to be able to survive this? What is S2G going to be able to do? Meanwhile, you have none other than Rejects just chilling in a house. Seeing the madness happen on the elimination feed. As they're drinking some sake. They're just chilling, laying back and enjoying the action, Sute. Oh, yeah, they definitely are. And Alpha 7, well, Ooh. they're going to do it the hard way. They get an opening onto Vampire. That's a big journey to make, though, from where they were earlier. I really want to see that match or that fight ensue. Can Alpha 7 actually make it across? Nova finally showing signs of life, but it's too late. It, this is a three-day tournament, Nova. It's not a five-day, not a four-day. Might be a little bit too late to pop off the way they are. They are up to eight elims, though. So, hey, more power to them. Alpha 7, one of the players knocked. They're taking a fight with D+. Plus now, looking at the minimap, they are trying to navigate up north into Vampire. But D+, Plus kind of got in the way. And High Fives also camped out on the north side, on the outside, on the beach of the Vampire compounds. 
and s2g trying to get some points as well d plus very close racy is gonna be knocked there for s2g here comes the shot good stuff from ceo later from s2g getting extra points there via elimination for his team as there is only gonna be two players alive from s2g and they're gonna be making a push over hoping that nobody's able to shoot them but not only are they gonna have to hold up the shots there from zebra masters alpha 7 ends up getting eliminated with five eliminations they're not gonna end up getting any placement points as well and meanwhile reject is looking happier and happier as they're not having to fight anybody and it comes down to s2g s2g out too this is the perfect time here for reject to just build on that gap yeah rejects now might want to start peeking out a little bit as the battlefield has definitely thin for them to start third party. Death Wolves, Falcons, Falcons taking out the Nova team almost. Now getting third party by the Death Wolves. And here comes a reject player. Look at that purple icon on the south side. It's not just one, it's two purple icons. They're looking to third party this. Top, can he get that revive in time? I don't think so. Nova goes out. Icy is knocked. And there we go. There is that third party by the reject team. Rejects only picking up one point from that though as the fight finished up really quickly actually two points two points well yep. i mean when you're in first place that's good enough <laughs> they get another knock and they have four up they could get that chicken dinner too looking to third party the last and final fight between high fives and vampires rejects is not going to be sad about those two points because they are currently the only team as well that is within that circle they're going to be looking out to see if they're going to push up as you were mentioning trying to third party this fight they do not want to allow vampire esports to end up after this fight with four players because we know what vampire esports has to do if they want to even try to challenge them you can see vampire esports just running over the players from high fives and high fives not able to hold up vampire esports and i'm actually surprised I'm very, very surprised that we, at least from my perspective, we didn't get a chance to see any reject players trying to shoot on this action, trying to shoot maybe tires of buggies. They could be a little bit far away. And for Vampire Esports, this is going to be a tough push into the circle. But if they're able to do it, it's going to be great for them. They just need to be careful as well with the reject player that's up in the mountain getting that off angle. Yeah, I mean, Rejects had no reason to push that. They didn't have the sight lines, but they see the zone. It's pretty much wide open. And oh, uh oh, there's actually a little hillside for the Vampires team to work with. I thought it was all flat. Like, this is very nope. unfamiliar, unorthodox uh, zone ending here. So that little divot, that little hillside could be the saving grace for the side of Vampires. Because if, on the next zone shift, if it goes to Vampires, well, Rejects got like almost nothing to work with yeah they're gonna have absolutely nothing and this is why i was hoping even though it was out in the open there was some trees available there was some cover i was hoping at least one player from rejects would end up pushing up and yeah. just force it making it a little bit harder there for vampire sports because this is worst case scenario they are both now within the circle we don't know who the next circle is gonna end up favoring them and they're both a four apiece and look how many points vampire esports now has they have nine eliminations and on top of that you're gonna you best believe sute that the crowd right now in brazil have the biggest <laughs> they're just hoping they're just hoping that vampire esports is gonna be able to clutch this up and they're yeah. gonna become vampire esports fans for a lifetime well we'll see very soon where that circle goes Rejects could have pushed up earlier, but I think it would have been risky, right? That's a very yeah. long supporting sight line. So it's I not think maybe one player. Yeah, but if you send that one player and he gets naded, right? Then yep. you're kind of forced to go for the revive or you just let that one player go. So very risky. Like, this circle is just so unorthodox too, which yeah. is why I think they didn't send that one player. And circles more commonly played where they know the supporting sidelines better, they know the situation better. I think we might have seen Rejects send one, but this is not the case. The circle gods have blessed Rejects every single time so far. Are they going to bless them once more? Who is it going to be? Because it gets down to anybody, honestly. And with the new circle... Oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait for this countdown just to get to zero so we can see who is it actually going to end up getting blessed. Because it could end up blessing both teams too. Oh, oh he, he does. <laughs> You're absolutely right. 
Well, it does end up blessing both teams as now they're just going to have to wait a little bit longer yeah. in Vampire Esports with them being usually the more aggressive team. I wonder what they're going to be doing here because they're the ones that are going to have to push out first, I feel like, especially with the next circle, depending on where it ends up going. They're just in a tougher spot here now for Vampire Esports. I mean, am I seeing this correctly? This is stage six? Yep. We still got... Oh, okay. Okay. Stage seven. There we go. So we still got one more circle shift. So it could still bless Rejects or it could bless Vampire, but there's no way it's blessing both of them again. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> not gonna, that is one thing that's not going to happen. So, uh, there Ooh, is... I like that out of Vampire. Uh, I don't know if you were able to catch that, but I like I that Vampire is already starting to cause some damage there to those vehicles. Because they oh, were okay, able to spot yeah. him, which is going to stop him from possibly getting cover. And guess what? Schweppes is now going to be able to find a cover here. Vampire oh, they're going to push? An aggressive team. Really? They could end up going for that push. Tony no K way. being the aggressor is making the push and he's going to try to get an off angle. He will have some rocks to work with. This is very aggressive for Vampire cheering. Esports as they do have one player behind them. Oh. Schweppes, Tony K and Stone now right up there. But Tony K is going to end up getting knocked. Two players are knocked there from Rejects and Vampire Esports trying to make the push with the, net, with the other players behind. Here comes the green from Reiji. Is this nade gonna hit? It does end up hitting, and now Ooh. it turns it into a 2v1 for Vampire Esports, the aggressor team taking the fight to Reject. Who is it gonna win it here? There's only one player left from Reject. Can he clutch it up for his team and be able to extend the lead even more? Or is it gonna be Vampire Esports trying to hunt them down in the final matches of the PMGO? The grenade is gonna come through, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Vampire Esports with an unlikely win. They saw an opening and they went for it, Sute. Yeah, <laughs> you were right. The Alpha 7 crowd cheering for Vampire Esports. That was, I mean, I remember back in the days where people talked about getting one knock and you push that team <laughs> and it'd be so messy. It would, it would usually never work out. Even the top tier teams at the time, this is a few years back, wouldn't be able to pull something off like that. Vampires though, I mean, they made it look so easy. Just one knock, push on through, and that got it done. And shout out to Regioso there, by the way. He yes. knew he had to make a play. So instead of running back in the building and healing, he ran out into that smoke that he pre-deployed because that was the only chance he could have made a wild card play to help the rejects team to clutch that fight up. So like when push comes to shove, this reject roster knows what needs to be done. Unfortunately for them, when Schweppes hits you with that mini, I mean, you just get hit with the mini. Look at that table slam. That was an absolute huge win for vampires. But Jukes. What does that mean for vampires? Where are they now on the leaderboards? Are they able to be number one? Are you kidding me? I mean, I think nine out of 10 teams there. Just chill. Just wait to see who gets the circle. But you know what? They put that fate in their own hands, right? They got that knock sent it. And it's possible now. It's possible. I mean, the gap is definitely going to be bigger now that Reese Reject just constantly having great performances here. But man, I mean, Vampire putting themselves in the running the hard way. Anything can happen here, especially after the last match. Reject could have expanded their gap even more. They do get those placement points. But we'll have to win and see as yet. We're going to take it to James Zhang. This match. Congratulations. Congratulations for you. And now here in our stage in Sao Paulo, Brazil, we have a very huge announcement for a very special person. And I hope the Brazilian crowd will receive him really, really well. I'm going to receive here. Welcome on stage, please. James Young, the Senior Director of Global Esports Level Infinite. Please come here on stage, honey. Thank you so much. The stage is yours now. Thank you. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, great. Hello, Pop Team World fans in the world and in Brazil. I'm James Young, Senior Director of Global Esports Level Infinite. What a great competition so far. PMG Brazil has everything we love. We love Pop Team Mobile, we love esports. We love legend stories. We love underdog stories. We love all strong pro teams here. We love all players here. And we love winner, winner, chicken dinner. So let's 
to watch the video together about what we love more this year. Welcome to the 2024 PUBG Mobile Esports Roadmap. Building on the momentum of being the most watched Battle Royale Esports game in 2023, PUBG Mobile is setting the stage for an even more exhilarating year in 2024. The journey begins with expanding our regional tournaments. Following the success of PUBG Mobile Super League in Southeast Asia, we're thrilled to introduce PMSL to the EMEA, CSA, and Americas with two seasons throughout the year. PMSL Southeast Asia will of course return, this time with three separate seasons throughout the year. We're committed to improving the competitive landscape and fan experience of PUBG Mobile. So we are delighted to announce that for 2024, we will have more than 40 professional teams as part of our partnership program with even more teams set to join in the future. 2024 marks the inauguration of our first global event, the PUBG Mobile Global Open. This event is designed to offer ambitious players at every level the chance to compete on the professional stage against the world's best teams. The PMGO will join PUBG Mobile Esports as an annual event, and we're proud to present Brazil as its first stop. 968 teams have already registered to battle through rigorous qualifiers for a chance to face top teams such as IFC, Alpha 7, S2G, and more. Besides winning the lion's share of the $500,000 USD prize pool, the winnings team region will also win an additional slot at the PUBG Mobile World Cup in Riyadh. The results of the PMGO could have a huge impact on who wins the PMWC, so stay tuned. Next stop is our mid-season tournament as we've upgraded our PUBG Mobile World Invitational. Partnering with the Esports World Cup, we're launching the PUBG Mobile World Cup in Riyadh KSA this summer. We're bringing our mid-season tournament to a whole new level with the PMWC, featuring a three-stage format to showcase the skill and competition of the world's most powerful and consistent teams. Selections for PMWC will be based strictly on regional performance, meaning this is the most competitive mid-season tournament PUBG Mobile has ever hosted. For the first time, PUBG Mobile players can design and select an exclusive outfit to be showcased during the event through the PDP co-creation program. The stakes are high in the PMWC with an overall prize pool of 3 million USD. And the champion will win an additional slot for its region to the PMGC, the most prestigious event of the year. We are incredibly excited to introduce the PUBG Mobile Global Championship. In 2024, the PMGC Grand Finals will be held in the United Kingdom, promising an unforgettable showdown. Competitors will battle it out for a $3 million prize pool as fans are set to witness unparalleled excitement and competition as the very best give it their all in order to be crowned champion. This year's PMGC League will maintain a roster of 48 teams as pro teams will fight for spots to their regional tournament performances presenting more thrilling matches for the audience. Lastly, we hope everyone can fully enjoy all the exciting events in 2024 by the PUBG Mobile Esports team, and that you continue to support your favorite teams and players. Wow, so wonderful, great, fantastic, right? Okay, it's the time. 2024 PUBG Mobile Global Open Brady Grand Final, the last day, the last three matches. Are you ready? Who will be the one? That's the question that we all want to know the answer to. But boy, oh boy, with the performance that some of these teams are putting up, I cannot even try to predict who is going to be the one at the end of the PMGO Brazil 2024. And something that I actually got a chance to hear during that video that I haven't been confirmed with before, Sutan Hachuks. What's the price pool for the PMWC? <laughs> For the PUBG Mobile World Cup, because if you do end up winning the PMGO, you're going to get invited to that. So you're not only going to get a 100000 you're going to get a chance at the $3 million prize pool for PMWC. 
You gotta be kidding me. Every single time I get to see the godfather of PUBG Mobile Esports, James Yang, I get goosebumps because I know I'm going to hear something good. And man, $3 million coming up on the line coming up is going to be insane. I mean, there's a massive prize pool here and now. And you know teams want to just pull out everything out on the table, right? To make sure that they can get themselves there as soon as they possibly can. Maybe that's why we saw Vampire Esports come off with that performance there, being able to just fully send it. They saw the opening, they took it because they heard 3 million at PMWC <laughs> in KSA. We know what we're used to doing over there. 23 points for that team. Team Falcons actually there with 15 points. And the thing is, luckily for some of the other teams, Reject, even though they do end up getting the sec second place, Tute, with them being so passive and waiting for so long, they only end up with just nine points. Yeah, I was saying earlier, like, maybe they're good, you know, just at that spot, not having to push out anywhere, but maybe it worked against them, too, getting all those zones. Nine points? Back in the days, a second-place finish gets you way more placement points, but those are the olden days. In this new age and era of PUBG Mobile Esports, it is all about the aggression, it is all about the eliminations, and that is exactly what Vampire Esports showed us in that one knock full send push. So they are the ones to get the majority of the points, and well, as for Rejects, they get a couple points, and their gap closes up just a teeny bit but it is still within their reach to get that championship spot yeah and for all the teams that do want to end up challenging for that first place as we take a look here at the mvp tony k okay. the man once again four eliminations 650 damage was i want to see those top teams challenging for that first place have the same certainty that Vampire Esports was able to showcase during that last match. As soon as they got the knock, you saw the players jump into that Ooh. car. There was no questioning about it. They knew exactly what they were going to do, huh, Jukes? And they went for it, and they got that chicken dinner. Wow. I mean, instant knock, instant push. I mean, I don't even think Team Reject expected that coming. And as soon as I saw Tony K get to this hill save, I was like, oh, Vampire's going to be a problem. He ended up getting knocked, but man, I mean, just... The team effort from Vampire is just crazy here as we're about to take a look at the standings and see just how big that gap is. And the problem I'm having here, Seven, is, Ooh. oh, it's, it's a good one. It's a good gap, but I don't want to see Team Reject do what they did in the last game for the rest of the tournament. They can't just think, oh, we have a good amount of points. All we got to do is just get something on the board. That is not going to be enough here. They got to continue to play the game that they have been playing to get here so far. I'm with you because Team Reject now 15 point lead. We know that can be gone just within that one match. And Vampire Esports taking care of that fifth spot. 109 points, 30 points behind. We know Vampire Esports can definitely string some wins together back to back. Could this team do it here in the main event? We haven't seen them do it here in the main event yet. But could they end up doing it, Sute? They could. They very well could. But we got to talk about Boom a little bit, too. They're still up yep. there in that third place spot. Last game, they did fizzle out to Alpha 7. But with a couple more games to go, Boom could still get it done as well. And, I mean, sure, Vampire have the momentum right now after that huge chicken dinner. They're riding high. But still, as far as the points are concerned, Boom is still above them by like 10 points. So Vampires yep. still have a lot more to do. S2G right behind Boom, right? They're close by too. And Rejects, they're at least putting up points per game. But Hot Juice yeah. said it best. They need to maybe ramp back up that aggression before it slips out of their hands. And that's something that we don't want to see, Hot Juice. You were talking about this especially yesterday in regards to Alpha 7 at one point. And I think we got to switch that topic now to that team that's currently in first place, Reject, because we're mentioning we don't want to be seeing these teams switch the way they play just because they're in first place. That's the worst mistake they can make. I agree. I agree. They cannot afford it. They cannot afford it at this point because we're at a stage now with only three points, uh, three games left. These guys need a ridiculous amount of points. So, yeah, they got to just completely step on the pedal here. Well, I can't wait to see what's going to happen on that last Erin Gill here on day three. But before we even go to Erin Gill, 
Don't forget about the Realme 12 Pro Plus. It elevates your photography experience with 120 times super zoom and performance in games. How to be a portrait master. This might be all that I know. Think it's okay. I've got a long way to grow. At my own pace. Go the wrong way. No one taught me how to walk, but I figured it out fine. Long strides, long strides, long strides. Every day's your time. You climb, you grow, you fall. Get back up, ask for more. Got a long way to go. Seen a crowd sound fine. Head hanging out the window every time you take a drive. Gonna soak up all this life like you alive. This the only one you got. Don't you toss it to the side. Right now's the only time you'll ever be. Right here on this day, in this moment, in this place. Look around, what you take it all in for a phase. And it's gone and in place. Is a place you never thought that you'd be Where you ask why you ain't Where you want, that's just all It's alright, let it fall Or we'll rebuild it Stronger than it was before You're resilient, you're brilliant There's love in this all You're okay You're alright Every day's your time You alive The crown this might be all that I know. Think it's okay. I've got a long way to grow. At my own pace. Go the wrong way. No one taught me how to walk, but I figured it out. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Look. Look at how far we done made it. I put it all on the table. 
bitch, I'm a product of cable cars and the soldiers that raised me. A tribe of women from heaven that brought me miracles daily. Now they the ones that he's saving. Mom's ain't the same since my grandma faded, then turned to an angel. When well, she could see me right now, wanted to know that we major. See from all of the angles. Can't ever turn off my brain from everything we done saying. But I'm just shocked that I'm stable. If there's a guy, she's amazing. Wave. I spill my soul on the table. I give it all while I'm able. I can't break bread when I'm stranger. I hold it down for my brothers. Been tight since naps in the cradle. Since pick up rounds in the park, we found peace and sound. To that chain link neck, catch our dreams with each patron. Got a knack with the pen. It's an apparatus for magic. I scribble slow as his skill. Till I feel the earth in rotation. I know the time and it's crazy. But I know somehow we okay here. I'm out in Florida enjoying Atlantic shores. Look like a postcard scene. Soak up the rays for days. It feels so euphoric. Feel like I'm soaring, a floor in the pedal, swerving a fawn, all off the personal statement. Ain't take a Uber to get here, all in a stride in the cadence. Got so much farther to take it, my mind's a power container. And I use that wisely, don't let nobody contain it. I keep you safe in my ribcage, just north the left of the navel. One good look in your eyes can show what the new day might bring. Every day is your time. You alive. Stick around. This might be all that I know. I think it's okay. I've got a long way to grow. Go the long way. No one taught me how to walk, but I figured it out fine. Okay, sorry, I got a little bit distracted there. <laughs> I was just vibing to that song during that break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the PMGO Brazil 2024 on your final day. And boy, oh boy, have things gotten spicy here. We still have Reject there in first place, 
But another team that I might have thought they might have been a little bit too far away. They want to challenge Vampire Esports coming off with that last win, Hodgix. Oh, yes, they do. I mean, honestly, I, there's still with three matches left. A lot of yep. teams, I think they can still take away first place. But at this point, you know, Team Reject has got to get stopped. So these top teams, I think, really need to start considering that that is a possibility at this point. Which, which team? Which team are we going for here? I mean, if any team, I would say Vampire Esports needs to start thinking maybe about uh, cutting off a rotation here and there from Reject. Yep, I think them, next Rhea, I mean, Team Falcons as well. I mean, we've seen teams pull out double-digit elimination chicken dinners as we get into a huge Aaron Gale match. Zute, this, yeah. this is important right here. The final Aaron Gale of the day. Who's going to take the win? I mean, we've seen some pretty crazy circles here. That's definitely, I think, made things interesting. But, man, I mean... You have to pull out all the stops here because you don't know what's going to happen in Miramar. Yeah, it is only going to get harder from here. This is the last Aaron go, like you said. So the easiest map to navigate and take your fights in. So you got to make it count, especially this being the last one. Because after that, Miramar, I mean, we've seen the Miramar matches. They are not easy for anybody besides if you get Circle Blessed. But even then, it could get extremely difficult so let's see what this one has in store for us hot jukes the very first circle can we get something special here we've already seen a military base maybe stalbor circle those are always fun to watch Ooh. where's it gonna be and hey the this doors. may seem this may seem like a very inconspicuous circle but if it keeps the river in play this is gonna get very interesting as well Oh, man, that river. I mean, it just literally spits, splits the whole entire map in half. So teams are going to have to decide where they want to go. Do you want to go north? Do you want to go south? We will see because it can go anywhere at this point. And uh, you know what? I will say, Zute, if anything was like yesterday, this is when S2G just started going insane, right? From this game on That's forward. True. I mean, yeah, S2G was just an unstoppable force. They won uh, the game with a chicken dinner and 11 eliminations. The next one, the first Miramar chicken dinner in 12 and then the last miramar it was nine eliminations and a second place finish so if any team does that here now they're going to be the champions you know what i'm saying i mean yeah. there's so there's so many teams that can do that yeah so i mean I, I'm, I'm talking about all the way down let me just take a little, little glance at the leaderboards here why don't we go down all the way to i mean man next ria for sure right yeah, maybe even maybe even uh, all the way down to regnum caria i mean possibly i mean that's that's going to be a massive stretch right for sure a lot of things would have to go right to even make that possible but from next ria on up they need to have a performance like s2g had yesterday yeah definitely we'll see if it happens but as far as i'm concerned man for s2g this is a great circle for them to start popping True. off. I mean, they're on the west side of Yasnaya. They get a easy rotations towards the center, and they could even split it up. They could control the north and south side, potentially, at that one compound complex, you know, east of Razak, right? Just by controlling the bridge. So we'll see what happens. I do expect teams to make a little bit faster of rotations because there's only a few power positions here that give you the option of both north and south. So teams should definitely be prioritizing those spots given you know where their irrespective uh, drop spot is. So rejects are all the way down in the southeast. They're going to have a tough time, you know, finding that first prime power position. They might decide to take this one slow for the first zone. We'll see what they do. Alpha 7, of course, and North George Pool. They're one of the teams I'm looking to make that fast rotation. Maybe just a quick one, you know, to the east at that one uh, compound, the square compound, the cube complex, mm. as we call it, the one that controls the bridge right outside of North George Pool. So we'll see where these teams, where these teams end up eventually. But we got to see them make a move quick. You are absolutely right. I mean, you're going to have to get moving as soon as possible because we've seen so far, I mean, the center zone, if you get blessed, your, your chances of winning are just through the roof, you know? And not to mention in a lobby like this, you don't want to get stuck on the outside having to force your way in. It's just so difficult. I mean, even in that 
you know, the Aaron Gale that I just casted a couple games ago, you know, Alpha 7 was gatekeeping all of these squads. I mean, and we're talking just legends in the lobby, in the game in general, right? Nova, IHC, the previous PMGC winners, and they were able to hold them all back. Yeah, Deep Plus Kia was able to get the last laugh on them, but it just goes to show you how powerful those positions are, even when you have yeah. all the, st the odds stacked against you. And then, you know, Vampire, you know, pushing out in the wide open against the top team while they're in a building with cover and winning it, anything can happen. So, you know, uh, I'm looking at the map right now. Vampire, of course, coming from Primorsk. They're going to be pushing on out. I am trying to find... Okay, yeah, Reject. They are all the way down in farm. So this is going to be an interesting game for them because now they are on the back foot when it comes to just being circle blessed. They're going to have to push their way in the hard way. What do you think about that? But, I, I mean, if you think about it, last match, Rejects was on the edge every single time, too. It was mm -hmm. until, like, Circle 3 that they just got zone blessed over and over and over again. So that might happen again as Falcons getting into some very early action. So Falcons sitting at 93 points. If they pull off an S2G yesterday, it is still doable for them. But that means they have to take pretty much almost every fight early on and win it and make it to the late game. So here's that first fight. And it's not going their way to start off. One of them is already knocked. Action going down and oh, top it. trying to hold it down for the team. He will get knocked and not just that. Knocked and most likely confirmed. That's going to be a tough revive for the side of Falcons to get. Yeah, no, he's going to get confirmed. And Falcons looking worse and worse now. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is what I was scared of. You know, I didn't want to see teams make even the slightest mistake here because anything could happen. And, you know, Team Falcons could not afford to lose one single player. And to lose a player like top that early on, I mean, I mean, I wish I had a player cam because his hands have got to be on his head at this yeah. point. I mean, maybe not because he's definitely going to be trying to feed his team all the information he can. But, I mean, a brutal position to be in regardless. Nice nade there. Actually, oh, that was double. a double nade. Oh, but Tonka just getting IHC. that instant thirst is brutal. IHC just third parting already, too, by the way. IHC actually gets uh -oh. So, even if Falcon wins this, IHC is going to definitely clean house here. Tonka doing everything he can to get as many elims on the board for his team. I think Tonka took down two by himself. I don't think he's going to get those revives. And, yeah. May as well crawl over. Not much else you could do because Tonka is not crossing over Got to him. you guys in the wide open. And they will go down there. And you can see the desperation out of these teams right now. IHC, how many points did they pick up so far? They've picked up three. So looking to pick up two more. You know, start off with five points. That's not bad. And we've seen how Huge. fast these points can snowball. If you get five early on, win another team fight, that's nine. And that's still like what? 13 teams left in the lobby and two like you're only in stage two of, of the match right so this is exactly what ihc needs to do if they want a shot at first place and that is what they're doing beautifully done this is so far outside of the circle as well but this just goes to show right the strategy that they have to utilize considering where they're at on the leaderboards they're in seventh place they need to have crazy games right we're talking 15 eliminations chicken dinner right here if they want to kind of make that crazy, just unremarkable, just remarkable run here. As you can see them hunting down the final player, but they also have to prioritize zone. So I wonder if they're going to try to go actually into that warehouse and see if they can catch Icy out. Or will they just leave this and go towards the circle? The next zone does pop on up. And whoo, it's a long ways away. It's going to be in that school Roshawk area. That's going to be interesting. IHC, man, they need every single point they can get. But at this point where the zone is, you can see them just trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, looks like IHC is going to disengage and leave. Where is IC playing, actually? Is that the inside of the... I don't think I've ever seen that spot being used before. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's going to be yeah, safe. They, yeah, he's safe. They, they weren't, they weren't going to find him. They definitely no, they were not. Uh, unless if this is a somewhat common spot now in the world of esports uh, or competitive PUBG Mobile, but I have <gasps> Alpha never... 7 got knocked. Oh, Alpha wait, 7 got it... knocked. Oh, that's on the east side. Oh, no, no, that's on the north. That's brutal. And that's against Death Wolves, and they end up getting an elimination. So oh, that no. is going to hurt Alpha 7 so bad. They're Brazilian brothers, 
not uh -oh. helping them out at all right here as they're getting a nice knock and the rest of alpha 7 they're start running they're saying you know what we don't want none of this right now we cannot afford to lose another player i mean they could still definitely get it done with three for sure but man they gotta they gotta definitely be careful because death wolves and the rest of these teams right are trying to have that crazy performance they want to be able to finish off strong said you know what we were able to get it done maybe not during the early part of the tournament but towards the end we showed up you know so oh i could definitely see why alpha 7 said you know what we are out of here yeah, that is that is tough for Alpha Seven. I do think that was uh, Revo that got finished there. You can see right there on the or no Magrellan. You can see on the player cams he has his phone on the table. That is rough Oof. for Rejects though. They saw that in the elimination feed. They're definitely uh, a little bit happy about that, but they gotta worry about Boom and S2G still and plus Vampire with that momentum they're getting. Vampire could be the contender for that number one spot as well. Here is the Rejects team. They're southeast of the center of the zone, right around school. If the circle pulls away from the north, away from the river, that does put Rejects in a great position, actually. But the circle could still go anywhere right now, so we'll see in the next couple of seconds what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens. Indeed, as we're going to see the zone shift, the river's still in play. That doesn't make things easy by any means here, and... Uh... Team Reject, they are starting to creep their way through here. They just passed up Smoke Gaming. They are going to be quite... They're going to be really, really next to school. So that's going to be interesting to see. If the zone goes north, it's not going to pay them any favors. That's for sure. Actually, Alpha 7 fans should be really hoping the zone goes north. Because that will help them out big time. Meanwhile, S2G, another team that really... They went crazy on this game on forward yesterday. Let's see what happens. The zone does pop. Where does it go? That is the question. It looks like oh, it looks like it did hardship south. That is so brutal for teams like Alpha 7 and IHC and a really huge favor for the side of Team Reject. Oh boy. Oh boy. What is going to happen here as we're going to be taking a look at Nova still holding it down in that corner. Meanwhile, you're going to see Oh, this is a, a Hi-Fi and, and D plus Kia just going at it. Pretty kind of insignificant fight when it comes to the leaderboards. But these are also eliminations that a lot of these teams are going to need. So definitely not the best uh, situation here. And this is going to be a battle at school. So school is still in play. And if we do get a school finish, usually the team that actually just does, decides to hold down school, they're like pretty much unstoppable. So... I'm not surprised to see some teams that are, like, in such desperate need of points just battling it out here. Boom is, is on the outskirts of this. Who knows? Maybe they even might try to third-party their situation. Schools are very difficult to third-party, though, so I'm not surprised to see Boom just, you know what, just drive on by, try to get a little bit of intel, and say, okay, yeah, school's taken. Let's just go ahead and take on this edge of Rozhawk. But all eyes are going to be on the top two squads here. Reject Alpha 7. And oh man, this is the calm before the storm, folks. Stage number three. Everybody's taking up a pretty decent spot right here, except for Alpha 7. They're actually just north of Roshawk across the river. So they're going to have to cross the river some way, somehow. This is like literally the worst case scenario for Alpha 7. They lost a player earlier. They're in like one of the worst spots in this zone. Um, if any team could do it though, it's them, right? I mean, they've always played that edge circle, so they're used to being in these scenarios. It's just not the one that they wanted to be in. Uh, so we'll see how it all plays out. Meanwhile, in Watertown, that was IHC and Nova on that side. You have the Death Wolves going to be pressing up onto that fight here in a minute. But zone 36 seconds left on the clock. That's going to be the big telltale sign of who's going to get some love here. I'll tell you what. These Aaron Gales today have not been kind to so many of these teams. We've seen some pretty crazy zones. And those zones can go anywhere at this point. So I guarantee you a lot of the teams, everybody uh, in the current stands right now in Brazil are hoping the zone goes north because Alpha 7 really, really needs it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't just have to go north. It has to go north multitudes of times because if they lose that zone near the north and they have to cross in s2g is right there waiting for them so we'll see what happens new zone does pop up jukes and it well it does go north 
gives a little bit of a uh, circle luck for Alpha 7, but this could still go anywhere as this circle will ensue in madness very soon. Al Alpha 7 were so fortunate they were able to cross that bridge and make it into the zone safely, which was really, really big for them. Now we're going to see teams like Team Reject now on the outer edge, so they're going to have to have a fun time getting on into this zone. Find a way in. It looks like they may have a similar idea of what Alpha 7 had and looking to be going in the same direction. School's still in play, so that's these two teams are totally fine right now. But Alpha 7, yeah, you can see they it was not an easy rotation. Their vehicles are quite on fire, but they made it safe. High fives are right next to them right now as Zebra Master steals that elimination. So if there is gonna be a battle between these two squads, it'll be a 3v3. Yeah, the the issue is so from this position where Alpha Seven is Alpha Seven is it is so hard for them to gain points. I mean, you sh you have angles to shoot at, but look, you get a knock, and it's very hard to get a confirmation here. So even though Alpha Seven is kind of safe in the circle, their chances of getting Elam points are pretty low. Rejects, on the other hand, on the east side on the edge of the zone, if they have to fight in, they can get those elimination points, but. This circle jukes, it is so hard to get any clean fight in. It is going to be scraps every which way. Here goes Nova. Nova looking to make their last stand here. Obviously, Team Nova not having the performance that they wanted at all here in the PMGO. But they're definitely not looking to go out without a fight for sure. You got IHC just on the other side. Those guys are still in the running, especially starting off with five eliminations. Anything can happen. We got Vampire, though. Vampire getting an, emula an, a, an elimination onto the Death Wolves. And that's a couple of knocks already. Now, though, that's a team right there could definitely be on the hunt for first place. Yeah, Vampire is actually probably in the best spot right now. They're just right north of uh, the western compounds of school where there's that dip and there's that mountain south of Rosic. So they control pretty much the one and only power position out of all the teams here. We'll see soon on the minimap. For the players that do play comp or do scrims, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, Roshawk Hills, definitely interesting. And you have that big bowl right on that south side of it that could always be a backup location. It's not the best spot, but man, is it great cover, especially if that zone were to hard shift to that field, for sure. So I can see why Vampire's looking to hold it down because you know Vampire wants to win this one. They want it yeah. so bad, and they're not in a terrible position. They're not in a great one. They're 30 point differential away from first place. But with what we've seen so far, that could easily be passed up with three matches left. We gotta we talk about IHC. IHC, yeah, yeah, IHC pushing on Nova. Yeah, IHC wanted too. They got those E limbs early. I was saying it earlier, Jukes. They can still get it done, and they have to fight constantly on their way in. That's exactly what they're doing. Look, I said if they get five early, that could easily go up to nine if they win another fight. And well, they're about to do just that. Surely they could take out the last member. Yeah, clean. Oh, wait, they got nine, and they still have one more that they could get. That means they can go wow. up to ten. This should be easy ten points for them. And look at the zone, Jukes. It is right Are within arm's reach for them. IHC. Jukes. Actually, I'm not going to say it. Oh. Not yet. No, don't I'm say, gonna it. say don't it. say anything, Zutane. I'm going to say right. it at the <gasps> end of this match, depending on what happens. But here comes Rejects on the north side. By the way, with this zone shift, Vampire could be in a great spot. They are in that bowl you're talking about, and they can control the Razak Mountain if they could survive this circle. Team Reject so sneaky, driving their way all the way around that edge line, and they are able to make it in a safe spot. But look at that Zebra Master knocking out another player of Alpha 7. Now, will they get the rest? He should be in a decently safe spot. But look at that. Team Reject are able to wrap around and get this hillside to themselves. Now it's up to them to eject Team S2G. If they do, they will have a great spot in the zone. S2G has to hold them down as Vampire get eliminated oh, no. by none other than the team right next to them on the leaderboards. It's next, Ruya. Vampire not able to get it done. If they won that one fight, it could have been huge, but IHC will be the next ones you see right here contending for this very spot. 
Oh my god, Jukes, if IHC <laughs> can eject next Ruya out of here, oh! and they do, they get it done with one nade, there's still two players up, but knowing where IHC is on the leaderboards, and them already on 10 elims, that one knock is the go-ahead, that is the greenlit single signal for them to continue the pressure, and that's exactly what they're gonna Demo! do. Demo drives in, gets the run over, more nades coming in, next Ruya down to just one, Demo does get knocked though. That's not gonna slow down IHC. Oh, IHC is just on a rampage right now, looking to take out everybody, especially next Ria, who's the team right above them on the leaderboards. They know who they're going against, so they want to be able to go ahead and take them out as soon as they can. They gotta watch out though. They're holding this bowl, and it is a great spot as long as there's not a team right next to you because it is very easily nadable. And the rest of IHC need to take him out. Here comes Yol on the on the drive over. He does get the intel. Actually runs over his teammate, but that's not a problem right there. As they do finish off oh next my Ria. God. A huge finish. IHC with 14 eliminations already. I mean, we. this is not the first time we've seen this, right? A team with up to double-digit 14 eliminations this early into the match. And yes, this is early because we still have so many players left alive ihc i mean when they need to get it done they are getting it done Oof. right now in ihc fashion you know how they're getting it done they're getting it done with four player shoots four not three four uh -oh. this time and that is exactly what they need the worst case scenario for everybody in the lobby ihc with four up are dangerous and they couldn't have asked for a more insane time to do it are you kidding me on the final eric gale of the day you put up 14 eliminations and there's still 11 teams remaining these guys are gonna have if they continue this they are gonna have the performance of 2024 and we're just getting started yeah they're fighting with D plus right now. One of IHC does get knocked. They can't get thirsty. They need all four. They have to get all four up. They're continuing the pressure. Just one last player of D plus. And no! Zio gets it done. Back up to four they go. And they're going to need it. Because that new zone ship is to the north. Away from them. Towards the sides of rejects. So rejects are sitting pretty. S2G also in a great position. Center zone at probably the best position at that string of compounds right on top of the hill. They're going to be able to see everything and everyone, but rejects could get a big backstab in. They do have to worry about IC though. Falcons, the lone solo at their very top north. This is the kind of performance that we needed to see from so many squads. I'm talking about Regnum Karia, Team Falcons, right? They needed to do what IHC just did. Push everything, right? This is what you got to do if you want to make it, if you want to even stand a chance at really pushing yourself into that top three of where they're at on the leaderboard. 16 eliminations already? Are you kidding me? But you're right. They are in a terrible position on the zone. You can see there in the mini map or there on the top right. They're all the way on the south. They are not in this next circle. This is stage six. The blue zone will chunk you. Papa Blue is going to lay down some punishment. So IHC have to find a way in. And there's not, very, there's not anything really available. They're going to have to do it the hard way. Yeah, they're moving. They're swinging out to the west. I oh, see that right now. Oh, what a full push. That, I mean, they're running straight into another four-man team of Regnum Karia. I don't think this is going to go well. Actually, Demo stops out on the west side, kind of in the open. I do believe there's a rock there that he's using as an anchor position. So I mean, it, is, it is a tough rotation no matter where they go. But here comes Regnum Karia straight into the side of Reject. Rejects need to hold this down. I don't know if they're ready for this push as they do look a little bit... Split up, and the nades are good by Regnum Karia. This could stop Rejects dead in their tracks. They have to. They have to. They know it's Team Reject. They know if they even want to have a chance here at that top position. They got to take them out here and now. And the DBS is coming out strong, but Duello is holding it down there with those critical knocks. And these are some huge elimination points that Team Reject needs. He needs to go and get these thirsts, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Yep, prioritize those points, get them locked down, and then worry about that final player. Where is Silas? Silas, you have to push this. You can't chill yeah silas trying to hold an overwatch position a little bit further back did not go according to plan ihc show me ihc what are they working no with out way there? they made it in like that uh, four vehicles i'm i know they got some cover but what what shape are they in s2g surely should be able to get at least one knock i know there's trees there's rocks out there but, oh no, I think there's that little hill. 
I think they're using that small little hillside. Cameraman, please pan the camera to the left. We got to see what IHC is doing. Actually, this is pretty good too. Alpha 7, this is another team we really got to keep our eyes on. Three still up. Only one Elam on the edge of zone. They're going to have to fight their way in. It is going to be a tough fight. IHC's timing was legendary because there's all the teams that are in the buildings right now have been hunting each other. The zone goes to them! So Wait, IHC boom. are actually in a great spot. Here goes Boom. Boom has to take out Team Reject. The straight being left and right, but man, Team Reject are just too good in the close quarters combat. And look at that. Boom in big trouble. It's just the final player. He's trying to go for the res, but here comes Regioso with that DBS. Is he going to get it done? Uh-oh, oh! he's got to get the shot, but he does six eliminations. And now here come the shooting the box. That's exactly what they got to do. Regioso, the god right now. I don't know how he survived that. That player popped out in the most unexpected way, but he still won that. Rejects, six elims, three players up. What a fan tag hold out of the reject team but now they got to push and look at IHC yeah they're using that little hillside and they do get that circle IHC 16 elims can they get a chicken dinner here alpha 7 what can they salvage with three players being in a terrible spot in the zone well they can salvage one more point there that is a crucial point wait did they get that yes they, they go. did they're up to three oh. they gotta get the revive they gotta go that is so hard. That revive may even be too much time. I mean, there's a minute left on the clock. They're going to go for it, but they're going to have to push through the Death Wolves who are just holding this position. And uh, this is a very, this is the worst case scenario here. Here comes Revo here with the nade. Just get it. So he gets that confirmation. That's the door open now. They need to go ahead and take out Guizal, keep all three up, and then push this position because it's desperate time calls for desperate measures. Team Reject have six eliminations. So with Alpha 7's current performance, it's not enough. And then you got to worry no. about IHC with how crazy they've been going. No, yeah, it is not enough. Alpha 7, Carrillo goes Carrillo down. Carrillo gone! Rivo, the last one up. Can he even just get one more point here? One more Elim points. You could take that 1v1 with Guizal, but it's gonna be tough. A 1v1, but oh, oh. hold that thought. It is IHC to 19. shut down Alpha 7. 19 eliminations. Look at the crowd. Oh, the heads are down because they know what this means, especially considering that Team Reject is yeah, still rejects. alive. These guys just refuse to go down the hard way. It's unbelievable. IHC matching the elimination record so far, and they're not done yet. Six teams still remain. Yeah, and you know what else remains? Four players, Jukes. Four players of IHC. Ooh. Not the three man into the late game, but four. I think this is like the first time we've seen a full four man squad of IHC into the very, very late game. Surely this is a chicken dinner, but hold on. This is a big fight too. S2G versus Hi Fives. S2G, they need to hold this one down. They oh. need to win this one without losing a single player. They need points. S2G has zero elimination points. And then here comes High Fives looking to just crush the dreams of S2G as it's Razy up on top with some smokes here trying to make something happen. It is a 3v3, and it's going to be a 3v3. They do have to watch out for that backside, though. High Fives are definitely going to be looking for some off angles, trying to put up some points. Silas is still up for Regnum Karia, but yeah, these guys are out of the running at this point. So S2G need to stay alive. If they want to make it happen in Miramar coming up. As Rogue gets another one. A new elimination oh record for IHC. 20 eliminations. The first time we have seen that this year. And could well be the last. That is one third of the lobby, Jukes. One third of the lobby. 64 players. Four being your own. Hamzi trying to defend it. Gets one. Gets two. Ray Z goes down. And it's just all up, Kals up to Kelsey. He needs to get in here quick. Save his oh! teammates! Oh, the shotgun! He it is done! It is done! Buckshot just like that takes it to the chest. But here oh, comes the IHC with the third oh party! My God. These guys are not messing around! They do not stop! They know the circle's going into nothing. They're gonna take the fight now. The hurt team. But Godless? Oh no, Garlis goes down. They're down back to a three-man. 
Hey, it would not be a game of PMGO Brazil without IHC as a three-man in the end game. This is their strategy, Zute. They wanted to lose one player because this is where they're no. at their best. They can't lose another, though. Rogue gets knocked. That is not good. And meanwhile, here comes the jump out. Should be an easy knock for Demo. And the pop of blue should be able to take out this remaining player. Oh. No, he doesn't. He actually what? jumps out the last second. IHC falling apart. What is happening? That's they're shot gone. Good. No way! That shotgun out of Robs is decimating and crushing dreams out here, and it's actually rejects in a 1v1 Ooh. for the chicken dinner! Raging also oh. out of all the reject players too! Oh, this is his! This is as good as done! Raging Oso, the god player out of Japan in a 1v1 in a favorable position with the DBS. He's about to get this chicken dinner. No unless way. Unless he gets panned. Unless he gets panned. Oh. That's the only way. The pan is it. The jump. Yeah. Wait a second. Oh. Regnum Karia. With the jump out. Look at the last though. Hey, you know what? I think Team Reject is not mad at all about that. Because with that performance, these guys are looking too good going into the final two matches of the day. Silas able to finish out with that chicken dinner, but you can just see there is no excitement from this squad because they know it is not enough. Team Reject all smiles in this case. These guys just refuse to go down, Zute. Yeah, they refuse to go down. Honestly, that should have been their chicken dinner, but before we say anything more, can we have a moment to talk about high fives and not just high fives and high five robs. <laughs> high five robs. Robs. In robs particular he is robbing everyone's streams he is shutting down s2g streams because robs was the last one up and then robs hit the craziest shotgun shots towards the end onto ihc i mean we said Seven. this way earlier right Seven. we got we said this way earlier that when teams have their backs up against the wall and they have nothing to lose they play like completely different players and that is what's going on Seven. They definitely are. Rob Sob, I mean, not only just an IC, before that too, he was able to take the fight towards S2G as well and win that fight. And then Silas being able to clutch up there that finale, not giving the extra four points that Reject would have gotten if they ended up getting that chicken dinner. But overall, Reject doing exactly what they need to do to not get pushed off that first place. I see with the massive performance. They weren't able to get the chicken dinner, but I think they ended up somewhere along the lines of 22 eliminations. Ooh. Are you kidding me? At one point, we weren't even at the halfway point mark, Hajiks and Sute, and they were already up 14. What an insane performance out of that team. As we're looking at the team performances here so far today, you can see Reject is the one that's staying the most consistent at being able to get those points. And if any of those teams hunting them down, you can be as good as IHC. But if, it, if Reject's still alive towards the end, it does not matter. You're not going to be able to close that gap. These teams need to start reacting to that hot jukes. And I think it might be time for that hot drop. It has to be. It has to be. At this point, with how Team Reject have been playing, these guys don't go down. They don't. It doesn't matter. They don't get the circle. They rotate in somehow. They find the perfect spot. They go ahead and they'll be down a man in a 1v2 situation. Regioso is going to just bust out his DBS and squad wipe everybody. You have to stop them. They need to pull out a zero point game if anybody wants to stand a chance at passing them up on the leaderboards and winning this grand championship. So Alpha 7, I'm looking at you. I think that if anyone's got the grapes to do it, Seven, it's them and they need to here and now. It would be them. And like you mentioned, they definitely need to. This team has not been able to be consistent whatsoever today. Yes, they've been able to get those elimination points, but when it comes down to the placement points, when they need to clutch up, when it matters the most, they just haven't Ooh. been there. But a team that could possibly clutch up, a team that can definitely take the fight to reject, we're looking at them. IHC, as I mentioned earlier, 22 eliminations, 26 points total. But they need to stop rejects from getting points because rejects end up with 14 points. Alpha Samuel with just four. And some of the other teams that also needed the points like S2G, only three. We're seeing more and more of a sponge points points here Sute 
and I feel like it's only going to get worse and worse. And with what High Fives was just able to do, some of the other teams are going to be looking at that and going to be like, okay, we want to have our highlight moment now. Yep. Yeah, things are gonna just get crazier from here on out. And I heard the term hot drop being used. Problem is, I think, yeah, I think rejects have only lost one out of the five or six hot drops that have happened. I don't think you can hot drop rejects. I think you gotta do something else to deal with the reject team, Jukes. Uh, I mean, I see Ooh. where you're going with that, but you don't have a choice. That's the problem. It's like, yeah, you know what? If you want to become the champions, you're going to have to beat them. And honestly, right now, Team Reject are already going to crown themselves oh, if they're not man. stopped, right? So Alpha 7, look at this gap. That is yeah. a 25-point gap. With two games left and how Reject has been playing, they got to be stopped. You have no other choice, at least, at, least in my, at least in my opinion. And you want to know what's the worst part? We're going to be going into Miramar. If you're Alpha 7, if you're Boom, S2G, IHC now wanting to go for that challenge, not only are you wanting to close on the gap of points, but you're also going to have to deal with maybe one of the best maps for Rejects so far, and that is going to be Miramar. It is going to be a tough ass, boys, and maybe not even just a hot drop, maybe some possible we are rotation back on stage stops. Now when we have a really special moment with our crowd really soon. And that's something that I've been really curious about because basically we have a dance that is a special dance for PMGO here in Brazil and I have to warn you I'm not gonna do this because I'm a horrible dancer the horrible that you can ever imagine but we have people here that are really good at it and we're gonna try to put a crowd in it too so please no you're gonna that. do it no I'm not you're gonna, gonna no, do please, it no, no, no, yeah no, she no, would no, do no, it I'm she would definitely do it no please e já estamos de volta aqui na nossa arena família e ó seguinte tô vendo que tá todo mundo muito animado por aí e eu quero ver a animação total porque Pubs de Mobile tá completando seis anos aí de história e nós preparamos uma dancinha muito especial. Não sei se vocês estão sabendo, se não sabia, agora vocês estão sabendo. E eu quero a participação de todo mundo pra estar tá dançando e nesse momento queria chamar aqui dois cosplays do nosso jogo que vão nos ajudar e nos guiar aí pra gente dançar, sacudir. Gente, vamos levantar, vamos levantar todo mundo, ficar de pé, por favor, vamos lá. Stand up, please, guys. Come on, come on. Everybody stand up, and we have two cosplayers from the game that will help us to do this dance. That is the dance that we're gonna basically do to cheer up for the six-year anniversary of PUBG Mobile. That's a very special moment, not only for the game, but for our country as well, because we have these huge dancers here that are let's gonna help us do that. So let's, let's, let's do it. Vamos, vamos, vamos começar? Uhul! Vamos lá, cadê a música? Bora! I know there's one wow. team right now wanting to do that dance, and it's going to be none other than, that's right, Reject. They're doing that, Shimmy. They're doing that dance, and somebody else that's going to be celebrating at home is going to be Maxman wanting to do that dance here on the screen because Reject, going into the last two matches <sighs> in Miramar, one of the Phenomenal. strongest performing maps for this team. First of all, they've gotten a chicken dinner already in Miramar. And yesterday, they were able to finish off the day with two top fours and back it up with elimination. So this is why I'm starting to put, and, and I'm usually against it too, but I feel like with the scenario that's given, maybe a hot drop or maybe cutting off their rotations, that's what it's going to come down to for those teams hunting them down, Hot Jukes. 
All right, I got to get serious now. This is the last two matches. All right, I know I'm excited, but at the same time, it's time to get real, okay? First off, the last game, I'm pissed. I'm not going to lie. I'm mad, right? And the reason why I'm so pissed off is because of IHC, right? I feel like I've just got cheated. I mean, honestly, it was like watching Mission Impossible, you know? You know, stealing the item that they needed, running, breaking through glass, jumping over this crazy stuff, explosions, everything, and then just like tripping over a banana and going out. Like, honestly, like, how hey, could that hey, happen? You put that some respect on Rob's name. He is no Tell banana. Him. He's okay. a banana. He's not He's a banana. A banana. He banana with a shotgun. decimated S2G and IHC in the final moments. So, I mean, you got to put some respect to that. Aaron, what place again? Let me look at the scoreboard. Or who? Hey, hey, High, don't worry about, about it. 10th place? 10th place? Don't worry about it. High don't fives? Worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. High five. Okay, yeah. You know yeah, what? They're in 10th place. Honestly, great job to that player. It was great a job. great play. It was, it was a, a great, great, great play by him. Uh, it was. It was, right? Okay, I'll give him the props. But what IHC did what could have been legendary. It could have been legendary. But yeah, still, yeah. you know what? I mean, it hurts because, I mean, if Ugh. they would have finished that off, they would, without a doubt, be in a chance to, like, to go into first place. But that hurts. We need to see some performances like that in the last two matches. Is that possible, though? Is that possible, Seven, considering everything that's at stake and how many teams desperately need these points? I, I feel like that's why I'm mentioning, Sute, this scenario yeah. where these teams have to make sure that Reject gets eliminated very, very early. I mean, in, in the past three matches, that is now three, if I'm not mistaken, three top twos for Reject? That is absolutely ridiculous Wow! for this team to be able to be so consistent. We were maybe giving them a little bit of a, a, a, criticizing them earlier in the previous Aaron Guild. Not the one that just happened, but the one before that because they weren't as aggressive. But second place, three eliminations, they're doing exactly what they need to do. They're going to continue to do this and we can see them. We can see the way that they're currently playing. They're not going to be pushing anything that they have to push. They're going to make sure that they position themselves in the best way possible to get just enough points to keep them in that first place. And right now it's working out wonders. And that's why, Sute, I feel like some of these teams, I see if you are feeling so hot, they're going to have to possibly go for the hot drop or that rotation surprise. They have to. Yeah, they yeah. have to just stop reject straight up. Be it hot drop, be it camp of rotation. But it's so difficult on Miramar to camp rotations, yep. right? Because the plane path, the circle, it changes things up so much. So hot drop may be the way to go. And if anyone's going to do it, I think it's got to be IHC. Because they're yep. low enough that they need every point possible. So they got to start with the points onto the rejects team and win the match right after alpha seven they don't necessarily have to hot drop because they have just enough points where yep. they could hope someone yeah. else hot drops reject and then they play their own game right but i think the team that's most got to do it is ihc and hey they could fight man ihc oh, yeah. if anyone's gonna be rejects in a straight hot drop it's gotta be ihc I see 37 points away, if I'm not mistaken, yep. from that first place. So that's why we're starting to put them in this position. And just to kind of go off on what you were saying there for Alpha 7, they are currently 25 points away from that first place. Mm -hmm. So maybe not a hot job, but I'm pretty sure a lot of these top teams are going to be keeping track even more of that elimination feed. If they see rejects anywhere close by, they hear that fight, I wouldn't Ooh. be surprised if they're going to make that switch and try to just go and hunt them down. Yep. They need to just run straight towards them. Non-stop, just like we saw in the last match, right? Just non-stop carnage as we get into the first Miramar of the day. Second to last match. This is where it all comes down to. Oh, man. This is going to be one insane match right here, Jukes. I mean, the last match is going to be the most insane, but I think with the point lead Rejects has, it, it's, it's got to start now. The insanity has to start now and get even crazier in the last game for a chance at any of the teams to take away that number one spot from the Rejects team. And Rejects, they're dropping out the plane now. And I, if, if I can remember correctly, Rejects land Picado. Yeah, that's, that's their, so smart. That's well, their I mean, drop spot. But that means I'm gonna anyone say this. can drop on them right now. But I don't see anyone dropping on them. 
I mean, honestly, if I'm Team Reject, I'm not dropping in the same location at this point. Like, I know that they kind of want to. I know that's their thought process. But, I mean, I would expect a hot drop. And if we don't see somebody else drop Picado, I am going to get very, very... I'm going to start shaking my head because... Oh, uh, yeah, no one's doing it. Wow, I can't believe it. I really can't. I mean, at this point, I don't see where else your head is at. I mean, if you're IHC, 37-point difference. Yeah, I know that you could have had a 37-point game in the last one right with how good you were doing but you, you didn't get it done you didn't get it done and regardless if you had a 37 point in the last one team reject was in second place right so you got to shut them down they have to go out with the goose egg if you want to even have a chance at a miracle first place run ihc and uh yeah i mean they're gonna stick with the tried and true here maybe they're gonna go for a vehicle rotation i don't know but like yeah. seven was mentioning the second R an R R C you know a reject player gets knocked and thirsted, and they realize it's them. The whole lobby's got to come after him. Yeah, and also if you can't even get up to the top three, I think you still go and try to eliminate rejects just to keep things interesting, right? I know mm. if I was a competitor and I was like down and out pretty much, I would want to keep things interesting. You know, it, it's entertainment still, even if yeah. you're not a spectator. Take out rejects, keep things interesting going into the last match. We'll see if that happens. The zone is up on your screen to the northeast. No one really will be able to get into that zone for free besides Nova because that is their drop spot location. Minas, Zernralis, everyone else will have to end up rotating in. And, oh, I mean, rejects has a great spot to start off in this zone. As soon as they're done looting, they pretty much have prime pickings for center zone too. Yes, they do now. You know, like, like we mentioned, you know, I, did, I know I may have called, may or may not have called Rob's a banana, okay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's definitely not no banana. That's true. I mean, and one of the big things is that, you know, hi Fives is a team that got this position by doing something different, right? They hot dropped Team Falcons, took them out, and were able to get a golden ticket to the finals from the qualifiers, right? Yeah. Now, the great thing is, though, like a player like Rob's, even though, like, yeah, hi Fives are in 10th place, there's no chance we're going to see them in the top three, right? It, it, the fact that we're seeing some star players come out, we have seen time and time again, Zoo, right? During different tournaments, players like Robs get taken to a different team, not just a different team, but sometimes a different region, yeah. right? These star players get picked up. So I do like the fact that we're seeing teams and players that, you know, that don't have a mathematical chance of winning this um, still try to put it all out on the playing field because honestly, this is how you pat your resume. And this is really the main way to do it, right? You got so many eyes on you. You got to perform all the way up until the last second. Yeah, definitely. Definitely so. And I mean, IHC, I feel like if any team can do it, it's IHC. I feel like Alpha 7, they're, they're just cracking under the pressure again, man. They have been in this spot so many times. Second place. Second place. Again and again oh, and again. It hurts. And I think they are just, I, I mean, we saw them last match, you know, one of their members got knocked and thirsted, and they instantly turned tail and ran away. And strategically, yes, that's sound, but I just feel like the way they did it, how instant that turnaround was, it was like, I feel like mentally, they, they just don't have the right mindset. But it's hey, who 20. knows? Two it's games hard. left, two games left, rejects. Go out early, you get a decent game, it is all but still doable. Yeah, I mean, it's so difficult. Honestly, like I said, I don't envy any of the players from Alpha 7 right now. They've had so much so much success in this game. There's just so much pressure on them. I mean, could you imagine? A anybody right now watching, put yourself in Alpha 7's shoes, okay? Yeah, like 7 said, time and time again, you've come up just short, right? A lot of people said that you choked in PMGC. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're at your hometown where everybody is expecting you to win first place, not second, not third, first, you know? Yep. You were behind a crazy amount of points going into the last two matches of the day. I mean, the pressure is, it's ridiculous, you know, to say the least. More than anybody else in this lobby, without a doubt. So, I mean, they have everything going against them, you know? And it's so tough that if they want to become the champions, they have to overcome it. Right? They have to settle their they have to settle their minds, settle their voices, not get frustrated with each other, make those clear call outs and play the game that they have. But I, but we're all human at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? 
These yeah. players are playing with gyroscope. You know, any nervousness, those hands are going to shake just a little bit, and you're missing your shot, and it's all over. All I got to say is rejects, man. They have been just, playing wow. so well. Like, sure, you could say the circles towards the end kind of worked out in their favor and blessed them, but the thing is, rejects, when you called it out, that sneaky rotation, rejects have constantly rotated in a way where they keep their options open, right? If they mm -hmm. have to crash into, you know, the center of the zone where Alpha 7 is, they'll do it when the circle gives them only that option. But otherwise, rejects, they're always playing for the long game. They always keep their options open with their rotations, and that is what the most high-level skilled teams do, and that is why rejects are able to capitalize on these circles time and time again. So we'll see what they can do this match. Right now, zone slowly closing in. A lot of teams rotating in off-center locations because the center of the zone is pretty much taken up right now vampire firing off some shots onto falcons vampire another team that needs that huge pop-off performance this game and the next if they want to have a chance at first place yeah i mean that's a 43 point difference i mean they need to have what ihc and, yeah. did and win back to back and games. rejects and, and reject has to go out i mean yeah it's just yeah. you can just see the look on it's their faces lot. like yeah i mean they're they're just they're not happy, that's for sure. But I mean, that's what happens. It's just, it's so tough. Cause you know what, Seven? We've we've talked. Or sorry, Zoo. We talked about this before, right? We talked about how much when the pressure gets crazy, sometimes you just revert to what you're used to, what you're most comfortable with, right? Yeah. We see some teams like when they, the nerves start cracking, they start going passive, right? Or they start playing safe. They start doing stuff. I think that's the reason why we see Team Reject at the top right now. Because when the going gets tough, they're so used to just pure aggression. You know what I'm saying? So when the yeah. time comes where it's like, yeah, we got to hit a 1v2, 1v3, they're not even thinking about that. They're just doing what they, where they go on autopilot. And their autopilot is just CQC in, insanity. And, and, yeah. and they win those fights. It's just so crazy to watch. New circle. It does come up. It goes down south. Favoring pretty much rejects. And I, oh, I, I mean, wow. I'm saying favoring lightly because they're just in the circle pretty much but yes. with how good rejects are you give them an inch they take a mile and that could be what's happening now and well i mean as for alpha seven they got to fight their way in like they always have same with ihc we'll see where the circle ends up we'll see how many fights alpha seven could win boom uh -oh. it's gonna take that fight right now with the rejects team and the first knock goes over to rejects rejects finds the opening sara looking for a second and duelo does get finished though so this will be a scrappy fight boom in third place they need to win this one they need to win it clean they get sara they're gonna be able to get the revive too rejects is this it for them? Can they finally be slowed down? Uh-oh. Flyboy gets knocked, though. There's back and forth knocks. It's a 2v2 scenario at this point. And you can see Regioso looking to try to at least get a thirst. Can he be able to secure a point? Boom. Knowing who they're going against. They're in third place. This is the fight of the tournament right here. They have to win it. Regioso does get the confirmation here. Boom's not going to be able to get the res. So it is going to be a 2v2 between Reject and Boom. Regardless... Reject is going to be hamstringed, but four eliminations with their lead could be enough. So Boom cannot afford to go out here. If they want to win first place, they have to win this fight. Yeah, they have to win it quick. Zebra Masters is here, though, to third party. And uh -oh. I mean, there, there's no way Rejects as a two-man wins this fight and survives Zebra Master, right? Surely Rejects go out now, but even then, two points. They already got two points, and that's a lot given how much of a point gap they have. So two points is good for Rejects, and they could still get more. They could even somehow turn this around and take out Zebra Masters. This is not the first time they've been third party, and they come out on top. And you know Zebra Masters looking to make a name for themselves, trying to take out the top squads in the lobby right towards the end. Here they go on the push, looking to that third party. Boom, though, shutting down Regioso is going to be huge. They try to go for the combination. Demine not letting it out, going out without a fight. He takes them out. The 1v2, he secures some placement points. But down goes Reject, and boom, the crowd goes nuts because the door is open for Alpha 7. But how big is that door opened up? It's opened up like a millimeter. 
I'm going to say this now. Calm down, Alpha 7 crowd. Calm down. Alpha 7 still has a long way to go. They still need a great game here. And Alpha 7 coming in from the east side. Well, I mean, if they third party these two teams here, there's a chance. There's a way. Next circle is about to pop out too. We'll see where this goes. S2G on the west. Same with the IHC. It is a messy zone, Juice. Alpha and 7. It, yeah, yeah. It shifts to the east. It does give it over to Alpha 7 just a little bit. Alpha 7 needs to get this opening, which they have, and take out Vampire. They heard the shots. They heard the shots from that fight earlier on. They knew the teams that were going against each other. So they were looking to push to clean things up. Zebra Master already getting it done, though. So Alpha 7 are going to be able to get another point on the board, which is critical. You're right. Job's not done yet, but that door being open is huge. There was two different things that needed to happen for Alpha 7 to win this tournament. One, reject going out. Two, Alpha 7 having a crazy performance. One of those is now done. Right? So now it's all on Alpha 7's shoulders to just finish that second part. And I will tell you, Zute, it's going to be a lot easier considering you got teams like Reject and Boom already out. Yeah, it is going to be a lot easier, but it is still a tall yeah, task. Yeah, you're right for alpha 7 <laughs> like like I, like it, easier, it's easier like, but still hard <laughs> yeah. yeah easier but still hard like they still got to win a game uh, of PUBG Mobile which is still extremely hard high is coming in here uninvited gets taken out vampire forced to go back just a little bit and i think alpha 7's got the info now that this is not just the one team this is at least two teams here so i think that is forcing alpha 7 to slow down just a little bit mm, and that's so hard this is where it gets tough because you know alpha 7 can start getting in their heads so easily here because they know that the door's open and they have to win this game right so maybe certain times where they would normally get aggressive they know they cannot go out under any circumstance and that could make them second guess themselves a little bit that is a curse that happens plenty of times at this level so alpha 7 are forced to really make the right decisions no matter what and that little hesitation at this level is all it takes for teams especially at the bottom who have nothing to lose right they're not hesitating at all they could take advantage of it and we could see a team on that bottom of the leaderboard just like we've seen so many times take out alpha 7 i'm talking about d plus kia just a few matches ago yeah you're absolutely right Things are going to slow down for just a tad bit here as the next circle is about to shift. I see the mini-map. Everyone's pretty much in zone and just waiting. So while we have this time, Jukes, I just want to say, man, shout-outs to the Rejects team for how far they have come. And, True. Uh, you know, most Jukes, improved by far. Most improved by far, for sure. And, and you know, Jukes, how you know back in the days... Uh, Japan was calling me to maybe coach or even play for them. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. you were going to go there for a while. I think I'm going to hit them back up. I think I'm going to jump hey! on the Japan train. <laughs> like, Japan, here I come. I am repping Japan now. But in all seriousness, man, with how good rejects are doing, I'm curious as to what they're doing. Like, way more curious in the PMJL, their Japan League. So, hey, Jukes, I might just start viewer partying that, you know? Like, Let's I used go. to watch China all the time because they were number one. But, hey, if Rejects get it done here, they are the new number one region. And that new circle has popped. We are going north. Re uh, Alpha 7, they're forced to wrap around to the northwest now. They're going to be fighting with the Death Wolves very soon. Here they go. This is going to be a huge one. I really want to see this rotation because Alpha 7 have to make it safely. They cannot afford to go down to a team like Death Wolves in this scenario. If they're able to secure that junkyard position, they'll have the whole north completely clear. But like I said, they're going to have to get past that team in the first place. Meanwhile, some other squads that are still in the running here. I'm talking about S2G, IHC, maybe even Vampire. You know, uh, the, they could definitely make something happen here. They were very fortunate that they didn't have the hot drop and well, look at this you can see right now here they go vampire putting in the work on the regnum car and here comes down a vehicle swept said i didn't like that start shooting some shot at it just in case to make sure there's not a person in there meanwhile silas is already on the run and man this is just worst case scenario for regnum Karya. a great start to the tournament but just a really rough finish yeah regnum Karya being torn to bits once again and even if you somehow weasel your way into a chicken dinner like they did last match it is not enough they need elims upon elims upon elims and the chicken dinner here alpha seven play zone hold on 
That should be you a gotta revive. Be kidding me. I mean, the blue zone isn't doing that much damage. I think he just took a lot of damage from Death Wolves rotating in. Can he get revived? Wait, I don't think he can. He's way back in the oh, outside. Alpha Oculus 7 <laughs> loses a player. I thought they would take the fight with Death Wolves and control that eastern side. But instead, they're just taking the long way around, and that's going to cost them a player. It is, and that's a tough one there. So they decided to take the player sacrifice because they know that they couldn't go down, so they didn't want to risk the fight. And that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Is I seriously think if this was the start of the tournament, they would have pushed Death Wolves. They would have pushed yeah. Death Wolves. Yeah, 100%. But with everything that they have going on right now and all that pressure, they're reverting to safety, Zute. And I'm telling you, this little decision here could mean their end. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like that last match when they lost that one player and they instantly turned tail and ran. Strategically, it made sense, but the way they did it, it just shows where their mental is at. And I said, I don't think their mental is in the right place. And with that kind of wraparound rotation, losing a player, it's not good. I'm telling you, Alpha 7 in the end game are not showing that they have that killer instinct that we saw like from IHC the other game, right? Or IHC just pushed everything in sight. The second they saw an opportunity, they went straight away and got it. S2G putting up some points against Nova. Nova, long out of this one already, but you know what? A nice name oh. there. Does get a couple players. That's long. Looking to get another one here. If he gets another knock, this will be huge. Yeah, S2G. Point standing wise, they also have a chance, but I don't think S2G has that killer mentality. For me, it's really just Alpha 7 or IHC. But with four Elim points, S2G, I mean, if they're forced into the fights, they could get it done. But I think they need to force themselves into some more fights. Next zone pops up. They get the edge of zone, which is good for them. New circle forces Alpha 7 to move. And IHC, meanwhile, has four players up. They're out of the zone. I think they're looking at the Falcons position next. Well, let's see what happens. You know, Alpha 7 are going to have to take on the Death Wolves here eventually uh, to get into this next circle. And if they're able to do it quicker than later, they're going to be okay. But they got to watch out because here comes IHC. IHC is going to be coming on the backside looking to do a wraparound here. And Alpha 7 do not have the high ground. They're going to have to be very careful because IHC is way too close for comfort. Yeah. IHC not going to go for the Falcons like you mentioned. They're going to wrap all the way to the east. Blue Zone's closing in. That doesn't give a lot of time for IHC, Alpha 7, or the Death Wolves here to finish out a fight before being forced to rotate in. And D Plus has already kind of secured that edge spot right outside the Vampire's position. This could be bad for all three teams I mentioned. It's totally possible. Next, Ruya go down. That's the seventh place team. And uh, that's going to be a brutal loss for them. You can see the frustration on the players' faces. They know it's over after that performance right there. So. Ugh, we'll see what happens in the last match coming up soon. But, man, this is a huge one. You can see the frustration yeah. all over these players' faces. Yep. That is, uh, that's what it comes down to here. I mean, so much is at stake. So much is on the line. And you can see everybody's just giving it all they got. Yeah, we keep talking about first place. But, honestly, third place is really close. 30 grand. Yep. For all of those teams. And, yeah, that is a big pay jump so even if they can't get first everyone is still so close to third and boom went out early too right so mm -hmm. that i mean that frustration you see on screen here that's comes a alpha sign seven. of dollar signs going away but yeah here comes that fight alpha seven versus ihc jukes so huge here they go rebel up on the tie high ground needs to get an initial knock he just gets some nice shots though oh it's actually top from team falcons helping out alpha seven with a couple of knocks from that third party but rebel getting knocked is brutal carrillo it's really up to him to get a huge knock here. Revel is finished. So it is down to two players left of Alpha 7. And you know, Team Falcons, they got nothing to lose here. They can push this fight. That knock on the Rogue is going to finish out IHC, though. Some good elimination points. But you can see the crowd. They're cheering it up. But they are so nervous here. Seeing two monsters from Alpha 7 getting knocked early. Yeah, man. Alpha 7 down to two. It's not enough, Jukes. It not is enough. not enough. It's not enough. It, I mean, there's still one more game after this, sure. But it is just not enough. And I'm disappointed in IHC. I thought they were going to take that fight to Falcons. But instead, they put themselves in a worse position. Getting third party. So IHC, maybe a little bit lapsed in judgment. Maybe Falcons position is just too tough to crack open with four. But either way, IHC is out. Alpha 7 is still alive with two. 
They need every singular little point they could get, because if they go out now, they close the gap with rejects by one, and that is it. Oh boy, what is going to happen here? As you can see, the Falcons are starting to creep up. Like I mentioned, they don't have anything to lose here in this scenario. They know for a fact it's Alpha 7. They know Alpha 7 is hurting. They're trying to hunt those leaderboards. And if Team Falcon wants a chance at trying to even get some taste of this top three, they want to take out the top dogs here and now. So here they go. They're starting to apply that pressure. Carrillo, the legend himself. We've seen this man pull off miracles. He's going to have to do it again if he wants to keep his team alive. Yeah. New circle being gate kept by Falcons too. Falcons have priority over that new spot. Alpha 7 needs to get it done somehow some way d plus is going to be looking to push in here vampire meanwhile by the way jukes have racked up seven elam points uh oh so if they S2G2. pull off an ihc if they pull off an ihc but a chicken on top of that not just the elams but a chicken on top of that vampire could have a chance at number one s2g have four eliminations as well there goes Alpha 7 and look at the frustration. You can see them just that they're devastated right now. This is not good. It's going to come down to the final game from them. You know, you see some condolences here just trying to show their players some love. But oh yeah. boy, the door's now open for S2G and Vampire. They should have just fought Death Wolves with 4. Win that yep. fight and it's not easy. It's not easy by any means, but when they had 4 players, Fight Death Wolves and then take this position that Death Wolves is in with four and then have a bang of a game, right? From this position, a bunch of Elims, maybe top three, and then they're good. But instead, I think the pressure is getting to them. They lose that one player and then ultimately they close the gap by just one point, Jukes. Oh, that's tough. That is just, that hurts so bad. I mean... This is what I was talking about is, you know, you second guess yourself and one little wrong decision, it means it's over. And, you know, I mean, it's not over yet with considering there's one game left, but they are not in a good spot by any means. They're going to have to pull off the comeback of a lifetime in the last match of the day as we're watching. So team, there's a lot of teams at the bottom of the leaderboard still alive here, Zoo. Yeah. And uh, this is what happens, right? When there's nothing else left to lose, we start seeing those teams that were nervous at first just start playing their own game yeah and if s2g right now with four players up gets a decent game right here they're they're taking second place they're gonna be the ones looking to take uh -oh. first place and s2g is the previous champion so s2g if they ramp up their aggression a little bit here pick up a elims get the chicken it could be done falcons fighting with vampires vampires with their backs against the wall with only two players up eight elims I don't know if this is enough players, but the Elims are looking good. They need more. Hey, you know what? I'll tell you what. I mean, don't even count out Vampire as well. I mean, yeah, nine eliminations is, is solid. If they're able to win this game and take out the lobby, they're in a position to get second place as well. So we'll see what happens here as Vampire know what's at stake. And they're not done yet. Team Falcon, mathematically out of the running at this point. Well, actually, maybe not. 93 points, six eliminations. Ain't too bad, but yeah, they're gonna have to take out everybody if they want to stand a chance. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny that, you know, every team we look at, uh, maybe, right? But we're saying that because we've seen it done. We've seen chicken That's dinners true. with 15, 16 Elam. So it is very, very possible. And Falcons get the chicken dinner here with a bunch of Elams. They are right up there in that top three. And there well, we go. They're starting it off. They're up to eight. Three players up. New circle. They get the zone too. So they are not done yet. Now we've officially reached top seven. So now placement points are going to be accumulated by the teams that go out. And the only two teams that really stand a chance here is S2G and Falcons. And S2G is the main one here. But they are getting oh, shot no. up by the Falcons. Oh, that is a huge loss. And Royals of War, Rivas, looking to clear him up. See you later. Going to try to be able to get one of the finishes. Can he do so? Nope, he can't. He's going to have to win another 1v1. He gets it. He's going to get the thirst. No, he can't. So, man, see you later. He's taking a whole squad by himself. And he can't do it. And look at that. Oh, the frustration. Because he wanted to do that miracle run. And all the top teams are gone. Somehow, Team Falcons are still alive. Ten eliminations. They got to win this. 
They have to win this. Let's see what happens. It's action with the nade. Oh, actually, it was a smoke grenade. Ooh, gets knocked. That's tough. Tough situation here. Is top. Trying to throw that smoke as well. Throwing some pre-fire out. And it's D plus Kia. Why is it always D plus Kia? Taking out some teams right when they need to. Oh, oh an absolute brutal loss there. All the top teams are out of here. We're going to watch the bottom squads now. Fight it out. Trying to get a chicken dinner here in the PMGO. Smoke Gaming, Rolls of War. Just having their last little rally cry. Miyaki. Miyaki is one of those big names, I think. Here. He really stood out in this tournament. He had some shiny moments for sure. Unfortunately, him and the rest of the team just wasn't able to really put up points together. Yeah, it, uh, Miyaki by himself, though. The rest of the team way back. They need to make a decision. Help him out or just eject out of there. Both teams with the zone, kind of. Definitely favoring. Oh, wait, no, that is not his team. That is D plus Kia. Sorry, the blue color caught me off guard for a second. So there we go. It is down to the 4v4. And like you said, why is it always D plus Kia? Well, slow and steady uh, doesn't win the race, but slow and steady gets you into the late game sometimes when people least expect it. So D plus Kia versus Royals of War in the 4v4. Slow and steady eliminates the chase. That's what it does. You know what I'm saying? The chase for first place. Uh, D plus Kia. Just out here, just crushing dreams. Crushing dreams of the PMGO. And uh, they're going to be battling it out with Rules of War. Looking to see just who's going to end up getting a, a chicken dinner under their belt here. And they're saying, you can see the prediction up there. Pretty much almost a 50-50 either way. It's starting to favor D plus Kia with their position, rightfully so. As Rivas all the way in the back there. Blue Zone's going to start pushing him out. Not looking good. Jumps into safety for now. And uh, we're going to see who ends up winning this. But you know what, Zute? It's going to come down to the last match here. The last, last game. Yep. It is just... Oh, it's going to be brutal. Yeah, the last match of the day. I mean, the point gap is still pretty big. Reject just can't mess up. And I think they pretty much have it. But, man, what a three-day series so far, Jukes. And it's not over, not just yet. And we still got this 4v4 to go on. I thought D plus had it in the bag. I don't know how Royals of War managed to get out with all four up, but D plus Kia still has the advantage here. They have all of the terrain and Royals of War working with just the edge of that zone. Is there any more nades left for D plus Kia? Surely they got to throw it now. Yeah, if they had it, they'd throw it, I think. You saw Molotov come out there, but that's about it. We're going to see who wins this game. As all, oh, look at that. Aragod tried to pull off a sneaky little off angle. No, sir. Denied. Meanwhile, Rose of War, yeah, now finally started to throw out the util. I'm surprised they didn't throw it out a little bit earlier. But trying to go out for the fight. The Mexicanos trying to get their chicken dinner here. Uh oh, the toes getting shot up, though. It's down to the final player as D plus Kia win a chicken dinner here in the PMGO. Oh, yeah. boy. One more game left. Who is going to win this thing? Team Reject looking really good right now, Zute. Yeah, Team Rejects are... You can almost say Team Rejects are chilling. Like, I, I mean, seeing uh, us as spectators, right? Seeing how Alpha 7 is playing and reacting to things, they don't have what it takes. Not in the last game. They don't even if they get the the problem is if they get circle blessed right, that means they're not going to be able to get too many uh, eliminations either. And if they get circle blessed, seeing how they're playing right now, I feel like they're going to be way too passive. They're not going to be risky and you know leave the zone a little bit to look for point uh -huh. opportunities, which is what they're going to need to do to gap that point. Uh, it, it's well, I don't think it's possible, Summer. Boys, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? With seven? a performance like that, it is gonna end up coming down to the last game, and Alpha Seven just makes their life a lot harder. And for the other teams, I mean, we'll have to wait and see what the overall actually ends up looking like. How yeah. big is now that gap that Reject has been able to build up on the other teams? And for some of these teams, something that you've been mentioning throughout all the past three days, Hot Jukes, has been that price pool. Remember, after fourth place. That prize pool is pretty much it's only separated from fifth all the way down to 16 by three thousand dollars. 
So it's, you do want to end up being in the top three. And for Alpha 7, then you start posing the question, how important is $50,000 for you? Or how important is that first place for you? Which one would you rather end up getting at the end of the day? And the thing is, usually we would end up picking money every single time. But the thing is that they are currently in Brazil. They have their fans in front of them. And I will be shocked if we don't get some kind of reaction here from Alpha 7. If they don't try to take their destiny into their own hands in this last match. As Reject, you said it perfectly, Sute. They're going to continue doing what they're doing. Yeah, this wasn't a great match for them. But with the gap, they can afford this kind of matches. And the crazy part is that they still got points, Sute. Yep, they still got points. They got one less point than Alpha 7. Even though they went out like what a good solid 15-10 minutes earlier. And that's what hurts me the most, Hot Juke, seeing what Alpha 7 did, right? You see Rejects go out <sighs> so early, and you fizzle out, right? Mm -hmm. Not only do you fizzle out, you just get one more point than them, but you're alive in the game for like 15 minutes longer. It's just, oh man. It's demoralizing, for sure. I mean, it, it hurts to watch. Because, you know, I, I could just tell, you know, I know this this team so well. Seven, you know this squad. You're the number one Alpha 7 fanboy, right? Can you <laughs> honestly say, can you look me in the eye and tell me that Alpha 7 is playing the game that they normally play here in the final matches of the day so far? They're not. They're, they're definitely not. I mean, they're starting to doubt things, too. The, the crazy thing is that they haven't even had any favorable circles going their way. That's something that they saw a lot of in the first day and that's possibly why we ended up seeing so many chicken dinners out of them but besides that whenever they didn't have those favorable circles we didn't really see them get displacement points we didn't we would know that they could put up the eliminations but it came down to displacement points it came down to that consistency alpha seven right now at this point starting to doubt themselves you can see there dk i mean good job to dk being able to get this chicken dinner and i'm i'm expecting the teams that are at the end they're probably going to be looking to make a highlight here. Remember what happened in qualifier finals. Remember what happened in prelims as well. Some of these teams are looking to spoil some of these other teams from <laughs> getting certain situations, from getting certain spots. As we're going to be looking at the team performance, just reject, continuing to do what they've been doing all along, tracking along. And then you can see Alpha 7 and STG. STG, yeah, STG had an amazing jump up. But ever since then, they've just been staying a little bit stagnant. They're still going up in regards to points, but it's not of the likes of what Reject has been able to do. So for the other teams, Hot Jukes, that are currently in that fifth place, that are currently in that fourth place, that might want to get a little bit higher. Maybe first place is too out of hand at the moment going into the last match. But you could secure yourself a bit more of that prize pool money how are they gonna be reacting going into this last match oh man there's this is crazy i mean there's so you know me i'm the i'm the king of hypotheticals and there's a lot of hypotheticals here going into this <laughs> last match you know you got you know s2g yeah for sure s2g is 30 points away they have to know it's just not gonna happen right first place is too far but you know what second place pretty easy you know what i'm saying not not a big gap at all it's only six six points yeah Six points difference from Alpha 7. So it's going to be pretty insane. I mean, I think all those teams, you know, sixth place, seventh place. I mean, they may want to hunt down Alpha 7 early to try and yep. get that second place, you know. And meanwhile, oh. Alpha 7's got to hunt down Reject. It, it's just, it, it can go either way at this point. But it's all about who's going to take their destiny into their own hands. They can't just let Team Reject do what they did last time and hope they go out early. And that's why these teams usually don't want to have such a big gap going into the last match and look at this gap right here 24 Ooh. points reject is going to be able to chill and just keep in mind the reason why we're starting to mention hot drops the reason why we're starting to mention this team's wanting to fight early on is because earlier we got a chance to see some of the most points that we have gotten just to see at the pmgo and it was ic with 22 eliminations if i'm not mistaken they ended up with a total of 20 six points or 24 points so that would not even be good enough if alpha seven if some of the other teams are able to improve on that performance it wouldn't be good enough they need to make sure that reject gets zero points and reject has just been so good to and making sure they clutch up at least some points every single match
Yeah, Rejax is just one step ahead of everybody out here. And I think to change up the narrative a little bit, it, it, it comes down to that money prize pool now, right? I think yep. first place is so far ahead that Alpha 7 now puts the target on their backs because they're pretty close to dropping out of that top three. Same mm -hmm. with the third place team themselves. I mean, we saw the rankings just now, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, so close to break into that top three. And we've said it over and over again, fourth and downwards is pretty much the same prize money. There's a big jump in third, a bigger jump in second, and that's the more feasible potentials for all of these teams middling around fifth, sixth, and onwards. What's crazy, too, I'm looking at Reject's results here for a second, and Reject, for the last eight matches, mm -hmm. they've been able to get six top five. And out of those six top five, four have been in second place. I've wow. been asking for consistency for the longest time, and I've been asking for consistency since we started this PMGO, and they have been giving it to me. They have been excelling at consistency, too, not only with the placement points, being able to back it up with eliminations too. So far, honestly, I don't see anybody contending on reject. And that's why I was kind of posting that question to Sute in regards to the price pool. How much is that going to come into play? And which teams are going to be looking to maybe move out of that price pool? Or still trying to just, you know, send this statement here in the first PMGO ever. Are they going to want to become villains? We have seen that happen in PMGC when S2G decided to stop Alpha 7 from getting higher placement, from being higher yeah. in their own home country. What's going to happen here? Could S2G decide to put on the evil hat on and be like, Alpha 7, we're at your house. Remember what happened at PMGC? Let's see if we can make that happen again. Oof. Man, you know what? I talked to Seven's dad, the accountant. I had him crunch the numbers. I asked him very nicely, and he said, the only chance that Reject lose this is about a 5% chance, right? So it's going to be up to Alpha 7 to try and make a miracle happen here if they want to win it at home. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But the way the real me 12 Pro Plus elevates your photography experience with 120 times super zoom and performance in games. How to be a portrait master. I've been giving you the worst Now you wanna stay the night Pretty how you wear a car for me Why forgetting how to talk Nah, no, I don't like no humble beats Just go and slice it up Now it's time to marry
Welcome back to the PMGO Brazil 2024 on the final day, the final match coming up. We've been trying to do some what ifs. And you know what? I decided to dig in a little bit of some numbers here, boys. So Alpha 7 right now, 24 points away. We know how consistency reject has been this whole tournament. By the way, on all the 17 matches that we have played, reject has only had one match when they have scored zero points. So they've been able to secure a point every single time. Now for Alpha 7, the highest scoring point game for them was 22 points when they were able to get those 12 eliminations and on top of that, get a chicken dinner. So it's possible Alpha 7 will have to excel when it comes to being able to beat the max points that they've been able to get so far. But on top of that, Hajuks, they would have to stop the insane consistency that reject is currently showing us oh boy oh boy what are we gonna see here from these last two i agree seven with everything that you just said because i mean this is just getting absolutely crazy here as we look at the overall standings and oh boy are these standings looking mighty crazy i know seven you were talking about you know during the break right just how well alpha seven has done in the past and I think that with the math that you were giving me, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh -huh. they would have to have the best performance of their tournament right here if they want to make a miracle happen, right? Correct. Oh, that's crazy. It's crazy. Unreal. It's it's very, like, the, the chances you were saying earlier, what, 5% that, that Reject doesn't end up winning this, but there's still a chance. But then the thing, too, is we were bringing it up, and even Sute alluded to it even more, that prize pool for those top three like these teams are going to be switching their focus like s2g for sure knows that we are way too far away right some of the other teams as well vampire esports ihc they're going to be looking to get into the top three boom esports as well they're going to be looking to get into the top three because they want that prize pool money at this point since first place is just so unreachable that's why i'm trying to figure out what alpha sevens mentality is going to be going into this last match are they just looking to secure that second place or are they just going to be looking to actually make that full push for the final game, Haju? Well, we're about to find out for the final game of the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil. It's all down to this. Will Alpha 7 pull off that miracle run? And I'll say right now, 7, if I don't see them in Picado, they gave up. That is my opinion here. They have to the hot drop. There is no choice. I'm with you. You know the crowd is bringing the attitude. The crowd is bringing the noise. And this is what we need to see. We need to see where Alpha 7. We need to see if Reject is going to be landing in the same spot. They've been consistent. Reject, they're not willing to make any changes to what they've been doing. Everything's been working out so well. Because even when stuff doesn't go their way, they're always able to clutch up some points. And if I'm Reject, I, to make it even more secure... I just need to get a couple more points, and then you know it's over. It's true. It's true. I mean, it could be over already if we're being realistic. I mean, uh, uh, in order for Alpha 7 to make this happen, they're the only team that can at this point with the gap that they have, right? Yep. They they have to take out Team Reject and then have the best game they've had this entire tournament. Alpha 7 is going to Elpo, so it's over. It's over. I'm not even going to lie. That with this zone, everything... There's just no chance. I don't see it happening at this point unless an absolute miracle happens where uh, some random team takes out Reject 
first and then alpha seven just do what they want but i mean what are the odds of that it went from five percent to 0.5 percent at least in my eyes so you're telling me there's a slight chance <laughs> <laughs> there's a slight chance very, you know i yeah very, very slight slim. Man, uh, you said it yourself. You actually posed the question. I didn't really get to really talk about it, right? When you were saying, what does what Alpha 7 want more, right? First place or, you know, uh, some extra cash. Knowing these guys, they're going to they're, they're gonna take that placement all day long. They want that yep. belt. It's the only thing they've missed. They've made plenty of money playing PUBG Mobile, right? They yep. want that belt around them. They want that watch on their wrist. And they want to be able to put in that good old bio, right? PMGO Brazil champions and um, with the decision making that they're making here it's just it just doesn't seem that that is what they're hunting down so they're just gonna have to hope for the best at this point yeah and they have a big final boss and no I'm not talking about the rock I'm talking about reject because my goodness reject just has been looking so strong with the way that they have been performing i highlighted their consistency we've been able luckily to highlight some of their players too Regioso, he's been able to put up numbers he's showing he's finally Oof. getting his roses from all the performances that he has put in the past it has come down to this i love seeing that the crowd is still into it i love the brazilian crowd because they're always going to be passionate no matter what and as you mentioned it is going to be very very slim for alpha 7 to catch up on this but with the second place position right now We'll have to wait and see what could happen here. Uh, all of these two teams that are currently fighting for that first place are within this zone. Vampire Sports is going to be nearby too. S2G. If I'm, if you were in this position, Hot Jukes, and you were one of the players, well, where would your mind be? Honestly, it would, for me, it would be all over the place with everything going on. I wouldn't want to. Right I wouldn't even want to be the Alpha Seven IGL nor the Reject IGL. Oh, without a doubt. You know who I want to be? Regioso. And if I was him, I'd just look at the camera right now and just say, acknowledge me. You know? <laughs> acknowledge me. Because, I mean, man, dude, these guys, like you were talking about, just they uh, are the most improved team. I mean, these guys haven't even made it in the top eight. And now they're going to win this thing uh, from all intents and purposes. Unless we see Alpha 7, you know, stand up and put this in their own hands but with them not doing that hot drop the door is now open for you know team reject to just get a couple eliminations and that should do it so yeah i mean when it comes to alpha 7 if they were nervous before it's at an all-time high right now i can only imagine what their heart rate is like you know how their hands are shaking because you know that we we've seen it we've seen in just the past couple games their gameplay is not the same it isn't. Yep. There, you can just tell that they're second guessing themselves. They're not making the pushes that we saw at the beginning of the tournament and that marvelous day one that they had. I mean, it, it's just got to feel so brutal to be one of the players from Alpha 7 right now. It is, considering that is the first global event that is this early on into the season of PUBG Mobile Esports for them, too. We'll have to wait and see. By the way, Hi Fives, a team that's currently in 10th place, they're going to be looking to maintain that because of. 10 plays and below there is going to be a bit of a difference there when we are talking about the price pool and it's going to be about two thousand dollars so even though we're getting so focused there towards the top because honestly sometimes the top is the one that matters you just want to worry about the championship some of these teams are fighting for extra points some of these teams are fighting for the extra price pool and right now high five is currently sitting in 10th place they are going to be fighting none other than royals of war in 13th place and if royals of war can make high fives get eliminated here that's going to be massive as they are going to be able to eliminate one player and they're going to be looking for the other ones to try to pass high fives when it comes down to that overall and try to secure that extra cash yeah, it's going to be massive for them. It's going to be massive to pat their resumes as well, like we talked about a little bit earlier. But it's also going to be devastating for all these teams, right? Because yep. the teams at the top need every elimination that they can get. So the more that we see these teams at the bottom, right, just take each other out, the, the more the door closes on to kind of have that kind of crazy, you know, IHC style of run where you just have a crazy amount of eliminations in the last game of the day so i mean we're already noticing a, a major difference i mean in the last game seven when's the last time we saw nothing but bottom teams right at the end of the game yeah it's <laughs> we haven't seen that i think ever especially during this pmgo yep. 
Yeah, it's been nothing but, you know, uh, you just see nothing but the top teams have been point sponges, you know, 10-point elimination, chicken dinner, you know, so on and so forth. And then the last game, it was just nothing but the bottom squads just having it out. So that just goes to show you how much we say, right? You don't want to wait till the last game because the last games are always different from how the tournament started. And uh, that's why, yeah, I'm, I'm putting it down to 0.5% chance for Alpha 7 to pull off a miracle here. They're doing some splits. They're not pushing everybody in sight. It's just, um, it's not a good sign for me. I'm with you. I'm with you with this Alpha 7 right there from what I noticed. I think they're, at this point, they might have just place. realized, you know what? Yeah. We're not, first place might be a little bit too far. Let's try to secure this extra cash because we do have teams that are kind of close to us. S2G, I mean, S2G is only six points away from being able to tie them seven points from passing them and then on top of that you have boom you have vampire and ihc we saw what they were able to do earlier whenever they decided to just turn in on mission impossible push everything and make things that were impossible actually possible when they were taking those fights so we'll have to wait and see what alpha, if alpha 7 is even gonna end up in the top two wow anything I mean, can happen in the here top three. at the pmgo next three yeah, as well next three this was a team that i was actually expecting to be a little bit higher they were showing us very very promising performances but they never were never able to just clutch that win they was too far away from there never able to secure it and talking about teams that that might have not had good performances here i feel like we gotta take a second there to to kind of acknowledge nova esports performance in this global event because nice. it's the first time we get a chance to see them since pmgc 2022 and boy oh boy it looks like a completely different nova and somebody that's gonna be happy about this fight right now it's gonna be off of seven as boom is getting into a fight with zebra masters oh i don't know how happy yeah they're gonna be about this because boom is quite close to them on the leaderboards and they are starting to soak up some points they will be happy if zebra master is able to overcome this but you can see frenzy with that nade locked and loaded Oh, not able to get the finish, but he is going to go in with the gun. Oh, actually, he gets taken out. So he's going to get thirsted really quickly here. That is going to hamstring Boom quite a bit, considering I think they're down to their last player. Oh, they, they do get the, the res off. That I was hinting at Nova. I think Nova might end up trying to third party this fight as oh, they go on a full push. Order wanting to go inside that building. He's going to start shooting at everybody. Here we go. Nova, though. Dream Y6. Oh, my God. It's starting to backfire, and he's actually starting to look here. He, he, good here for boom i'm starting to mix up my words because i cannot believe this right now boom being able to clutch it up knocking two players from nova parable is going to be able to spot a player that's going to be an easy knock for him and he's going to be looking to confirm that into an elimination now order is going to be able to spot the last player there from boom Razy, and he's going to be looking to just fully eliminate boom out of this contention and boom trying to secure some extra points trying to see if they can possibly make it here within the top three is going to be so so tough with what nova just decided to do only one player left for boom this is just absolute worst case scenario this team could have stolen second place easily with where they're at on the leaderboards but yeah with that fight that is gonna just leave it pretty much in the dust here as we watch nova now soaking up those points and uh that dbs so strong dbs broken op you know just you just see it just you you can just all of a sudden have a 1v2 scenario you bust out that dbs and it'll even it up but look at the feed as carrillo does take out one of the players from death wolves we saw them fight earlier we saw them back away from each other and they're gonna be close by but you know what we're gonna be staying on this fight here because right now we haven't really continued to see anything and to be fair carrillo being able to actually confirm that and then on top of that something that you don't want to end up seeing if you're an alpha 7 fan is that reject is also getting into a fight they have a player knocking they're looking to continue to get some extra points here nova looking to make this push they haven't had the best close quarter fights possible and right now it's not looking like it's gonna continue to get any better as two of their players ends up getting knocked by zebra masters and it makes sense i mean look at this i mean this is i think this is nova's crippling feat here the lack of dbs's we see one player with it yep. right Paraboy, you know, runs up there with the UMP. It's just not, it's, it's over. It's not the meta anymore. With how broken the DBS is right now, it's just all about who's got the shotgun. Yeah, and with the performances that we're seeing out of some of these teams, I can't wait to see how possibly the rosters are going to be switching yeah. up. As somebody from Zebra Masters, none other than Tin is going to make the jump there. But now it's three players there of Nova, and they are just way too much as Paraboy is able to clutch up that elimination right there on your screen. And that is it for Zebra Masters. But Nova trying to make a push for top 10. Trying to at least get some more of that price pool and not be so low 
on the leaderboard that nobody expected them to be here. I was talking about it. Now we might actually get a chance to talk about it a little bit more. Actually, you know what? Hi-Fi says, hold on to that thought, Seven, because Vampire Ice Force is crossing by in front of us, and we want to push the action. We want to maintain this 10th place. We want to get those $14,000 in our pockets. Let's take a look here as the next zone does go on up. Monte Nuevo now is going to be in play. Alpha 7 is on top. They're actually in a really good position here. So uh, the problem is, is the reject, even though they're on that south eastern side, they already got an elimination point. And that is so, so difficult here for this team. So let's see which one is going to be able to make it happen. As, you know, the crowd is still going nuts non-stop just at the top of their lungs. I remember the interviews after day one. You know, all the Alpha 7 fans, you know, owners, voice gone from screaming so loud. So we'll have to see how it ends up happening here. Alpha 7, yeah, if they lose, it's going to be really tough. If they don't get at least second place, it's going to be absolutely embarrassing. So... Alpha 7 trying to pull out all the stops here, but Reject just seems to be matching no matter what they do. It is just always the same, similar amount of eliminations. And Reject already with that one point added. Eliminations one to their name. They're looking good. They're feeling good. And they're possibly going to be looking out to close it with some more consistency as Racy from Boom staying alive still. Somehow he's able to make it in here and survive the mayhem that happened earlier between Zebra Masters and Nova Esports. But guess what? Reject is going to be able to spot him. Reject's going to start getting shot, though. Royal Soul War. Okay, that's completely different. For a second, I saw an R there, and I was like, no, wait. Did he actually get knocked? But he didn't end up getting knocked. Reject should be able to recover from this, get back to full health, and I think they're going to be looking to maybe change their positioning as a lot of teams are looking at them. Here they go. Let's see. Next, Ruya. 104 total points. They need to have... Oh, oh, this is it. You can hear the crowd going nuts the second you heard Sara get knocked. And IHC is very, very close. So that's two knocks. That's huge. Boom is eliminated. They're done for. And with these two knocks, IHC has got to probably start coming down here. But I don't... Was it them that got those knocks? I think it was a different team. Nova. Yeah, it was Nova on the other side. So IHC pushing up onto Reject is gonna be absolutely brutal that molotov though helps stop their push for just a couple more seconds and reject now trying to save some points here trying to see if they can maybe connect on some players from ihc as nova was also taking shots on them and nova's gonna be coming up behind ihc is able to spot nova players but are they gonna end up switching their focus as they know that two more players are alive from reject reject maintaining themselves alive waiting a little bit longer seeing if nova's gonna make that push you can see reject divine very low hp oh. trying to survive longer and longer and there you go he finally gets caught with the grenade now it's down to duello duello's gonna be able to spot seal from ihc and he's gonna get that knock and he's gonna switch it to godless but oh, that's too much reject out in 13th place with one elimination you can see the crowd getting hyped ladies and gentlemen because if there was ever a chance for an alpha 7 push to be able to make it not only would they have to be their best games that they have played in the pmgo main event they would have to excel that some are nervous some want the action and all i can say is I cannot wait to see how the Alpha 7 players are going to be reacting to this. And I cannot wait to see how S2G is also going to be reacting to this. Because S2G is in third place, still alive. They can push for that second place. First place, a little bit too far away from their hands. But second place, it's definitely within reach. Oh, and the crowd goes wild because one of the huge factors in order to make the Alpha 7 dream run possible has now been achieved. Team Reject go out by just an absolute miracle here with only one elimination. Alpha 7 still need to have the performance of a lifetime. They saw the elimination feed. They know they're gone. But what is Alpha 7 going to do? What is the response? Do you chill back and just try to hold on to second place? Or do you start, you pick up your bootstraps, you tie them tight, stand up, and make it happen? Go for it. Go for it because IHC is going for it here. They're fighting Nova, and that is it for Nova. A finish to a very lackluster event for that team. I'm sure next time we'll see them at a global event. It could possibly be a completely different Nova as Paraboy not looking happy there. The GOAT of PUBG Mobile East for still one of the most, the player with the most trophies 
he's gotten everything he'll be looking to make a comeback and we still have more events coming for PUBG Mobile Esports later in the year but for right now we're still in the PMGO this is the last game and anything can happen there between the top two I mean Alpha 7, S2G, Royal Soul Warcraft only getting knocked by Next Ria. Next Ria looking to see if they can maybe move up the leaderboard too it's not gonna matter in regards to their price pool but maybe in regards to their egos a little bit well let's see if that's gonna be possible here as yeah we'll see nova in the future but paraboy's gonna have to bring a dbs with him that is for sure as we start taking a look at the final teams vampire starting to take out s2g that is huge because s2g was one of the squads that could possibly pass up alpha 7 that's why you definitely heard the crowd go wild there as S2G only have one player up left. And if S2G does end up going out, are we finally got st starting to see some more aggression of the Alpha 7 players as they know one less team to worry about taking over that second place spot. One less team to worry about not taking over that $50,000 prize pool that they will end up getting if they do end up in second place. We have to win and see Alpha 7 starting to move along, though, trying to get some angles, trying to see if they can maybe spot anybody. They only have one point. We're talking about if they want to see them a little bit passive. I want to continue to see Alpha 7 doing this. I want to continue to see them looking for angles, seeing if they could possibly spot anybody. But the problem is that D plus Gear right now is in just such a good position. And when we talk about teams that we're going to be able to hinder their performance, getting the points for some of those top teams to challenge towards the top, D plus Kia has been that spoiler role perfectly here today, Hachi. Oh. D plus Kia have just been brutal. I mean, this is so crazy, folks. This is stage number five. If this was a foot race, Alpha 7 was just watching rejects run towards the finish line, right? And all of a sudden, they just trip and fall. Everything that could go right for Alpha 7 has gone right. The weather is perfect. Every scenario is, is, is put in their place for them to win, but they still have to run faster than they've ever ran in this entire tournament. They have to have the best performance we've ever seen from Alpha 7 in the PMGO if they want to win this. So it is possible. Like I said, that door is open, but they still got to run through it. And they are playing this very, very yes. passive right now. You can see them very careful clearing out their backs that's smart but the problem is is that there's only 31 players remaining seven right yep. we're seeing teams go out left and right and the more eliminations that we see happen in the feed the less chance alpha seven is going to have in order to pass up rejects placement points are not going to be enough that's the thing we need to see a bit more of a switch of urgency here and i know they're currently trying to get those angles i know they're trying to spot maybe somebody over peaking maybe hopefully a third fight in the horizon d plus kia holding off that big mountain we need to start seeing more eliminations out of this team because you mentioned remaining is going to be 31. If you take off the players from Alpha 7, it is only going to end up being 27. So for this team, they need to figure out what they want to do here. I think they're still a little bit worried with Vampire Esports possibly still being alive. I don't know how well they're keeping track, honestly, with everything that's going on with this game here for Alpha 7. What's going to happen? Are, are they waiting for maybe vampires to get eliminated? They know S2G is gone. They know that Boomy is gone. So you don't really have to worry about them passing you on your for that top second place. We need to figure out for this team, Hajukes. Is what it going to be a what full push for that first place or a full push for just holding the second place? Well, they're holding second place right now. They need to get moving. Like, they, they every yep. single knock in the feed, they, they, what are they doing? Honestly, I am so shocked to see Alpha 7 just sit on their heels. I mean, the door is open for them. But with how many people are left, they're going to have to take out the majority of this lobby at this point. And it's going to be harder and harder and harder as it goes on. So, Alpha 7, I mean, you guys have it in you. We know that you can take out these teams, but you can't just sit. You got to go now. You got to go five minutes ago. Yeah. They, they definitely do, and I think right now, they they need to start looking towards their party. They cannot allow Vampire Esports, the team that is currently trying to hunt them down in regards to second place, to third party this. There you go. Now you start seeing some shots there out of Alpha 7, and I think we're going to have to end up seeing the push here for Alpha 7 because the new circle is going to be closing in, and if it doesn't close in on Alpha 7, we will have to see a response 
And you know what? From what I can see there on the top right hand side, Alpha 7 is going to be barely into that circle. So the urgency needs to come up and they need to figure out do we want to fight Vampire Esports here or do we want to try to somehow get all the way up and a little bit closer towards where D plus Kia is because D plus Kia right now with this positioning, they are looking so good. Oh, just push Alpha 7. You got no choice at this point. You got to start taking this game in your own hands and alpha 7 you can see the hesitancy you know carrillo there with the m249 that's not the weapon he wants for long range but he's just tapping away applying pressure and yeah i mean alpha 7 you could win this game but you're not going to take home that belt if you don't get at least you need more than double digit eliminations you need some yep. something serious and I think with looking at the map here, Alpha 7 needs to start stop focusing on what was happening with Vampire Esports and start focusing on that team there that was on your screen next to Ruya because if they can end up rotating and fighting them, eliminating them, they're going to be able to control so much ground, but we just want to start seeing more out of them. They're going to need a good amount of eliminations. They're going to be have to be in the double digits to even be able to challenge Alpha 7, Rebel getting caught. There goes his vehicle, and I think Alpha 7 deciding to just push it towards vampire esports and not push it towards next through yeah this is this could be the decision that ends up just not letting them get to that first place as vampire esports has been able to get a little bit closer here to death walls vampire esports looking to make sure that they clear out this area and vampire esports looking to secure even more points so they can hunt down alpha 7 in that second place so they can hunt down s2g as well in that third place because s2g is out boom is out vampire esports good wanting point. to get to that top three and not to mention ihc ihc could dethrone s2g as well for that third place no boo from d plus kia of all teams takes out revel from alpha 7 and that is going to be tough. He does get a nade in return. But, oh, they are battling it out here on that corner. What will Alpha 7 do? How are they going to respond? Every single elimination, folks, that we see is a nail in the coffin of Alpha 7's dream of trying to win this tournament. You can see Mafioso with a mini from long range. He's just stuck out in the open. I mean, there's just no risk that Alpha 7 seems to be taking here to try to get that first place. At this point, they're just trying to hold on to second. I believe so. I believe that's exactly what they're trying to do, especially with the position. Now it's become a lot harder on them because now it's not just D plus Kia that's going to have their focus. You can see Vampire Esports not really having to worry about Death Wolves anymore as Death Wolves only had one player alive. Vampire Esports is going to switch their focus here towards Alpha 7 and this is not where they want to be. Revo is a little bit too far and too exposed. I'll be shocked if he ends up getting picked up which I believe some of his teammates might be trying to get a little bit closer and actually pull that pick up. I'm trying to do the math here, Hot Jukes, and I'm going to give you some time to see if maybe you can pull it off as Revel gets eliminated. Not looking Oof. good here for Alpha 7 as now they are not, more than likely, not going to end up being on the zone. Just took a little bit too long to make these decisions. Too many options, too many chances to fight, but took too long. And at this point, I think they got to switch that mentality. They got to just maintain this second place. Because if not, they would have to fully frag out on this squad. On what's left of this lobby to even challenge for that first place. If they want first, they have to eliminate pretty much everybody. They have yep. to just take out the entire lobby at this point. Uh, it's just too late. It's just too late. You got D plus Kia too with the dominant position. Next rear are going to fight each other. Hi-Fi is getting a knock on the action. Just closes that door even further. I mean, so yeah, Alpha 7 looking good to hold on to second. And yeah, with Mafioso's position, it, it's pretty much it. I think we're going to see Team Reject end up with this one. But who's going to win third? And who's going to win second? That's going to be the big question here because Vampire, IHC, still in the mix here getting points. A lot of teams looking to get those points. And now with what we're seeing on the screen here, Vampire Esports is looking to close the gap even more to S2G. S2G right now, but in the Nelson, there you go. Mafioso does end up getting eliminated. Alpha 7 going to be doing whatever they can just to hold on to this second place. They do have a bit of a gap. And right now, if I'm Vampire Esports, I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be a little bit harder to get to that second place. But third place is looking good. You can see them. They have already passed Boom Esports. Boom Esports was in fourth place. I think 
Reject. Look at them. They're starting to smile. They know what's yep. at stake. Alpha 7 being able to spot somebody there from Vampire Esports. But Vampire Esports feeling the pressure. Knowing what's at stake. Knowing that that third place is within grabs. Making the push here to McGrillin. And it's going to be able Woo! to eliminate them. And now they're going to have to switch their focus to D plus Kia. And next three as well. As Vampire Esports trying to get into the top three. You saw Regioso there on the left side starting to fan himself because I don't think he could believe where he and the rest of his team has pushed themselves to because Alpha 7 down to a single player. You can see the look on their faces just ugh, devastated right now. They, they have to be the most frustrated squad. These guys are so hyped up because they know that they're walking away with a big prize pool 7. They are $100,000. And not only that, Hajux, remember what we saw in the announcement of James Yang? They also get a chance to go to PMWC and getting a chance to win at the price pool of $3 million. Boy, that's Ooh. when Vampire Esports usually make most of their money throughout the year. But you know what? Vampire Esports is wanting to make some money here. They're wanting to get within those top three. They're just going to have to defeat Carrillo, which is currently underway. But Schweppes gets knocked. Carrillo. Not going down without a fight. Trying to stay at home and make it happen for his countrymen. D plus Kia helping him out a little bit here. Giving him a little bit more breathing room. And out of all the teams, it's always D plus Kia crushing dreams here. As we're going to finally round out the final match here of PMGO. Bounce nades coming up. Carrillo wide out in the open. He's just going to have to time this perfectly. And right now, S2G... They know they don't like Alpha 7 as much, but they are going to try to become the biggest Alpha 7 fans as Vampire Esports is getting very, very close to tying S2G in regards to points and take over that third place. Tony K does end up getting eliminated. Luckily for Nuzi, he ends up getting picked up. Schweppes is still alive. They know where Carrillo currently is. This is just such a tough position for Vampire Esports because not only do they have Carrillo, one of the best players in the world, right in front of them, they also have to worry about D plus Kia. And on top of that, they also have to worry about Next Ruya trying not to get an angle on them. Madness. Madness is ensuing. We might have the top two locked in, but that third place is open for anybody here. And it's open for Vampire Esports. That's right. It is. The door is open without a doubt. By the way, I think if Carrillo kills everybody, I mean, we could say something magical happened. He gets a <laughs> knock, but it's over. You know, and it's over with those knocks there from Team Fluskia. Carrillo still alive, though. Just having a good old time there towards the end. And always good to be able to see them make it to the end. But I mean, man, it's just it hurts my heart to see them, you know, kind of concede that chance that they had at the start because everything did go right for them right yep. but they just weren't able to close to walk through that door that was open for them and then the doubts will start setting in they'll start to wonder what can we do what can we end up doing to finally possibly get our hands on that gold on that global championship ihc Wanted to do something, but it's going to be tough as it's only going to be just one player. I see, to be fair, they do have six eliminations. Team Falcon gets eliminated there. One of the teams that we are expecting them to contend a little bit more towards the top. Not one of their best tournaments, but we'll have to wait and see how they respond for the rest of the year. Carrillo trying to create some highlights here. Trying to get some more points because Vampire Esports were within, the, with, were within those placement points. We'll have to wait and see how that ends up for the top three. And if S2G does end up dropping out of that top three situation. But now we're going to be moving over to next Ruya. <laughs> D plus Kia, man. This is just a little bit funny to me. <laughs> out of all the teams that we were expecting here in the last day, I was not expecting D plus Kia. And they have been on a spoiler roll for a lot of teams today. Hajux as Carrillo is going to get spotted. And there you go. Alpha 7 gets eliminated. Reject knows that is theirs now. But who's going to win this match? Is it going to be Next Ruya or is it going to be D plus Kia as the Brazilian crowd giving their support there to the Alpha 7 players? And D plus Kia rounding out the day with another crazy performance. You know, by far too late. But it's always be able to, it's good to see, you know, just. Uh, them stand up here towards the end. Meanwhile, you got Dex Ruya still alive, looking to pull out a chicken dinner. And here comes the Molotov. But oh my gosh, what a tournament so far, Seven. What a tournament indeed. Honestly, I couldn't have asked for anything better to start off my PUBG Mobile Esports year. Next Ruya gets the win, but that is not the important one, ladies and gentlemen. The important one is 
after that match, after we just saw and how the standings were, this are your PUBG Mobile Global Open Champions. Oh my gosh, Reject finally being able to clutch up for Japan. Japan with the best showing ever at a global event. All the hard work, all the years has paid off for this team. Not only Radioso, we saw Sarah being able to perform really, really well for his squad. But it was a collective. Duello, we saw him clutching up as well. Divine, overall. This team deserved it. The consistency hot jukes that we saw to this team, I haven't seen in a very, very long time out of any team at a global event. Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, you said finally. Did anybody expect them to win this thing? I thought that they were going to be happy just by even getting a top placement. But no, they win the whole tournament. An unreal performance. I mean, yeah, the consistency was ridiculous. Even when they didn't get zoned, they were just pushing out aggressive you know sneaking their way in and then when they had to fight battle it out like crazy they just said nah don't worry about it we're gonna go ahead and just take you out one by one just absolute insanity and a massive performance for team reject and a massive uh, switch up from team reject as well keep in mind this team ended up being 22nd place in pmgc 2023 for them to make a switch for them to be able to add divine back in february to the roster and for this team to be able to react like this with that addition now sarah had more than a year with the team it has shown it has shown you gotta believe on your core roster because reject are the champions and they are going to be celebrating and they're going to especially be celebrating that they're going to be going to pmwc and get a chance at the three million dollar prize pool hot jukes oh wow i mean this is just absolutely mind-blowing i mean you got to give it up for alpha 7 as well performing so well in their homeland they had the start of a lifetime i mean everything was going for them in the way that they wanted to but just oh not being able to clutch it up once again seven and that's gonna loom over them at this point because you know what in the hispanic culture we talk about having that silver tooth kid energy that's mm -hmm. what they have at this point because they just keep getting that silver over and over and over again they keep getting close and close they keep making changes and changes too i mean for office seven they ended up switching out Santa Texa. he ended up leaving to a different team so they decided to add McGrillen, and McGrillen had an amazing year last year when he was playing with intense games. So they were expecting a lot more, but once again, they fall short. They need to find that consistency when it comes to Alpha 7 because, boy, when it works for them, it works out so well. The highs are so highs, but the lows are so lows, but it's not about them. It is about rejects as they are the PMGO Brazil 2024 champions and I can't wait to see them lift that trophy hot jukes it's gonna be amazing they deserve it no other team deserves it more than that one with the consistency that they have showcased absolutely I mean an absolute ride for this team as we finally take it on over to the main stage for them to lift the trophy and the in person PMGO champion is Congratulations, you can leave the trophy now. Congratulations, go on. It's your trophy. You had a great path into this. Congratulations. And there you have it right there, Reject from Japan being able to be crowned the champions of PMGO, the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil 2024. The first time we have had this tournament and this one is going to go for the record books because not only were they so consistent, not only did they have so many amazing performances, 
We also had some great performances from some of the other teams. I mean, I got to give some props here, Hajik Sansute, to what IEC was able to do earlier in the day. A team that in the first day, they were looking strong. In the second day, they kind of disappear. And on the final day, they were like, you know what? We're just going to send it. They ended up getting a match with 22 LMs. The crowd from Brazil, heartbroken, but overall, they got to be happy. They got to be happy yeah, because we got a chance to see some amazing PUBG Mobile esports. Oh man, tough situation for the Alpha 7 fans. And you know what? They decided, it looks like they, their whole strategy, right, was to go for that second place. And yep. with by all intents and purposes, they got it. The question is, Zute and Seven, yeah. who got third? Who Ooh. got third? Oh yeah. It beats me. I know who got first, though. And that <laughs> is the Rejects team. First time for the japan region too i their last pm like global performance they're showing was nowhere near as good i don't think they even finished first page maybe maybe eighth i can't remember correctly they didn't reject didn't even get a chance to go to the pmgc grand finals so they weren't even there that's how oh. awful that performance was yeah okay well from uh not even making it to first. Let's hear what they got to say. Project is just now winner, the champion of 2024 PMGO Brazil. Congratulations, guys. You are amazing. Congratulations. I have a few questions for you. First, I want to ask you, this is your first ever win in a global tournament. How would you describe how you feel right now? え、気持ちはどうでしょうか。俺。え、そうですね。なんかあん、ここまでの結果出せると思ってなかったので、もう本当にあんまり実感がないというか、はい、驚いてます。We are really surprised we didn't think that much we will be so good so much, but we are really surprised now. あ、最高です。it's really nice. Ah, eh, ma sekai ishi o yume mite, nane mo sekai taikai de te maketsu zuke de kitan de, ma koko de sekai ishi to te yume o kanae de koto ga de kitan de, ano, sugoku ureshi no to, ato ama, to sebete no hitoni kansha stai des. And they, they had a lot of tour world tournaments, but uh, this is the first time that they are winning, so they are really happy. And also, I, re I would like to say really thank you for the fans and families. So, uh, English or...? Uh... Yeah, English, please. Uh, actually, I have no words. Like, I'm so impressed. So, but uh, I have to say uh, thanks for all my supporters and... Uh, my teams, my sponsors, and uh, to be honest, I, li I literally like uh, this country. I'm glad to come here. Obrigado. Global event of the first time of the tournament. How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? もう本当にあんまり実感がないというかはい、驚いてます。We are really surprised. We didn't think that much we will be so good so much, but we are really surprised now. あ、最高です。It's really nice. あ、え、ま、世界一を夢見て何年も世界大会に出て負け続けてきたんで、ま、ここで世界一取って夢を叶えることができたんで、あの、すごく嬉しいのと、あとはま、本当全ての人に感謝したいです。え、で、they so, uh, English or... Uh... Yeah, English, please. Uh, actually, I have no words. Like, I'm so impressed. So, but uh, I have to say uh, thanks for all my supporters and uh, 
my teams, my sponsors. And uh, to be honest, I, li I literally like uh, this country. I'm glad to come here. Obrigado. Uh, <laughs> 最初の... えっと、僕が戻ってきてリジェクトの最初の世界大会で、え、結果を出すことができて、本当に嬉しいです。It's a that are very happy with you? Sorry. Yatado! We did it! えっと、この世界一っていうところを来れてよかったです。ありがとうございます。We are in the world number 1. Thank you guys. えっと、まずは本当に応援とサポートありがとうございます。えっと、これからまた何か新しいことに挑戦して違う自分を見せれたらなと思います。Thank you for thank you for supporting us and we uh, and we, uh, uh, I have to say te amo to my all my family and friends. Uh, 今までwho got this win, their first global tournament that they win. Congratulations, that's a huge moment for you. And I would like to thank everyone that is here in Sao Paulo watching us live and everyone who's at home too. Thank you so much for being with us. You were amazing. I loved being here at 2024 PMGO Brazil. That was an amazing experience. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Família, quero agradecer todos vocês que fazem o cenário do Pub de Mobile ser cada vez melhor. Vocês são incríveis, essa torcida maravilhosa. Deixa eu ouvir vocês mais uma vez, por favor, vai. Isso, muito obrigada, o nosso muito obrigada. Obrigada, a special thank you to all the broadcast shows, all the broadcast teams, the showcasters from all regions of the world. You guys are amazing, you guys make this game even more amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the hard workers here in Brazil and out there. Muito obrigada, you know so. Muito obrigada, Isa. You are amazing. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Everyone here is amazing. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. See you in the next tournament. Let's go. Valeu, bye bye. Familia. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you. Bye bye from Brazil, but not bye bye from us yet because we still want to know who ended up there in that top three. But we, I mean, we just got a chance to hear him. We got a chance to hear Sarah trying to speak some of that amazing Portuguese, telling the fans out there, obrigado for the reception that they were giving them. But reject, I mean, what a performance, Sute. We couldn't have asked anything Oof. better for a champion consistency. And on top of that, big eliminations out of them. Yeah, Rejects, like, they played lights out. They made every opportunity count, and they capitalized on it. And the amount of close-range fights that they won, I mean, we saw it on day one, right, with those hot drops. I even called it out early. Japan, they're actually really good at close-range. Their mechanical skills, like, individual mechanical skills is off the charts. And ultimately, with all those close-range fights, those clutch moments it came down to it, and they won it. All hot jukes. Yes, they did. You know what can I say? Obrigado. I second it, right? I second it because just a huge thank you to everybody that put this on, to the performers that we saw. Team Reject did something that I don't think any of us expected. I loved when I see teams, right, that are other than the ones that we know for sure are going to dominate, come out of what I, 
really nowhere, right? And just go crazy. Yep. I mean, I don't think anybody had Team Reject winning this one. Maybe, you know, a top performance, but the champion seven? I sure didn't. I <laughs> I went back and looked at my top three that I was expecting, and I was not expecting Reject to be there. I was only expecting IHC with the performance that I saw out of them in PMGC and what how little time has actually gone by from, uh, from PMGC to now to the PMGO. I thought IHC was going to be able to clutch it up. I thought they were going to be able to show the dominance that they showed in PMGC. And I mean, we got a chance to see highlights of it again today whenever they did end up getting so much in the eliminations in one of those matches. But... This kind of leaves the door open. What can we expect now for the rest of the year? How are some of the rosters going to be switching up? And I also want to say Ooh. thank you to some of the teams that are there towards the bottom. Smoke Gaming, Zebra Masters, Dead Wolves, Royce Ward, like all those teams. Thank you for coming up here to the PMGO, putting up a good performance, even though it doesn't reflect there on the leaderboard. Now you guys are going to have global experience. Now you know what it feels like to be here. But once again, the champions, they were just too much, man. They were just too much. I think they ended Oof. up somewhere along the lines of 94 eliminations, seven, uh, three more than the team following them, which was, I, I mean, that's a performance right there in regards to eliminations alone. Oh, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, just what else can we say that we haven't said already, right? Team Reject deserved this championship without a doubt. I wonder how much of a chip has grown on the shoulder of alpha seven at this point right the fact yep. that they couldn't yeah. get the chick the, the championship here is just got to be heartbreaking i guarantee you out of all the teams that are disappointed none right can be more disappointed than alpha seven here even though they still got second place fifty thousand dollars i think a majority of people would go nuts over that zoo right but you know yeah. considering their storyline oh yeah it's gotta hurt it was it was meant to be. It was meant to be for them to get first, that is, in this tournament, especially with the way it started off. I mean, they got the whole crowd there, like all of the Alpha 7 fans, the staff. It's it's honestly, for me, heartbreaking as well. But on the flip side, I couldn't be happier with like the polar opposite of a heartbreaking story, right? I'm I'm really happy that it wasn't like IHC that got the championship or S2G, you know, like a repeat championship. Instead, it was the Rejects team, the team yep. that has been constantly beaten down like over the years. Every time they got to the global stage, they let down Japan as a region over and over and over. But this time, this time, Seven, they came here and they performed. Not only did they perform, they got the championship trophy. So as heartbreaking as a story it is for Alpha 7, I think this is probably the team that I would dare say deserves a championship the most. And they got it. And I love what you mentioned there. I mean, ever since Nova got those back-to-back -back PMGC titles and we started getting new winners in S2G, IHC and now reject here every it's not the same region now it's different regions stepping it up and I can't wait to see what's going to happen when we do end up going to the next global event which region is going to be stepping up because oh. you guys were mentioning Alpha 7 Alpha 7 has gotten so close every single time they do have that new player McGrellan they are going to be going into the PMSL Americas and how is that going to be able to improve to them are they going to be able to qualify to the PMWC Anything can happen. Just make sure you guys follow PUBG Mobile Esports on social media. That way you guys can be up to date with everything that's going on. And Vampire oh! Esports clutches wow. it up. It was a tiebreaker. Oh. And they actually clutch it up with the amount of wins that they got. Those three chicken dinners no came in way. clutch. Are Look at the points kidding? after that, though. 127, One, 127, two, three. 26, 25. That is, wow. Third place money, man. So close for so many teams, but Vampire, they got it done. I mean, just imagine Vampire stealing away $30,000 right here. Imagine being IHC, right? With the performances oh. that they had. If they would have won that game, they would have taken 30K, but now they're going home with 15. 
<laughs> I'll be happy with that. I will be happy with those 30Ks if I'm Vampire Esports. A lot of questions from Vampire Esports as we go here towards the second page. And as I mentioned, just a huge shout out to all of these teams as well for bringing in their best game. It wasn't too much here as some of the top teams were just too much. I mean, Reject, we saw what they were able to do there. Alpha 7 continuing there with that second place and so on and so forth. Nova Esports, I am hoping. No, I'm not going to give you the pass, okay? I want to see more out of you. I want to see that Prime Nova that I fell in love with back in 2020, back in 2021. And I'm sure if there's ever a team to count on, I'm sure they'll end up coming back strong as well. But overall, what, <laughs> what an insane finish there in the top three. We were expecting it, boys, to be close. We were not expecting it to be that close. To the point that IHC and Vampire Esports ended up tying. And for Vampire Esports, what I wanted to say about them is finally they're able to show up at a global event and have a good performance. It's not only in Saudi Arabia that they have good performances, now it's in the PMG as well, Hajux. Yes, sir, indeed. What a way to do it. Let's see who the elimination leaders were and see uh, who ended up on top. I mean, of course, right? It's got to be none other than Reggio. So this guy had the tournament of his life, Zoo. Yeah, Reggio, so played lights out but it was a team effort every time the opportunity came they always trusted Regioso to be off by himself in the riskier positions to get the extra elims to get the points but not just that we saw close range fights like dbs range where it was Regioso that clutched it up for the team so this guy really held it down for the team so shout outs to Regioso revo coming up there with 32 tony k with 20 27 Swain and Schweppes man all of these players played extremely well yeah Tony K with 27 eliminations right there great performance out of him now being able to follow up on the performance that he was able to showcase himself whenever we did end up seeing him at the PMWI last year but overall man <laughs> insane performances out of this team I'm still at a shock to be completely honest at how good reject was especially after that first day Coming into that second day, getting those chicken, finishing off the first day with the chicken dinner and then following it up with the second place, the first place, and not slowing down, keeping it going. That's what you want to see out of champions. And hopefully, just hopefully, we'll continue to see performances like this from this team when we do end up seeing them again, Hot Jukes, at PMWC. Yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. I wonder what they're going to do because I remember at the start, day number one, Team Reject was just hot dropping everybody. I was like, yo, you're not going to win doing that. That's for sure because it doesn't work. And eventually they just gave up on the hot drops and just started dominating everybody. But I wonder if those hot drops just warmed them up for this tournament because once they finally got to those end circles, they couldn't be stopped. That's the team too, right? So take, I, th I think you're the one that brought this up. We usually talk about can teams maybe win tournaments if they end up getting hot drop, if they do end up with those hot drop situations. I think they showcase it here that you just got to be able to adapt with whatever you're given like Reject was able to. Yeah, and, and they never changed drop spots once throughout the entirety of the tournament, regardless of where mm. they were in the leaderboards, how much pressure was on. And you can still argue. There's still an argument to be made that you got to change it up, you know, sometimes. But it was how they got to where they were. It was through the hot drops. It was through committing to the fights, shooting the loot boxes every single time without fail that got them to, to that first place spot. So why change it? They're not going to change up their mojo, and I think it definitely worked out for them. And, well, as for me, I think it's time for me to start watching some PMJL to see what's going on in the Japan League because it, it, it may not only just be rechecked, that, you know, leveled up. Maybe the Japan region as a whole has leveled up. Yeah, there might be some of the other teams there, boys. But we are coming to an end here. And before we end it, I do want to give you guys the floor to give us some closing words. We'll start with you, Hodgix, first. Man, thank you to everybody for putting this on. This was a great event to start the year. I mean, I love starting the year with a global event. It's my favorite going forward. And I am looking forward to see what Japan does because we've seen in the past, yes. whenever you see a team win a tournament, that region levels up. We started yeah. off, you know, with Paraboy and the boys. Then we saw Thailand go off, Mongolia, you know. Now, maybe it's Japan's time to shine. It is. How about you, Sute? 
Yeah, I mean, I got to agree. I'm definitely going to be, you know, keeping an eye on PMJL a little bit, see what they got cooking there. But other than that, thank you to everyone watching. Thank you to all the spectators. Not just that, thank you to all the competitive players too. You know, you guys, every year after year, it gets harder and harder, but you guys continue to level up. And I'm sure there's quite a few competitors or, you know, esports players in here in the chat too. So shout outs to you guys. And yeah, man. PUBG Mobile, it just keeps getting better and better, honestly. It does keep getting better and better, and I will have to agree with you, Hot Jukes. I think from now on, at the start of the year, I can't wait to see if PMGO is going to continue on, and if it does, I can't wait to see the action that we're going to be getting right off the bat. A special thanks to yes. everybody out there for watching. The producers on the ear, Everest, thank you for your amazing work, and everybody else in Brazil, and a special thanks as well to PUBG Mobile Esports, and everybody doing all those viewer parties, like Kareen, like Shifan. I can't wait to see what PUBG Mobile Esports is going to bring this year from us. It's been your boy, The Sun Worlds Gaming, alongside Hot Jukes and Sute. This has been the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil 2024.